scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. It is a good thing to come to the house of God because the house of God is Bethel, the place of bread where we are able to feast upon the light of his word. And when the light comes, it sustains the capacity to dislodge darkness. John 1, 5 says, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So I welcome everyone, our Zaria family connecting, and our global family. Welcome to this experience in the name of Jesus. Let me appreciate a dear man of God all the way from Canada, Pastor Andrew Bauer. God bless you. Such a great joy. Thank you. Thank you so, so very much. Hallelujah. Your life must produce results. Please shout a believing amen. It is my prayer, it is my goal and my intention that your Christian experience becomes so rich that your life produces such extraordinary results that it becomes impossible to confuse that this one is the hand of God. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, I and the children that the Lord has given me, he says, we are for signs and for wonders in Israel. Do you believe that? The believer's experience will remain a burdensome experience full of pain and frustration until you have access to light this is very important i have told you and i will continue to pound it upon your spirit that until and unless you have access to light there is no basis for victory in this kingdom victory in this kingdom is not based on sentiments Victory in this kingdom is not based on some kind of, um, you know, vain imaginations. It is a product of access to light. May you find light tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to charge our hearts very strongly tonight, hoping that tonight's teaching will be a strong contribution as far as our attaining stature and commanding results are concerned. I have told you that God desires, please let me have your attention now, God desires for the believer in Christ to have a productive Christian life. Are we together? Yes. Second only to knowing the Lord, scripture demands that if you are a believer indeed, your life must be able to command such dimension of extraordinary results because like you have been taught here your results matter to god and your results matter to the project kingdom come it is impossible to establish his purposes when your life is void of authentic results this is important john 15 and verse 8 the Bible says, herein is our Father glorified. John 15, 8. Here is, is our Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, he says, so shall ye be my disciples. John 15, 16. 
it says you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain hallelujah god desires that we bear fruit It says, so let your light so shine before men. Matthew chapter 5 uh, and then verse 16. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see. He wants them to see. They may see your good works, the extraordinary results that come out of and from your Christian experience. Look up. The greatest way to market a product is truth. You have no fear. If what you are proposing is the truth when you are marketing a product a, a gadget or some kind of thing if you know that you are exaggerating what you claim that product can achieve you will be afraid of someone discovering the truth but your confidence is based on the truthfulness of what you are proposing are we still together believers chicken out and they lack confidence because they themselves are not yet sure they are not yet sure of all the things that we claim that God is and all the things that we claim God is able to do the apostle said but I know whom I have believed he says and I am persuaded persuaded hallelujah and so your results matter you must come to that recognition that God desires that consistently from your life there be an unending effulgence of the supernatural manifestations of the possibilities of the kingdom. This is not an exclusive preserve for preachers. It is the heritage of every believer in Christ. Most people are not trained in church, so they do not know. And when you do not know, you cannot have expectation. You learned that last week. Are we together now? It is important for you to know that you are on, if it is true that you are part of this kingdom come project, your life must command results. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that my life will produce extraordinary results. One more time, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that my life must command extraordinary results what manner of man is this they said that even the winds and the waves obey him Jesus called their attention not by calling them he called their attention by allowing for a spectacular display there was such a manifestation of God in a man until then their only consolation were prophecies of prophets and happenings before their arrival they were full of stories of things god did i hope you know theologically speaking that from malachi to matthew was about a period of 400 years it was called a dark face in the history of the church they never encountered god they were completely alienated no prophets nothing that was a, a semblance of god people were allowed to shadow box their way that's why when Jesus came and went to the temple, they had turned the temple to a place of business because there was no power, there was no light. So instead of wasting the building, they turned it into a marketplace. And Jesus made a scourge and threw them out and said, have you not read that this house you see, that you have turned it into a business enterprise, Huh? that it shall be a house of prayer for all nations. In other words, the possibilities of God should tabernacle within this place. I forbid you from living a fruitless Christian life. I forbid you from living a barren Christian life where people consistently have to keep questioning is it true that is the god of heaven you serve is it true that is the god of heaven no 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 even if you serve the devil eventually there will be a semblance of results at least janus and jambas had the ability to turn a serpent a stick to a serpent i reject a powerless generation in the name of jesus listen let me tell you this 
Results are very important for two reasons. Number one, they act as consolations to your Christian experience. You have been taught that our pursuit uh, for God and for spiritual things is not all about results. Our ultimate pursuit is to know him like Paul said, but, but, that in the dealings of God with men, there is a very unique consolation that results bring to people. You can serve God when you are poor, but you will serve God better when you are blessed. Is that true? You can serve God when you are stagnated in the midst of pain, but you serve God better. You, in fact, you serve God best when you have the liberty to be able to serve him freely. The Bible says, listen, it says, he that told you have asked for nothing. It says, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Imagine the excellency of your spiritual life when you can import the possibilities of God and bring it to your family. Your unbelieving family that has mocked God before your face and then day one, they keep recording like a secretary. Day one, healing. Day two, breakthrough. Day three, deliverance. Day four, speed. Day five, restoration. At the end of it, they'll have to drop their pen and say, who is this God? Are you paying attention now? Yes, sir. Our evangelism is poor and we keep begging and moving around because every witness is not a valid witness until you have an evidence. I have taught you this, that when you go to the court of law, your witness may not be strong until you present an evidence. So Peter was standing before the Jerusalem council making defense of his faith and the man who was crippled was standing next to him. And the people could not dispute that miracle. What evidence do you have that becomes a backing to all your speakings? When you say God is faithful, where is the proof? Not everybody is a spiritual man. The Greeks seek for a sign. Listen, they will come to the well like the woman at the well. They will not come to the well because of Jesus. They will come to the well because of your results. Then when they come to the well, they will encounter Jesus. Now their convictions will now be greater than the results. But that which attracts is the excellency of the workings of God in your life. Look up please. How do you think people get into cultism? Have you ever seen a cultist carrying a placard and say today we are on evangelism? Have you seen that happen? But perpetually they keep recruiting people. Why? Because of a semblance of results. Have you seen a herbalist group themselves as a team and say we are going around Abuja or around our villages? In fact, most of the herbalists that cause mayhem are never really seen. And yet their impact cannot be denied because of results. Shout results. Let the devil hear you. Shout results. I'm here to provoke you tonight to shake away every excuse that has kept you down all kinds of explanations listen there are many people whose growth whose salvation is at the mercy of your results that includes your family that includes all those around you your workplace that includes the members of your church the Bible says the earnest expectation of creation awaited the manifestation, not the excuses. Herein is my father glorified when you bear much fruit. When you bear much fruit. That you come from a family where no one has risen and you hear these arrogant demonic people make statements like nobody will rise from your family. You don't need to start jumping. Let your results answer that there is a cause that has tied everybody in that family that nobody will rise no matter where they go to you cannot argue with results and then you send the children of the herbalist to school on your scholarship and tell him this is a token of righteousness jesus sends rain to the righteous and the unrighteous let your children go to school while we keep hoping for your own repentance Are we together? Demonic appearances. People go to bed in the night and cannot sleep. By morning you think they've rested. It was a wrestle. This time it's not Jacob's kind of wrestle. Wrestle with demons, principalities. And with one decree. Like Jesus made over the sea. 
peace be still and an age-long calm is restored in your family they will start looking for names to explain the supernatural like pastor like whatever it is and they are right because the bible says they shall call you ministers of our god listen ladies and gentlemen from this night your life will begin to command extraordinary results i'm prophesying it to someone in the name of jesus the resurrected king may your life command such phenomenal results listen for as long as your life is not producing results do not rest no it is foolishness to be in a state of rest rest there means with no passion to press when your life has not produced a requisite level of result there is the labor dimension in the kingdom in prayer the labor dimension in the word that you do not rest until there is that establishment poverty all around your family and you fold your arms as if everything is all right is that the will of god Are we together arguments day and night because of money this one steals blames this one husband blames wife and you can come in as an ambassador no long sermon I come in the name of the Lord it says blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord and you calm the family down and in a moment using the tool of economy you preach a message that is sound and end all these devilish arguments once and for all Next time you are going to church, they will say, can we come? Does that look to you like Micah chapter 2? It says, it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above every other mountain and above the hills. Is that true? And it says, nations shall run to it. That they will tell one another, come, let us go to the house of Jacob. It said, for there he will teach us his ways. It's important that our Christian life stop being inert and passive. No, we are in an active mission revealing Jesus. And if you are really interested in Jesus, this Jesus project cannot happen by folding your arms. So listen, I have given you an orientation in this ministry that when we advocate results, it's not just a mundane search to heal yourself from failure. The project is beyond proving a point that you are not a failure. No, that the program of God is result dependent. Do not downplay the problems that plague men in our world. Nobody will follow you anywhere if your life does not have results. I guarantee you. They may like you because they are related to you. They may console you out of their life. But if you want genuine followership to Jesus, it will be at an instance of results. Again, let me speak to someone. Whatever has made people run away from you, your Jesus. The version of Jesus you have been presenting that has been sending more people to hell because they cannot see the evidence, the workings of the Spirit, I declare from tonight, begin to command extraordinary results. Please be seated. Moses, Moses that you read in the Bible, watch this. Moses said, do not let us depart from here if your presence will not go with us. Listen very carefully. It says, how shall they know? Please help me honor Reverend Akila. Such a pleasant surprise. Blessings to you, sir. House on the rock, just. Hallelujah. If your life is bankrupt of results, you will only create a basis for debates that will keep planting unbelief. Are we together now? Let me tell you the truth. Forget about what ignorant people say. Results are powerful. Powerful. Let me repeat again. Genuine results. Results of healing. Results of salvation. Results of favor. Find a man whose life 
It's an expression of results. And I show you where argument comes to an end. And end with a full stop. When Jesus hung upon the cross, he made three interesting statements. It is finished. And any devil that wants to add a comma to that statement, the power of God has been guaranteed to protect that statement. It is finished. Shame is finished. Disappointment finished. Years of crying without solution is finished. Yes. You have to believe this. There are families coming to church and once you gather yourselves to go to the house of God, here comes the mockers who come in the spirit of Sambalat and Tobias, stopping you from building what God is building. And they mock at you and say, at least we are, it's very clear that we do not love Jesus. But you who is a worker in church, you who is passionate are in this season, may my God use your results to answer many in the name of Jesus Christ. That a family that you thought nothing good will come out of. All of a sudden, five of them in one month all get noble jobs. A family where the three women are barren. All of them carrying twins each. As a signature that this came from heaven. Someone who had been left for dead suddenly like Lazarus. Comes back with power and vitality. You tell me that will not preach a message? Can you preach better than that result? I have taught you that results are also evangelists. There is a sermon only results can preach. Please listen to me. There is a sermon only results can preach. And while the church keeps downplaying the power of genuine results, the world keeps using results to bait many away from their passion for God. How many people start from church and end up elsewhere because results took them out of God's presence? I believe in results. Oh. I do, sir. I do. I do. When Jesus died and rose from the dead, he didn't need to go around saying, I am risen. He said, look at me. He that was dead now is alive. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came upon all of them, they said, these men are drunk with wine, and Peter, go, and Peter got up, cleaned himself, and said, no, this is only in the morning. He said, but this is that. Prophet Joel prophesied this. This is that. Hmm. This is that. That favor I was talking about, this is that. That breakthrough I was talking about, this is that. That speed that God can bring to a man, this is that. Some of you already promised your parents that in their lifetime they will see the faithfulness of God through you. Make sure that prophecy comes to pass. Make sure they do not just pass on like that. They are waiting. You told mama last year that you will not die until you see God for your years of serving the missionaries. And God has kept her alive, except that your result is not yet there. Listen, you can insist that, Father, from tonight, no more excuses. I begin to contend until my life. Listen, when you are louder than your results, men will hate you. You see, there is, there is, you are not supposed to be louder than your results. In fact, your results should far at it should it should um, be an amplifier of your speakings the challenge with our generation is that the ratio of the genuine results to the things we propose is so wide that the results are so small solomon did not need to brag and make noise the excellency of his results were there and every king that came, including the arrogant queen of Sheba, when she came and went through the entire palace, she said, half of this was not told me. 
that someone will come to your life and know that the anointing is at work but not know the extent until the day they have an opportunity to sit down under the grace of God upon your life. They live not intimidated but inspired that a man can be this open for more of God and it will drive men to pray to fast and say, Lord, I desire more. Results are evangelists. There is a sermon that only authentic results can preach. Are we together? So let me give us a charge tonight. It remains my contribution to helping everyone here to produce authentic, genuine, spiritual results. Let me capture my charge tonight in a topic I titled The Ways of God. The Ways of God. Psalm 103, verse 7. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts, the Bible says, unto the children of Israel. Psalm 25, from verse 4 and 6. This was a cry from David the psalmist. He says, show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy path. Reading to 6, verse 5. He says, lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all day. Verse 6. He says, remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. In Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16, when you read a very powerful rendition there, it says, Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? And walk therein. It says, And ye shall find rest for your souls. So if you need rest, wishing it does not bring you to rest. Blindly desiring rest does not bring you rest the bible says there is a path that you must find he calls it the good way then he says walk therein and you will consequently and inevitably find rest for your souls hallelujah i have taught and you have heard me teach many many times that god is a god of patterns please write it down if you're writing god is a god of patterns God is a God of patterns. What is a pattern? A pattern is a pathway, a methodology, a predefined pathway that leads to a spiritual outcome is called a pattern. And the entire journey of the believer as far as manifesting possibilities is a blend of patterns and the corresponding glories that follow. Listen carefully. So for every dimension of glory that the believer's life should capture and express, there is a spiritual pattern, another word for a mystery, another word for a pathway. There is a spiritual pattern that leads to definite outcomes that we call glory. Are we together now? Every possibility in the kingdom, listen carefully, Every possibility in the kingdom is a product of understanding and working in keeping with certain spiritual patterns. God does not leave the manifestation of the glory of God to guessing. There are exact spiritual patterns that produce exact outcomes. Now, when the believer is laced with all kinds and all levels of ignorance, you will find out that number one, your life will be bankrupt of glory or number two, your life will produce dimensions of glory that are not predictable. So you may stumble across certain results, perhaps results that come from prophetic decrees. So a decree is made over your life and that week becomes a week of favor and then it ceases because the real pattern that controls that outcome has not been grasped. This is the product of, this is the, 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 the call for mastery. 
Mastery brings you in a position where you no longer fear your results because you have studied the pattern that leads to that outcome. Are we together now? God is a God of pattern. When you go to meet a tailor, look up please, you meet a tailor, one who perhaps is responsible for your, your clothes, you show that tailor something that you want, no matter how complicated the design is. Sometimes you are even afraid whether the man can do it and he laughs. He says, I understand. He knows how to produce that result. Why? Because as complicated as that outcome is, there is a pattern. If you are not a tailor, it will remain a mystery. The assignment of the training school is to demystify that mystery. Are we together now? When you go and meet a medical doctor, especially a consultant, while you are describing your cases using all kinds of, uh, you know, limited expressions, all he's looking for are patterns because there are patterns that can reveal to him that this is this. Sometimes the patterns may require to take specimens and then to test further. But the whole idea is that through the power of patterns, many lives have been preserved, medically speaking. There is a pattern that leads to influence. There is a pattern that leads to working in the supernatural. There is a pattern, listen carefully, that makes you an exceptional leader. There is a pattern that leads to wealth and abundance, a pattern for speed, a pattern for deliverance. Your assignment as a believer is to remain ever open to bring together by the, the ministry of a teaching priest and in partnership with the spirit. Every service is supposed to be an exposition of spiritual patterns so that if and when you have been around a house of God for a while where the word of God is taught with accurate with accuracy there you may not know everything but at least we should see commendable results in your life by engaging patterns are we together now watch this I'm holding a mic here and there is a system to put this mic on when I push this down then it comes back I switched it off now the the mic does not care who manipulates it the moment you engage the pattern that offs the power it offs am I right on that it does not ask you whether you are an American. It does not ask you whether you are Russian, whether you are European, whether you are Nigerian. If the mic is off, it is not because of any tribal sentiment. So you can hold this mic with such profound potential to amplify your voice and yet you may not be heard. And you see, it is dangerous to not produce results for a long time, I have taught you, because your, the absence of your result produces another kind of theology. When, you, when someone has to learn God through the lens of your life, what part of God will be misrepresented? If someone has to use your life as the only template to learn God, if your life were the only Bible to be read, are we going to read John in your life? Are we going to read Proverbs in your life? For some of you, the only part in your life may be Ecclesiastes. You will rob us of knowing that there are other chapters. My assignment is to stretch you and to show you, listen, that you do not have to be afraid of results. Results are exact products of patterns. Are we together? Yes. Moses in Exodus chapter 33, Exodus chapter 33, we'll read verse 13, then we'll go to verse 18. Moses was crying unto God. Verse 18 was a cry to experience the glory of God. But most people do not know that the request started from verse 13. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, it says, show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. Do you know what he was saying? In other words, I, I need to lead these people properly, but the problem is my convictions and my personal results. And I know that the glory of God upon me would affect their loyalty. So show me your way. Now verse 18, 33 and verse 18. 
and he said I beseech thee show me your glory you will never experience the glory of God in any aspect of your life until you study carefully the spiritual pattern connected to that please I want you to follow carefully and believe what I'm telling you your life will remain an unending wonder once you master the patterns of the spirit So when the devil wants to rob you of the glory of God, he does not fight the glory. He fights your access to the patterns of the spirit. Are we together? In John chapter 8 and verse 32, Jesus now comes in the New Testament and he's teaching us. And he said, ye shall know the truth. He calls it the truth. He says, and the truth that you know shall make you free. That the truth has liberating power. In other words, if you are bankrupt of the truth, you can remain in bondage. Amplified says that, that you shall be unquestionably free in certain renditions. In John 17, 17, John 17, 17, it says, sanctify them by your truth. Thy word is truth. Go back to KJV. Sanctify them through your truth. It says, thy word is truth. So when the Bible talks of truth, he means access to the word of God. Ignorance is a very dangerous cancer. Worse than the medical diseases that plague people. Ignorance. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. The prophet was speaking by the spirit and lamenting said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge it says because thou has rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou be no priest to me seeing that thou has forgotten the law of thy god i will also forget thy children in psalm 82 from verse 5 to 7 very popular scripture here they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you not some of you not the prophets among you not the apostles among you all of you are children of the most high verse 7 says but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes ignorance is a dangerous cancer in this kingdom Hallelujah. In fact, in Luke chapter 11, I believe, um, verse 35, it should be Luke 11, give us 35. Jesus said, take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness. Do you know what he's saying? That means you can carry a body of information. It may even be spiritual truth and you hope that you are carrying the truth. If it is the truth, it has liberating power. Isn't it interesting that there are many believers who carry a backlog of all kinds of knowledge using all sorts of references. But in the face of real life situation, they are not able to produce victory. If it does not produce victory, it is not the truth. The truth sustains the power to bring victory to the believer. And let God be true and every man a liar are we still together it says take heed that what you call light that means i can carry a revelation and be shouting rema for years and yet your life does not capture the corresponding glory did you know i wish i had something a biro or a stick or something give me your drumstick my watch this ladies and gentlemen this is a drumstick Someone can deceive me into believing that this is a mic and I can sincerely believe that this is a mic. Am I right on that? Now, the problem is not my believing. The problem is that I believe they lie. So I can hold that mic confidently in front of you coming from many years of indoctrination. I have been taught that this is a mic. It's just that it was designed in a way that looks like a drumstick. So I can call the whole world and say, come and see how loud this mic can be. The only thing or the only issue here is that my believing was unto a lie. So he's saying, take heed so that what you have been calling Rema, take heed so that what you have been saying, this is revelation. 
does it stand the test of time and does it produce the character of glory many of us have been holding things that look like what we think they are but they really are not you've been holding a revelation that you believe this is the secret of prosperity but it's not showing in your life you have been holding a revelation that you believe this is the secret of longevity this is the secret of excellence listen if it does not produce the glory connected to it it is not that light it is not the truth are we together now so back to this example i'm holding a drumstick and now you imagine that i now add pride to this ignorance so that when you are lovingly coming to call me to say listen you've been holding this for five years but i want to with every sense of love let you know that this is not a mic this is a drumstick and i say no my mentor told me or a spirit told me that anything that looks like this with a pointed end is a mic what if he was wrong listen we are not discussing the subject of transformation but i was teaching our school of ministry students i think someone asked a question and i was teaching them that when you come to the school of transformation there are two dimensions to followership that leads to transformation just for your knowledge the first level is called follow them so god mandates that you follow human models are we together models whose lives have captured results enough to inspire you but the greater dimension is looking onto jesus that means you now come to the awareness that even the models as best as they are can be limited that they are also students in the school of the spirit they are just students that have had the privilege to go ahead of you so a time will come where both the lecturer and the student stand at a loss. It is only the God of heaven that can show mercy at that point. Are we together now? So that your followership may look like you are following a man, but that beyond that man, you are always verifying that that man is following the Christ. So in, in experience, you are not just looking on to men, you are looking on to Jesus. That's how you get holistically transformed. I can love you with all my heart, and not mean to deceive you but i may have an accumulation of inaccurate or blatantly wrong knowledge and i may communicate that error to you with such passion and i hope not with pride and you receive it in honor to jesus and in honor to me as his servant except that when you act out that wrong information the corresponding glory that should follow does not follow are we together Thank you. Now your rod is anointed. <laughs> no, 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 don't. Don't worship it. Hallelujah. You know, believers, this is still part of the things I'm saying now. Somebody can go and hang, put a rope on that thing now. No, it was just an example. If we're together, say amen. amen. So the Bible gives us a word of caution. And this is a message really to us all, but it extends to the body of Christ. It's important that in this season, we are careful and unashamed about examining that which we call light. Is it true light? I love the way the Bible puts it. It says that was the true light that lighted every man, meaning there are false lights. You don't have to be a wicked person to bring deception. You can be sincere, but the lights that you carry. The Bible says, the Spirit speaketh expressly that some in the latter time shall depart from the faith. Is that in your Bible? It says they shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. The person does not have to be demonized. The person does not have to be bad. But you can teach something that is inconsistent with the character of God. It will still bring destruction to God's people are we together my greatest if I have any fear at all in my life it is this that I do not examine my life at a point and find out that what I have been calling truth especially that which I've been proposing to God's people is now discovered that is a lie so I continue to examine myself even whilst I teach are we together now yes but I can tell you by the authority and integrity of scripture, forget about the manifestation of the glory of God in your life if you do not study the patterns of the kingdom. 
let's go to the kitchen now many of you do well in the kitchen you know how to cook all kinds of things continental dishes local dishes some of you are we together am i right on that and then some of you are so good that you know we call you chefs and all of that and like i've always told you when you meet somebody who is professional all you need to do is describe your end product tell them this is the picture of what i saw this can you produce this and they smile with the confidence of a good student and say get out of my kitchen give me time and sometimes what will tempt you back to the kitchen is the aroma that is a testament of mastery are we together now and now you are tempted to come back and say what in the world is going here and they tell you your meal is ready but imagine a very sincere relative a sincere brother maybe your husband who has who has not got the knowledge of these mysteries and these patterns in the kitchen even if he's an anointed person a, a, a preacher now you lock the person there are we together for instance me You know what I'm going to do? I will do what I know to do. Pray. I will pray first. Because the Bible says, any man afflicted, that thing there is not, that is not a test. That's a trial for me. Are we together? But the point is that there is no glory until there is an understanding of patterns. If you understand this, half of your issues are solved because all you need to do is write the various areas in your life where the glory of God has not yet been revealed. And then you will take responsibility like a matured believer that you are or becoming. Are we together? You now get back and say there has to be an explanation as to why in spite of the prayers and the prophetic decrees, it looks like the curse is still at work in this family. Is it that God is powerless? There has to be an answer. Do you know? There is nothing I know that pleases God like brokenness mixed with a sense of responsibility. Hallelujah. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 15. Here's what the Bible says. The labor of the foolish. The foolish here not being an insult is a description. Bankruptcy of knowledge. The labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them. That means there is no sparing, provided you are not interested in going for revelation to understand the patterns, the ways of God. It says it will weary every one of them because he knoweth not how to go into the city. Not because there is no city. Because he knoweth not how to go into the city now there are sincere men and women of god who love jesus with all their hearts but they have not learned the ancient patterns and the mysteries that make ministry work to command results with the dignity of kingdom integrity there are many people whose assignments are influence dependent and yet they do not know the patterns that can make a generation loyal to you. It is dangerous to understand your assignment, but not know and or have the tools that will help you to be effective. Are we together? Yes. In this kingdom, please write, in this kingdom, authentic results are built on the revelation of the ways of God in this kingdom authentic results are built on the revelation of the ways of God when you know the ways of God or you may call it the patterns the spiritual patterns that are allocated for the outcome you desire then you are ready to command authentic results that in this kingdom, authentic results are built upon the revelation of the ways of God. I wrote something down here that I want you to please listen to very carefully. Action in ignorance is not faith. Action in ignorance is not faith. 
Respectfully speaking, there are many teachings on faith that just emphasize action. Action is the later part of faith. The foundation of Bible faith is revelation. Knowledge. If you act in ignorance, for instance, back to my mic example, let's assume that I'm now given the mandate to switch this mic on. I can play with it around, sincerely so. I can knock the mic, I can jump around it. I'm taking action, but it's in ignorance. None of those actions will bring it, will switch it on. So if I, before you take action, you must verify that you are acting with sufficient knowledge. Let me give you an example of what many people do in the body of Christ. Please look up. You can choose any issue of concern whatsoever and you can literally act out a variety of action steps that the average believer would take. For instance, let's use a general example. A person or a family that is going through very tough financial seasons. You can honestly ask them, not for mockery, but just to help. So what have you done about this situation? The first thing they will tell you is, I've done everything I know how to do. And that's the truth. But what did you do? They will say, I prayed. They will say, I fasted. Not wrong. But the patterns that produce lasting wealth in the economy of the kingdom is not just dependent on these two. Are we together now? And you tell them, what else? They say, I begged an uncle, a wicked man who has all the money to solve this, my problem, he did not give me. What else did you do? I said I would try one business or the other and it still did not work. Now, mark this student in light of the knowledge you know now. This student will barely pass that exam. Because although there is a lot of dissipation of physical and emotional energy, the truth is that he's acting in defiance with the authentic patterns that make the blessing manifest even financially. So if you want to help this man, the key is not just to give him capital to go and start business. You've only recycled another pain. Are we together now? If you really want to help this man, you have to go back to Isaiah 61. To preach the gospel to the poor it will look like an insult does the poor need help or need preaching so you now begin to give this person a new orientation hallelujah a family that has been bankrupt of victory in terms of you know their spiritual liberty everyone in that family tied down by curses and yokes you ask them, what have you done about it? Sincerely, they will most likely answer this way. I've gone to every prayer house. They will even list it. I've met this man of God. In fact, here is the photo. He snapped with me to tell you that I, I, I really met him. So why has the situation not changed? Do I know? How do you help this man now? Every time he or she is studying their Bible, they will find it written here that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And their experience cannot change this reality. No. Let God be true and every man a liar. So for that person, the moment you find out you've done all you know to do and your situation does not change, it's time to start re-examining the patterns upon which your actions are based. Are we together? I hear that there's a, there's a popular saying that doing the exact same thing and, ex, ex, and expecting another kind of result is one definition of insanity. I think I agree. When your actions do not lead to the results, it is not just a faith problem. It is a knowledge problem. You are acting on wrong or inaccurate information. Faith in ignorance is not faith and will not produce results. Please write it down. Faith in ignorance, underline the word ignorance. Faith in ignorance is not faith and will, I mean action, my apologies. Action in ignorance, action in ignorance is not faith and will not produce results. Action in ignorance is not faith and will not produce results. That means the first assignment of any believer seeking to produce results 
is knowledge revelation not action the first assignment of any believer seeking to produce results is knowledge revelation knowledge what kind of knowledge a thorough understanding i wrote here of the patterns allocated for the specific spiritual outcomes a thorough understanding of the patterns a thorough understanding of the patterns allocated for specific spiritual outcomes once upon a time in my life I didn't walk in this level of spiritual power why because the level of spiritual understanding that sponsors this power I have taught you here please look up when you read the book of revelations the Bible says worthy is the lamb that was slain and all of that uh, or he said weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David has prevailed he's worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll and then he said I looked at the throne and I saw a lamb as though had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes notice seven horns and seven eyes the eyes there talks of revelation the horns there talk of authority so for every horn there is an eye connected to it seven horns seven eyes if you have only two eyes two dimensions of revelation you will only have the corresponding authority that matches your level of revelation seven horns seven eyes seven horns seven eyes hallelujah leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 the lord was speaking to moses commanding him now he says, this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do. He says, and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. In genuine pursuit for spiritual power, I began to explore the materials of people that I thought I saw the workings of the spirit in their lives to a very commendable degree. And I started searching reading through their books and reading through their stories all that i was looking for were patterns listen every time you study the lives or the works of great people don't just be carried away by the parables and the stories and the similitudes make sure you are sensitive enough to deduce patterns the power is not in the story the power is not in the parable that's why jesus would give parables but hidden within those parables were patterns those who heard it just went back nodding their heads they had been enlightened in terms of you know from a, a, a literary standpoint but the disciples will come and say what is the hidden meaning of this and jesus will begin to explain the sower is this the seed is the word of god and so on and so forth you have not really benefited from any material until you deduce from that material the pattern connected to the glory let me repeat myself again that you have not been blessed by any material until you can deduce from that life or that material the pattern that reveals that glory i remember years ago watching benny Hinn minister and such display of the glory of god upon his life miracles signs and wonders i would watch reinhard bonke of blessed memory i would watch um Billy Graham minister in his crusade and he would just come up the stage just casually and for the next one hour you were spellbound by the level of intellectual acumen the intelligence the his presentation of the gospel was so compelling you would watch the people and, and those days at, at, at least as far as I watched you didn't have instruments playing like you know the Pentecostal charismatic circles would do there would be pin drop silence and while he's talking you would almost think the people were ignoring him until he made the altar call you would see people get up just walk like something was pushing them i said what kind of grace is this he did not seem to perform many miracles as i know and as i saw but my goodness the compelling power of the gospel and i said i desire this grace show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. 
Will you show us the ancient path? Lead us along eternal highway. We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter. I saw great fathers like Kenneth Copeland. Or our robots they spoke about the healing power of God and they spoke about his ability to prosper a man to match the wealth of nations it looked like they were joking except that their lives proved it you study the story of our robots now the university stands as a monument an eternal signature that a man of faith walked upon the earth you would watch his crusades where he would lay hands upon thousands of people and you would record miracles as though they were stage managing it. I said, no, this glory must have a pattern behind it. Don't just admire the possibilities that come from the life of a believer. You must reach back and find out what spiritual pattern has been found. I watch men like R.W. Shambach these were men who walked mysteriously in dimensions of power. You study their videos and their materials, you would see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. In his popular words, he would shout and say, don't touch that dial. And the miracles, the manifestations, you will hear of fingers that were amputated, growing back. Do I talk of Charles and Francis Hunter? men who trivialized the healing they they brought mastery to the healing ministry they brought they brought a scientific components to healing they would teach a particular dimension of healing and line up the people who had that case literally pulling people out of wheelchairs like child's play the things that are written about for time the bible says they are written for our learning I watched Benny Hinn pile up stadiums, pile up auditoriums in the name of the Lord. If you heard that Benny Hinn was coming to your area or Reinhard Bonke, I had the privilege to be in at least one or two of his meetings. And his last and final and arguably about his largest meeting that happened in Lagos. I mean, you, I watched Benny Hinn. My dad those days used to get, you know, the, 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 the cassettes of his crusades. It was from him that I saw that evangelism by fire. That fire would come upon something and consume it physically without you setting it up. Ah. These were not things I was told. I had the privilege to be in at least one of his major crusades. I saw a display of the power of God from that man almost like he was doing nothing and yet I watched respectfully speaking other people and you would see the energy being dissipated begging God to move the moment the axe head is blunt be ready to dissipate energy without results hallelujah And then do I talk of our own patriarchs in this nation? Men like Apostle Babalola. You read about these people. You will think they were exaggerations. These were careers of potent glory and power. Did not have the best of secular enlightenment and education. But my goodness, these men in their, in their wild quest for God, they stumbled not everything, but what they caught, they really caught. Hallelujah. I study a lot on the history of the church of, of God in Nigeria, you know, generally. And I mean, some of these men, some of the prophets past that have joined the cloud of witnesses, you step within their vicinity and they x-ray you. Men who laid hold on eternal life, dimensions of the spirit. Hallelujah. You would go to their crusade grounds and you would marvel at the manifestation of the hand of God. That if they told you that these men were once alive, you would think they were parables. Can I tell you, every dimension of glory that seems missing in the body of Christ is not missing. Because the glory is a reaction. It is that we need to trust God for grace to find the patterns. There are patterns. 
Can a man prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity? Yes. But have we not tried and tried and tried and it did not work? And you know, we have, respectfully speaking, anybody who catches whatever small, at least they share the little that they know. But let me tell you, there has to be a higher dimension of revelation, a body of truth that is now organized. Are we together? Many people have done it in the personal development industry. Many have done it in the secular. We have books. They have been able to use statistics to study success, different dimensions of success. In fact, just to talk a bit on that, when you, when you study the story, many of you would know him now in, um, as we know in the business world or in the world of leadership generally. You hear about a mysterious name called Napoleon Hill. That man was a protege of Andrew Carnegie and Andrew Carnegie together with some of the world's successful people at that time Andrew Carnegie called him history would tell us and told him that there are many people dying the wealthy people were dying with fire in their bones and not sharing their secrets and nobody has been able to compress the things that they knew that brought their results and he mandated Napoleon Hill what the book that you know you know, some of his books and materials where they were the end product of his personal research. He was given letters of introduction to go to everybody in the then world who had attained a commendable level of success and to interview them then to piece together the principles that produce an excelling life. That's what brought books like Think and Grow Rich and a number of his other books that today have built many conglomerates across the globe. There is no respectable leadership institute, financial institution that does not pay honor and respect to these materials. And a few people like Robert Slerden now alive and other great people, they, they, they were able to piece together a number of their materials. But I submit to you, the body of Christ needs to come to a higher level. We need to be able to distill these factors with precision and add intelligence to it. If we intend for these dimensions of possibilities to be widespread across the body, it does not have to be shielded like a cult. What does it take to live a long life? What does it take to be prosperous? What does it take to dislodge the entities of darkness that, try the, that tie the destinies of men down? What does it take to rise to a position of influence? This is why the Lord gave us teaching priests according to Jeremiah 3 and verse 15 that I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart, that they will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Are we together? Yes. So taking actions in ignorance will not produce the outcomes that we desire. I've had the honor of meeting a few great people, extremely great people, especially in ministry and in the supernatural. And where I have the opportunity to probe into their results, I just ask them politely, could you share with me? What did God show you? Others just say generally, they may just say the grace of God or the mercy of God. But sometimes you need to respectfully probe into the dynamics. What is it that you always do that makes God show up when you call him? What is it that makes that help is always at the corridors of your life that you never seem to lack help, both material and human? Did you not know, ladies and gentlemen, that there are patterns connected to this thing? What pattern was Noah given that made the animals to leave the bush and with orderliness, they started walking their way to the ark? If you know that pattern, it will draw customers to your shop. If you know that pattern, it will draw members to your church. Noah did not imagine Noah going through the burden of shouting around. No. Every manifestation of the glory, let me repeat, has a spiritual pattern connected to it. You can jump, you can shout, but if it's not the pattern, you will not see the glory. Hallelujah. 
I remember when I began to see the healing anointing walking in my life. It was almost like magic. In fact, quite frankly, I thought the people who were testifying were just doing it because they didn't want me to feel bad. Maybe they were tired and they appreciated my labor and wanted to console me by saying they were fine. And even as it is now, we are still toddlers relative to the dimension that God intends we step into. Who is like him, lion and the lamb, seated on the throne. Mountains bow down, every ocean roar, to the King of Kings. We will praise Adonai, from the rising of the sun, Till the end of every day, praise Adonai. All the nations of the earth, all the elders and the saints, sing praise. Men will sing that song because of your life. That you, you will be a man, the walking glory of God. That when people want to learn God, they say, look what God has done with a life such a manifestation not not onto competition listen look god can walk through a man that that man becomes a salmon that as a man of god if you are looking for a salmon god brings the image of that man and a topic comes out from any aspect of his life i and the children that the lord has given me he says we are for signs he didn't say we will produce signs that we become men to be wondered at like the bible says that people will say how what did god do with a man to produce these kinds of results let your light so shine it says before men this is one of the things that we hope that god will do through our lives this week in uk my goodness it will be it will be a dramatic manifestation of the grace and the power of god we say it because our confidence, our sufficiency is not in ourselves. But I've told you, if you found a pattern, it will work anywhere. Hmm. Listen, a chef will do well in Abuja. He will do well in a kitchen in Florida. He will do well somewhere in the Caribbean. It does not matter. The location regardless once there is an opportunity to live out the pattern the healing anointing will work in nigeria it will work in us it will work in uk it will work in the middle east the name of the lord that you know and know how to use it will work in nigeria it will work everywhere elijah could stand upon the confidence of these patterns and he said send a man to me and let him know there is a prophet in israel how could a man speak like that it was the same elijah who said cry unto baal have you forgotten the pattern to call down fire listen the men in the bible that you call supernatural were simply custodians of patterns it looked like they were custodians of power but i am telling you the power resides in the patterns it is more sustainable to be a custodian of patterns than a custodian of power you can get power through impartation you don't get patterns through impartation patterns come as a product of revelation but when you find it listen the men that we think in the body of christ are arrogant they are not arrogant it is the intoxicating power when you find patterns so fathers like bishop oyedeko would tell you that they rolled and say yeah i can never be poor again and you see people can misunderstand them but it is the truth our father in the lord baba deboy will say god told me there is someone here that in two weeks your life will change and you hear people shouting amen he is not just speaking english he is speaking on the strength of patterns elisha said by this time tomorrow
when your life becomes a sign and a wonder it becomes an epistle this is the point the results that emanate from your life should not create competition or to look down on people demean and downplay people no you would have lost the purpose is supposed to compel people that someone who is lazy with his prayer life by the time he sees certain dimensions of possibilities through your life it will activate that fire again hallelujah every time I watch this man this is what happened to me I said there has to be something Benny Hinn would sing songs like for you are glorious and worthy to be praised you're the lamb upon the throne and on to you we lift our voice in praise you're the lamb upon the throne and then you will see manifestations of the spirit amazing things I watch the videos of this man and, and in my spirit my cry was oh God revive us again when the devil wants a generation to lose the glory of God all he needs to do is to look for the few people who have the patterns left and kill them or make the territory persecute them and through that act of dishonor they close the door for continuity Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us. You've heard my story. I told you that one time I was listening to Pat Robinson, the founder of CBN 700 Club, and very gentle but powerful man of God. I mean, they had a widespread grace for the word of knowledge in that ministry. Almost every one of the staff that I know, you know, operates in that grace. And one day I heard the man speaking and he said as a young minister when he was about to start ministry, that he prayed and he cried that God will give him three things. Number one, if I recall, he prayed that God would give him wisdom. Number two, he prayed that God will grant him favor. Number three, he prayed that God will grant him the anointing of the spirit. I said, this is it. I can see the glory in your life that reflects that those patterns have been kept. I went back in the place of prayer and many other instances happened i prayed for favor for one month it was a february of that year from start to finish i said lord this is not something that came by default but i have studied from the end of my destiny you have shown me and as far as i saw at the time i said if i did not have the favor of god working in my life i may not be able to do my assignment effectively and i went to study the patterns that command favor when I found it, I said, this is it. Nothing showed at that time that it was found. But hallelujah to Jesus, when you find it, it speaks. Man of God, listen to me. Probably your prayer group or your ministry somewhere right now is struggling in a particular area. This message is an assignment, it's a call to go back. Listen, do you know, believers study, but we don't study patterns. We don't even know what we are looking for. So we don't even know when we found it. We just study and say, wow, anything that excites us. No, you don't do that. You isolate an area where you need to see the glory of God manifest. Then for starters, you pray for guidance in the, in the spirit. And then you search for men and women who exemplify that dimension. And now, don't just get excited by the results. Here is what most people do. They hang around people with results and think hanging around is what produces the results. You see that now? Just because you snap with an anointed man does not make you anointed. 
you only implicate yourself for your destruction because you will now be elevated to platforms you don't have the grace to defend and with shame you will be reduced back to where you rightfully belong whenever you have access to men who have this result your proximity should be an opportunity to do whatever it is scripturally within your means to get them to open you up to the patterns listen when God gives you unusual access to great people, you would be unwise if all you do is celebrate the leverage. It is no leverage until the patterns are revealed to you. Learn this. Many of you have served great men of God. Many of you have served billionaires. Many of you served senators. And all you have are their photos. All you have are physical gifts they gave you. You didn't do well. Sir, what took you from a local government chairman to a senator that regardless the antagonisms and without bribing you still remain show me a pattern and the man will tell you it started from my grandmother one day i took a cup of water to mama and she said kneel down she said i did not do well but i lay my hands upon you and i elevate you to be higher than me oh that is it see let me repeat it one more time please listen to me results do not happen by luck results are exact engagings or engagements of patterns the purpose of scripture is that you have access to these patterns scattered through scripture are patterns that correspond to various dimensions of the glory of god if you have found some Others have found quite some. But God is still counting on many who will find all. For instance, raising the dead is still a mystery across the body of Christ. Do you know that I believe that there are times we will find these patterns and it will become as frequent as healing headaches? Is that true? Now you see sicknesses and diseases. As much as we desire with all our hearts to see people healed, it grieves my heart when I see people who were prayed for and did not get the kind of healing they desired. But th there were times in the Bible when the Bible would say Jesus healed them all. The disciples thought it was just by laying on of hands. They went to drag that epileptic patient, you remember? And they embarrassed themselves there. Nothing happened and they came to Jesus. They said, listen, we're frustrated. Why couldn't this happen? And Jesus told them, because of your own belief, this kind went not but by this and that and that. And Peter kept following. A time came when the shadow of Peter. You can see growth, measurable growth. The Bible says God wrought special miracles, Act 19, Acts chapter 19, by the hands of Paul, so that handkerchiefs and aprons that were taken from him were put upon the sick. Come on now. The ways of God is the secret that this generation needs. Listen, we have had sermons, wonderful sermons, commendably so. We have heard songs. We have heard recitations. But it's time for a, a, a manifestation, an accurate communication of provable patterns. Patterns whose glory you can relate with so that we don't build on rubbles and shadows celebrating supposed remas that don't seem to have corresponding levels of glory because hear me the world that is coming in the next 10 years is not this world that you know it will be a world of precision and proofs let me repeat to you prophetically that the world that is that our civilization is evolving into are you seeing the level of accuracy that science is attaining onto with the manifestation of AI right now and all of these things, there is exactitude and precision. Even in medicine, except the church. Listen, revival is threefold. Number one, the individual. Number two, the body of Christ. Then number three, territories. We are still in phase one, where God is bringing an awakening to individuals. Because that's the pattern we see in the life of Gideon. The first thing that happened was a personal revival for Gideon. The Gideon pattern now. 
Then after Gideon was walked upon, he said, now go in this thy might. Gideon blew a trumpet and 33,000 of his men now came. And even among them, there was a pruning until they were left 300. And it was with those they went and defeated the Midianites. So the first thing God is doing is personal awakenings and revivals. Planting a hunger in people, young and old, from every nation and every territory. And what a joy God has mandated Africa and even Nigeria. Every continent has sounded their shofar. We're about to hear the shofar that comes from Nigeria. And my goodness, and Africa, it will be loud and clear. We may not export oil, we may not export other technological products, but we are exporting the spirit with power, with proof. We are exporting superior dimensions of the spirit. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh. It is only a revived man that can cause revival. It is only a transformed man that can bring transformation. It says, such as I have, give I. So when we talk about awakenings and revivals, many of us are just thinking going to the nations. No, you go to the nations without miracle working power. You go to the nations broke and hungry and tired. No, allow that which you want to import to work in your life first. Then you will come with confidence. 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 The things we have seen, the things we have heard, it says that which our hands have handled even of the word of life that is what we preach now you can stand and tell a generation we have not brought you cunningly devised fables listen we're about to pray i want to ask you a few questions question one is it true that god walks through men don't just answer think about it can the God of the universe actually hold the hands of a mortal man and walk with that man? I was speaking some time ago with a consultant who was telling me, please sit down. The consultant was telling me some of the advancements that have happened in medicine. And based on what he told me, here's what he said, that right now, using the power of the internet, a doctor from somewhere can actually be performing surgical procedures without being there physically using the power of robotics and all of that you know I said wow that just reminded me that the God of heaven can find expression through the hands of mortal men so you see possibilities that are beyond the man and you know that there must be a mighty God producing this I ask you again is it true that the God of the heavens whom the heavens cannot even contain, that he can literally live, speak, and walk through men. Do you believe it is possible? Question two, do you believe it can happen with you? That these hands can literally the hand of Jehovah can rest upon an ordinary man's hand and you will command possibilities that these lips of clay as frail as they are his majesty can echo his voice and everyone in Zion can hear and know that he's the one speaking I'm asking you a question do you believe 
He said, great is the mystery of godliness that God can become a man. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a revelation that the fathers caught. Today it is a theological debate in the church. Was never meant to be so. Is it true that God can live through men and manifest provable possibilities in their lives? How do you keep speaking and people are shouting up and down? Are you a herbalist? By what mechanism? My strings man is not here. tonight is that you leave the realm of shadow boxing there is a higher dimension in the spirit a dimension where all of you becomes a mysterious manifestation an unfolding of this glory that Shekinah glory through your life possibilities that cause men to wonder and you see every time men look at you and they think you are so great then you remind them that we are only ordinary men defended by the jealousy of a great god that he stands behind us as a mighty terrible one this is what is making you become a mystery to many a sermon to many a challenge to others that your life becomes an effulgence did we not read about this man in the bible did they not carry the power of god from nation to nation it's not by empty grammar and speaking no we bring the possibilities of the kingdom provable realities demonstrating the ministry of the spirit here and now oh it's time to rise it's time to rise it's time to shake that shake that old you shake that old you shake the powerless you shake the canal you shake the flesh you shake the sense driven you rise to the realm of the spiritual hallelujah i want you to sing for me a song The atmosphere is changing now For the Spirit of the Lord The evidence is on Hallelujah. 
This man looking at me, lift your hands. I saw fire coming upon you, that man. I stretch my hands upon you. In the name of Jesus, you are drinking of the wine of the spirit. Let it open you to a new face. A new face. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. What does it take to walk in the power of God? What does it take to be a conduit releasing the possibilities of the spirit to the nations? What does it take to bring the counsel of Jesus to the nations? What does it take to be an epitome of the blessing of the Lord? What does it take to find favor with God and with men? The answers to these and more are shrouded in this mystery called the ways of God. He can show men his ways. We can feast on the patterns of the spirit and with them manifest wonders in this life. Prayer point number one, Father, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Someone cry to your maker. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. Open my eyes. He said, call unto me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things. Zaria, are you praying? Abuja, are you praying? Koinonia Global. Cry. You may be a man of God, an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist. Hear me. We are in the days of his power. There is a mighty awakening across the nations of the earth. Open my eyes. Show me the keys to kingdom wealth and prosperity. Open my eyes. Show me the keys to operating the healing anointing. Open my eyes. Show me the keys to restoration. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive. Listen, I asked you the first question that is it true that God can come to indwell men? Question two, do you believe that the anointing of the Spirit upon a man can cause you to operate and manifest dimensions of possibilities that are not given to mortal men? That this engracing we call the anointing. It says, I have found my servant David, Psalm 89 and verse 20, that with my holy oil have I anointed him. I've anointed him whom my hand will lift. Are we together now? 21. It says that the enemy shall not exert upon him. Verse 23. It says, I will afflict, I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. The last verse, it says, but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn, his horn is his authority, his influence, his relevance shall be exalted. That's why I raised that song. In your name I come alive. To declare your victory, the resurrected King is resurrecting me. Hear me. You see, 
the thing about the dealings of God with man, please listen carefully. The thing about the dealings of God with men is that at any level you can start with God. And I'm not just talking of new birth at any level spiritually, but the first law of transformation is that you must admit the limitations of your current state. In pride, transformation is an impossibility. You have to first acknowledge that I am limited. May be a man of God, may be a businessman, but my current frame of reference is not, pro is not producing the possibilities. Then God can come to you with his mercy. When I cry to God, I cry as though I have not known him. I cry as if I do not know anything about the anointing. I am amazed at our arrogance in the body of Christ over the little that we see. Whereas there are virgin dimensions in the spirit to explore. The current context of our definition of strength cannot host the revival coming. It will take superior manifestations of the power of God. If it is the nations we want to take. Uh -uh. We must quit this blind arrogance and begin to pursue with sincerity. We have tried, but not enough. The current idea of what we call strength and power and results in the body of Christ, I submit to you, it is not notable enough to compel the nations. It says where the carcasses are. Do you know what it means to make diplomats, to make nations, to make kings? to make people from the Middle East, you know what it takes to turn their attention from their busy schedules to look at Jesus? It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. Listen, with all due respect, we're about to pray. We talk a lot about prosperity in the body of Christ and I respect all that God has done. But how many of us can give to nations and still be able to sleep sound? We are not there yet. Let us be sincere with ourselves. Being blessed enough for yourself is not really the blessing. Until you can give to the kingdom in a notable way as though it's a government giving and it does not affect you you are not yet there the ones who are there are lots of unbelievers commendably there but the church needs to rise look at the way we beg for money we manipulate for money it's unnecessary we must contend for superior levels many years ago the lord revealed to me that there are seven dimensions of kingdom wealth that he was bringing to the body of Christ. And at the time he revealed to me, he told me we were only on level three. Three. You will see men who will stand like nations, whose lives will be a mystery economically. When they speak, it will be a combined echo of the spirit and resources. And some of you, this is what God is preparing you to become. But this version of you cannot host that glory. No. Not with your life still mad with a lot of carnality and greed and just wanting cars and houses. No. The kind of end time wealth we are talking about is beyond I'm wearing a Rolex, I'm wearing this, I'm wearing designers. That's wonderful. But we are talking about nations saved in one day using the resources of the kingdom. How about evangelists and pastors? We preach for hours and only two souls will come out. That is wonderful, but it's too slow. In, in the world today, on average, I, I, the last I checked, and I've shared it here, the statistics shows that the Christian faith only accounts for about 2.6 billion people out of the over 8 billion people now on earth. That is too small and is too slow. If it takes 100 years or 200 years to win 2.6 billion people, <laughs> then it means we are doing a bad job. Minus those who die, minus those who are born, and the 2.6 includes backsliders on serious Christians mixed together. And yet he wants the gospel to reach all the 8 billion. There must be an accelerator factor. 
How are we going to get to the remaining over 5.4 billion who must hear about Jesus? Ladies and gentlemen, provided we are still fighting one another, I am for Paul and Apollos, all that is a demonic distraction to waste our time. Because none of us I have taught here sustains the ability to host the global harvest. I say it respectfully to the body of Christ. Any individuals who believe, either as an individual or as a group, or as a ministry, as a church, we can only do our best. It is only in unity that that mission will happen. In this unity, our inefficiencies laced with pride will become glaring and it will become the biggest impedance to our making that progress, even more than demon spirits. We must come to a place of respectful admission that our individual efforts can only go so far. It is the collective effort of the church, the ecclesia, that church from Asia to America, to the Caribbeans, to the Middle East, to Africa, to Europe, together as a united body. And unity does not mean uniformity. We don't have to do the same thing. We must just be guided by one cause. That when the trumpet is blown in Zion, everybody can hear and everybody can take their battle formation, acting according and within the measure of the grace allotted. This is what God calls for. Again, I will refer you to my message, Redefining Revival. Hallelujah. Are we together now? Yes. I really believe in what God is doing. But I submit to you, our current result cannot host the new that is coming. The Bible says you cannot put new wine. You know what Jesus was talking about? That you cannot put new wine where? In an old wine skin. That means every, he said... And he, tell, he tells us why. That if you put new wine in an old wine skin, it is going to tear it. So every time God wants to tear the old wine skin, he puts a bit of the new wine so that the old will tear and give room for a complete vessel. If you want the new wine, what's that song? Where there is new wine, there is new power. Sing it for me. I lay down my own to carry on you. Hear me. The old you cannot carry this new that is coming. The old businessman cannot carry the apostolic order of prosperity that is coming. The greedy you cannot carry it the stingy you the competitive you cannot carry this dimension of anointing because there is a requisite level of compassion you must have to be trusted with the grace that heals nations are we together yes that leads me to the next prayer point no eye has seen no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. Here's the prayer. So I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit Are you ready to pray this second prayer lord the circumcision that must happen to me to be able to host the new that you are bringing that circumcision of the flesh that circumcision in my heart lord let it happen expand me everything that needs to be done in my life to carry these superior levels of grace prosperity wisdom influence access let it happen someone is praying You are a kingdom financier, pray. It is not just give me, give me, give me. Your first prayer is make me. Make me before give me. Don't just pray and say give me billions. No, 
this version of you will be an ineffective and inefficient steward walk upon my heart so that my hands will be faithful walk upon my heart so that my bank account will be faithful walk upon my heart so that my sermons will be accurate walk upon my heart so that the results will be authentic listen for as long for as long as jesus remains king of kings and lord of lords number two for as long as this mandate still stands you will never remain at the same position that that is a commitment that is bound by a covenant that it will be impossible for you to come here Hallelujah. Without the manifestation of the miraculous, the power of God to heal, to deliver, to liberate, to command breakthrough. I stepped in and I heard the testimony of the man. I was so touched. You cannot imagine. Listen, let me tell you. There are some possibilities that can never happen in your life except and unless you encounter the genuine power of God so there are some things that will not happen eventually no it takes the power of God to sponsor those possibilities like the change of a man's story not in a wicked world like this it takes power so he gave us that authority and that power There is no demonstration of the reality of the kingdom. The people have a right to say you are lying. That the miraculous gives credence to the presence, the power of God. Imagine how evil it will be that you're having this crowd of people inside scattered everywhere. So many people outside. trouble on them is only their tears that can tell the story please hear me listen carefully I assure you that God is still on the throne I assure you that when Jesus said it is finished we sang it here when he made that statement Yakari is up to you to believe or to keep arguing with your destiny but as for tonight and as far as this miracle service is concerned, that you came here is enough evidence of your faith. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. By reason of what I do, I am exposed to so many people's problems and issues in their lives. You cannot imagine the kinds of things that people go through in this side of God's kingdom on a daily basis. In infirmities, only thing that calls for the power of God. There are people, if the power of God does not come upon their lives, the devourer will take advantage of their health condition, illegal pathway. And then number two, as soon as he arrives, he reaches straight for where the treasure is kept and leaves. A thief does not sit down and say, let me have a one hour here stand, then I can sleep. Even if there is nobody there, the, the attention of the thief is the most valuable thing he can find in that house. So when Satan comes as a thief, he goes straight to the aspects of your life that control your rising, your lifting, your excelling. He cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to and when they called my attention, I said, I know exactly what is happening. Let me pray. Hallelujah. How about finances? 
this is another area where so many people have suffered and are struggling and the devil rejoices when people go down financially because our world is driven by economy and so whatever cripples your hand financially has brought you in a point where you are incapacitated unable to bless your loved ones unable to help your children unable to live a life of meaning and dignity satan for you determined to see that he will thwart everything that is god satan only wants to hear what god has said concerning your life if he says this year is a year of open door he starts looking for a way of a way to close every door but thank god the bible calls him a liar and the father of them that lie in the name of jesus christ what God showed you must come to pass this season. Did you hear what I said? Uh, that lifting, that rising, that new level, it must come to pass. <laughs> Hallelujah. How about people who go through mysterious circles, repetitive circles of pain, setbacks? Have you seen people like that? Someone will promise you and say, come, I will give you a job tomorrow. And you get to the person's office and he says, I can't remember, did I ask you to come? And now you are standing there looking stupid and wondering what suddenly happened to this man. Anybody who is taking your place, sitting on what belongs to you, in the name of Jesus, I call upon my God, who is also your God, in this miracle service i overturn i overturn i overturn by the power of prophecy i overturn i say it again i overturn i overturn i overturn i overturn i overturn in the name of jesus christ even when the anointing was upon david saul was still seated on his seat even when Jesus came to collect the keys, Satan was still the God of this world. And he had the audacity to brag before the ancient of days. He said, come, look at the glories of this world, for it was given to me. Demonic spirits are stubborn by nature. This is where the ministry of power comes in. Are we together? anything in your life that does not reflect the glory of god you have an assignment to insist listen you have an assignment to insist by faith i'm, I'm just giving you a summary of why you came here because there are many people who come to the house of god and they respectfully speaking are so careless and insensitive just rejoicing, watching who is falling, watching who is rising, watching who is jumping, while other people are receiving by faith, changing levels in the spirit, insisting on the manifestation of prophecy. There are others who remain spectators almost forever, and they go back disappointed, wondering, God, why didn't you visit me? So we are here to experience the power of God in our lives this is the purpose of the miracle service tonight is not a time to discuss we have weeks to teach the word of god and that we're committed to doing with with diligence and with excellence but a miracle service is dedicated to be an extension of god's love god's power god's mercy to his people i do not believe in the faith practice that ends up as a discussion we need to see god manifest in our lives here and now for god's sake that god will do something in your life and give you a consolation too there are many of us you have not personally seen the power of god manifest in any area of your life and right now you are at the edge of unbelief and compromise because it looks like this these stories you are wondering is it that god does not see me You must, you must release your faith tonight as if you are the only one in this place. It's not being selfish. It's being determined and insistent 
the woman who sat with the issue of blood well we don't know whether there were other lepers or other people around but the bible says she said to herself it was not a corporate discussion if i may but touch the hem of his garment she invented her own formula for her miracle i don't know how the rest will be healed but as for me this is my approach for someone you are going to say as i lift my hands so god it will not just be a lifting of hands i am actually receiving something as i stand as i shout as i sing your faith has to define your receiving hallelujah so make up your mind to not be familiar with god make up your mind to not believe that i know what will happen shortly right now people will start shouting and rolling on the floor and all of that you carry that kind of mentality you would have just slept well at home at least so that you don't waste your time in multiple ways but for as long as you are here your heart must be open like jacob some of you missed out on everything god did last year now he's giving you a chance that you open up your heart lord i came here for my story to change i came here for my life to carry the the stamp of your mercy the stamp of your grace i came here because this age-long captivity in my family must give way i came here because this yoke this altar that has sat upon people's destinies it must bow i've come here because this wicked spirit that brings mighty people down in my family it must give way once and for all i came here oh god because you have given me the privilege to be the only one out of 20 people who who is saved in my family i've come here as the first of the remaining 19 who who must be saved in their lifetime they, they, you have to connect and be intentional for some of you there is nobody who has remembered you yet your phone is full of numbers full of numbers of relevant people who can become a leverage an easy leverage anytime someone thinks of something good they forget you until they are done doing good for others. They say, ah, why did you come late? I hope you know lateness has a price. Ask Esau. Esau came late and Isaac said, you just came. I've blessed him already. He said, father, is there nothing again? Ask the remaining five virgins. They returned and the door was already shut. Hallelujah. And there are some of you good things don't stay in your hands the moment someone blesses you the moment god opens a door you are even afraid of blessings because it looks like there is a track record of nothing good lasting in your life someone comes into your life and says i want to help you and your family you are afraid because you know something will happen may god rewrite your story in the name of Jesus, may my God rewrite your story. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, something happened one time. A man was about to be promoted. And while I was told, true story, he was about to be promoted and his boss would later tell him when he went to bed, he had a voice warning him not to lift and promote that man. And he got up regardless what they discussed at an executive level he just cancelled it like that it was later on that he was wondering and saying what i don't know what happened all i did was i had a voice the only voice your destiny helper must hear is the voice of help and mercy towards you i say it again the only voice your destiny helper must hear is the voice of help and mercy towards you hallelujah one of the things i hope that god will grant us grace over is this this onslaught of untimely death just sweeping across you see young vibrant people with no traceable health condition they just go to bed and wake up i hope you you know that long life is your heritage in christ and don't be ashamed 
to declare and stand upon the truth of God's word. Don't say this person believed and died. Thank God the person made heaven, but as for you that is still alive, don't sit and keep quiet and allow the devil waste your life like that. No. Long life with long life, he says. You see, most believers are careless because we are afraid. When we say some things to make it bold, we think we are embarrassing ourselves with, because we don't seem to have the result. He said, let the weak say, I am strong. Huh? Let the poor say, I am rich. If you see a poor man saying, I am rich in the name of Jesus, you look at him and say, dear foolish man, continue this nonsense you are talking. While confession is not the only key to wealth, it is a potent spiritual key. It begins to open other doors that eventually navigate you to the wealthy place. One of the character of depression, medical science will tell us, is bringing you to the point of silence. You see a depressed man, a noisy man cannot be a depressed man. A depressed man keeps quiet in silence and then is destroyed completely. Hallelujah. So when it is time to pray, and to make prophetic declarations you must know that it is also part of the package for the miracle service when it is time to speak don't keep quiet if god directs us and says begin to declare over your life don't watch others rewriting rearranging building their destinies that in the name of Jesus, there is no death. In the name of Jesus, there is no smallness. It says, I will multiply you. You will not be small. I will glorify you. You will not be few. Listen, the, what you believe is what works for you, not what is available. What you believe, the part of scripture you believe is the part that works for you. If you believe that God is only God of the mountains, you will only see his power when you climb the mountain. If you believe that God is the God of the valleys alone, you will only see his power when you are in the valley. But when you believe that God is God of both mountain and valley, it doesn't matter whether you're on the mountain or the valley, you expect his power to be made manifest. Are we together? So you must expect and open up your heart to receive everything that God has in store for you tonight. When it is time to pray, you need to pray because prayer is a very important component you will be learning as far as the release of God's power is concerned. Let me show you one or two scriptures and then we get to the business of the night. God is already touching us. Matthew chapter 17, please. We'll read from verse 14. Matthew 17 and verse 14. This was the healing of the demoniac, remember? The Bible says, and when they were come to the multitude, no, the, the little boy that had a demon, when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, follow closely, kneeling down to him and saying, reading to 21, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed, and oft times he falleth into the fire, and off into the water now you imagine the character of satan that he does not even spare a little boy look at the condition of this little boy you know what it means to fall into fire and fall into water any one of them could kill him 16 and i brought him to your disciples now follow closely and they could not cure him i brought him to your disciples those who have been under your mentorship but they could not cure him. So I brought the matter to you now. 17. Jesus answered. Immediately Jesus addressed the issue. He said, Oh faithless and perverse generation. So he went straight to the subject of faith. As the answer to the limitation as far as the healing of that boy. Notice he never spoke about the will of the father. This was not an issue of the will of the Father. This was a faith problem. Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long will I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. So let's watch what Jesus does now. 18. Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. Now the disciples came, verse 19. They came to him 
to ask him give us 19 please media they came to the disciples then came the disciples to jesus and said why could not we cast him out very lovely disciples every time you fail ask those who did not fail in that area they they did not waste their time in blind argument they came and said jesus we take responsibility something must be wrong somewhere for this man to not be healed by our hands but then to be healed in a moment it means there was something we're not getting teach us and jesus said because of your unbelief notice he was talking to the preachers he was not talking to the victim he said your unbelief that means as a man of god you need to sort your own faith problem first before you come to god's people their faith can be intact but your faith as a man of God, if it is not intact, it can still short circuit their receiving. Because of your unbelief, he says, For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say to this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. I like 21. Let's read it together. Verse 21. How be it this kind goeth not but by prayer and fasting. We have a prayer series coming and we'll be able to look at what Jesus was saying. That means the primary assignment of prayer and fasting is to do something to your conviction and your believing. This kind goeth not but by prayer and fasting. So Jesus tells them that the major problem from verse 19 and 20 as we read is because of your unbelief what is unbelief lack of conviction hallelujah what is unbelief skepticism will god do it am i sure is the power of god real this guy who just got up from a wheelchair how are we sure that he could not walk before he came that kind of mindset is the mindset of those who never receive from god this mama that is jumping out are we sure that she was really sick what is the evidence that her back was paining her before? See, once you start thinking like that, you are doing the same thing Sarah did when the angels came and there was a declaration that you will have a son. She laughed. It was not a laugh of faith. It was a laugh of skepticism. Unbelief. Shall it happen? Hallelujah. Let's look at Matthew 21. Matthew 21 from verse 21 and 22. Jesus taught something very powerful. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, watch this now, ye shall not only do this which was done to the fig tree, remember? The cursing of the fig tree. And when you read the previous verses, this, this synoptic account will say, Presently it withered. And then we get to verse 21 and Jesus is teaching now. He's saying what happened to the fig tree was a lesson that should continue in many areas in your life. It says you shall not only do what was done to the fig tree, but if you shall say to this mountain, be ye removed and cast into the sea, it shall be done. Notice the context of Jesus is speaking. There has to be specificity and exactitude to your speaking. You can't just say, mountain, I don't like you. That's not what moves mountains. That mountain be removed and be cast into the sea. It shall, it shall be done. Verse 22. I like this. And all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Let's read it together. And all things. How many things? How many things? whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer so one of the ways that we ask according to scripture is to ask in prayer i told you and i've taught you here that one of the assignments of prayer aside from your personal transformation is as a tool a vehicle for making petitions and obtaining requests he says all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer believing so it is not really the prayer alone that brings the solution your prayer mixed with your believing he says ye shall receive ye shall receive what thing soever remember matthew chapter 7 from verse 7 and 8 ask and you shall receive seek and you shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you i like verse 8 for everyone 
there are some blessings that are for some like the fivefold but when it has to do with receiving from God it says for everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened that means if you do not receive tonight it is because you have refused to ask you see that your participation as far as prayer and every aspect of this service is concerned is your you're cooperating with the asking process when god says shout you shout when god says stand you stand this is you asking lay your hands where it's hurting check yourself when you are healed you see that that includes your testimony you're stepping out to testify do you know why many people get healed they get blessed and then they return back and their conditions remain the same because they make the mistakes of the nine lepers there were ten lepers look up please you see when we take testimonies in truth it is not ultimately to validate that the man of god is anointed there is an aspect of that bringing attestation to the speakings of God through the man of God but the major assignment of the testimony is to help the testifier to perfect and retain that which you have received there were ten lepers the Bible says and they beckoned on Jesus to heal them and he told them he said all ten of you go and show yourself to the priest as they went the Bible says immediately they were cleansed and the Bible says one of them 17 15 of Matthew one of them when of Luke, when he saw that he was healed the bible said he turned back and with a loud voice glorified god he returned back to jesus to tell him thank you and jesus said were there not nine of you you were nine and i know the power of my word that means all nine something happened to them but only one returned so someone can be outside in the overflow someone can be following from europe from america across the globe and something spectacular happens to you and then you just celebrate and say well is it really should i testify or for some of us we think that our miracles are not spectacular enough for instance my own was just my left ear i i i hear but not too well and then it just opened now i can hear well i think i should allow those who have notable miracles everything sponsored by the power of god deserves giving him glory about everything are we together there are many believers who are afraid of coming out to testify most times it may just be because of you know their personality phobia and all of those kinds of things and we understand that is why as much as possible we make the stage comfortable for everyone if you cannot speak english speak whatever language you know there should be a way to interpret if we can't interpret we just know that you said thank you jesus and we pray for you you return back to your seat that's the most important thing but don't sit back when god has touched you and blessed you no it shouldn't be it's a recipe for having that sickness return back again jesus said when a spirit leaves a man that it goes through dry regions and not finding a place of rest it will say i will go back to my house so just because you have been free and delivered does not mean satan will not insist let me try again and ingratitude is such an open door for satan to come back into an individual's lives are we together so unbelief is that which we must stamp out of our lives tonight as we prepare to receive do you know why you are always asked to write your prayer request i will tell you the mystery of prayer requests the bible says be anxious for nothing philippians 4 and verse 6 but in everything it says by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving it says let your request is that in your bible be made known unto god how do you make your request known to a god that knows all things all things all things he knows and yet the bible says make your request known to him there are no assumptions god knows if he wants to bless me is he not so powerful no 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 it's an act of faith to make your request known 
Jesus would meet people who were sick, for instance, blind Bartimeo, and he would ask a blind man, what should I do for you? It's a costly assumption to assume that the man wants his eyes opened. It could be like the guy at Get Beautiful. He was not looking for healing. He was looking for arms. He did not believe his faith was not for healing. His faith was for supplies. And the disciples said, no, let's help this man. We don't have money. We're still learning this prosperity thing. But since we've sorted the healing anointing, such as we have, such as we have, such as I have, give I unto you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. That means you don't have to wait till you know everything. The one that is working, start using it to bless people while you learn the rest. Are we together? Give I unto you in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the guy sat down there like a stone looking at them. And the Bible says, Peter reached and held his hands and he leaping stood. And that was it. Tonight we have come to celebrate the triumph of light over darkness. Tonight we have come to receive from Jesus again. Tonight you have come to bring manifestation to those things that you have believed. There is nothing that God cannot do. I am telling you sincerely, let your faith, let your faith reach out to him tonight. You are sick in your body, I want you to believe. The dynamics of the miraculous is something that only God can explain. The Bible says, just as you do not know the way of the wind, or how bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child, how a little seed in the womb of a woman turns to become a full baby with bones that you now cannot use your hand to break one day. It says, so also you do not know the works of God. Who makes all so sometimes like it is for many tonight you may not see wind you may not see rain yet your valley the, the the valley that has kept you all of a sudden you will see water coming don't ask where it is coming from the God of heaven can make anything to become anything there are times you have to wait for the angel to come once in a year and steer the waters. But ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus comes, there is no waiting again. There and then, he can tell you stand up. He can tell you stand up. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. You're not about to stop the now. So what has God told you? For some of you, while you cried as a family, God told you this is the year of laughter. Don't wait till December. Insist. Lord, you said so. We are ready. We are prepared to begin to laugh. These years of pain, circles of pain. There are families every year. They, they don't know who is going to fall sick for that year. Who will the devil use as a, you know, as a devourer to destroy the family's finances? Some of you, this is a time you are going to insist that this covenant I have with poverty in this miracle service, it must be broken. Because you see, some of you are not sick, but what is on you, it, it looks like sickness is even better. There is a reproach that can come upon a man that smears every aspect of your life. One of it, let me tell you, is financial incapacitation. Believe me when I tell you this. There are parents right now, as schools have resumed, they are moving from pillar to post in debt that is on their neck. And you know Satan, he's a master. When he finds these kinds of opportunity, he will keep it there guiding you to make unwise decisions that keep plunging you deeper and deeper many people have died as a result of financial problems insist that you will prosper this year by the dignity of kingdom integrity you heard what happened to this man prosperity is not is very important not by playing pranks and crooks and a lot of things and you know no with the dignity of kingdom integrity not balloon success that you're up to date down tomorrow sustained by light are we together
for someone respectfully speaking this is the year you are going to insist i'm tired of renting father you will move me by the spirit of god and then for many let me talk about your spiritual life there are people who came here because spiritually you are in i see you if god does not help you after this miracle service it's almost as if your life is gone you don't know how many percent of you belongs to God now again because it looks like everything in life it has gone down prayer life down fasting zero word study life zero conviction zero some of you only open your Bibles in church and now with with screens you don't even is it's gone you don't even know where it is cheer up the fire of revival still comes to drive away that demonic cloud that has brought laxity to your spiritual experience are we together the wicked demonic spirit of slumber the eater of the destiny of great men that people will sit down and sleep away their destiny you start sleeping from eight o'clock and wake up ten the next day no you are going nowhere that way mm -mm. rest is good don't get me wrong I've told you it's on the seventh day God rested. If you are resting on the second day, you are not behaving like God. There are some of us right now, we have come here to obtain the grace, the power to run. Because you need to catch up in many regards in your life. Please hear me. What you came, I repeat, to receive for many of you is the You know how a relay is? Unfortunately, the family or the generations passing you the baton, the person even fell down self. You are the one who had to go down to go and pick it before you return to where your destiny starts counting. You are already 40, 50 and you've not even started the race. So when it's time to prophesy speed and crush delay, don't sit down as if you are 15 years old. Let the children be playing while you receive with all your heart because right now what you need is double grace to run. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Someone who is yet to have children may not receive anything for favor because he's still with 10,000, he can flog out his life there. But now you have four children plus eight that they sent from your village to stay with you. Please receive favor when that grace comes. Otherwise, you, you will depress yourself. You will be joking to believe that salary will solve that problem. No. Except you want to be quarreling with your wife from pillar to post, lying about your finances to one another. All these demonic things are products of poverty. I hope I'm provoking you enough so that when you stand up, you are not looking around. Your eyes on Jesus, time to open fire and pray. You pray with all your heart. Lord, what is that that represents shame and reproach? I bring it before you. You flog it out with destiny. Some of you here are men of God and even your spouses are beginning to doubt the call of God upon your life because there is absolutely no evidence whatsoever. Presence, zero. Power, zero. Word content, zero. Intelligence, zero. Leadership, zero. When it's time to impart the wisdom of God, you open up your heart and say, Lord, this ministry has to begin to speak. You sent me. The Bible says to give all diligence to make your calling and your election sure. You have a responsibility to stop men from doubting your God and your call. It is not God's responsibility. It is your responsibility to make your calling and your election sure. There are families here, respectfully speaking, you may have lost the loved ones that represent the breadwinners. Maybe your father was the only one who was helping. Maybe your mother, maybe your siblings and the devil just used his hand to take them. And right now there is nobody in that family. The grace to lift is available and it's important for you to receive it. Remember our song? I will hold on through the storm and I will hold on to your word. My life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men, the lifter of men.
by now you know that God lifts what does it mean to lift to elevate you beyond your current position always God is able to lift men I perceive in my spirit that there are people seated quietly today that by next miracle service the, the glory of God, you know how the prodigal son was restored with, with honor upon his life. In the name of Jesus already, let me speak over you. May that mantle of honor rest upon your life. 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 Please sit down. One of the major reasons I have taught you here again while Israel goes to Egypt is hunger. Genesis 42, 1 and 2. Jacob told his sons when they heard that there was corn in Egypt, the problem was not the corn. Corn represents supply, sufficiency. But the location is where the problem is, Egypt. He said to his sons, why do ye look one upon another? Verse 2. Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. He said, get you down Tetha and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. And they went there never to return again. Until Joseph died and there arose another Pharaoh who did not know Joseph and he subjected God's covenant people to bondage for a space of 430 years until Moses came as a deliverer. Insufficiency, not just financial insufficiency, insufficiency of all sorts. Hallelujah. We're going to pray a little. The Bible says to ask in prayer. By the way, I hope everyone has written his request. Please, if you have not written your request, perhaps you are a visitor, you are coming here for the first time. Um, we are going to write our request, so do well to pen down. And those following across the globe, there should be provision for you to send in your requests online. And we will collate everything and pray upon it. I love to pray on the requests because it is the most accurate representation of your desires. No matter how much we prophesy, we only see in part. Hallelujah. We only see in part. Please help someone who will start running from the overflow outside. I just saw the power of God literally pick someone, like someone running the overflow outside. I just saw an anointing right now, a strong anointing. Someone running outside. Because in the realm of the spirit, that person is not just running, but is coming out of what looks like a pit. This is what I'm saying. It's like a pit that has kept buried people. And what I'm seeing is a strange mystery. Someone being buried, yet the person is still alive. I prophesy to those outside, the overflow particularly. I don't know what has buried your life and your destiny, but in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, right now, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost rest upon every destiny. Rest upon every destiny. Rest upon every destiny. Rest upon every destiny. Upon every destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please show me the screen for those outside. I'm still praying again. I don't know why God is speaking to the overflow outside now, not, not the basement. In the name of Jesus, I'd like you to bring those out right now who will start running by the power of the Holy Spirit outside. I'm seeing this in a vision. Bring them out. I decree and declare right now by the anointing of the Spirit. The anointing of the Spirit of God is falling upon everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ, outside every spirit of delay that has tied anyone's destiny, I declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, as God is speaking to those outside, He is also speaking to everyone everywhere. I don't know what has tied you, tied your father, tied your mother. In the name of Jesus, let it break now. Let it break now. Let it break now. Let it break now. It 
who is Justina Justina I'm hearing a name Justina Justina who is that come is that Justina please if that's not your name don't come out madam come God is about to change your story no no please she can uh -huh. your name is Justina Her name is Justina. What happened to her, my God? Who brought her? My son. What happened to Mama? Okay, um, last year by June. Straight she, to the point, yeah? Yeah, she had this fever and malaria, and after afterwards she vomited. From there, she started having this ear uh, noise in her ear. So it couldn't assist her to sleep properly. The following morning, she had this full swollen. Then, subsequently, it now translated to the second eyes, and now her vision now have been impaired. That was why we had to oh like, dear. bring her here. Have, did you take her to the hospital? Yeah, we did. We went to several hospitals. We'll pray. Yeah. Please, if that's not your name, make sure that let's. Justina, this is what I heard. My spirit. mighty God God is changing someone's story there's one of you God is removing something from your stomach this is what I'm seeing I don't know who that is but right now I'm seeing something leaving you that devil must leave you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ now I stretch my hands over you I'm, I'm going to pray for everyone but there is there is someone here, you are an architect. I'm seeing that it's like every door has closed. You are an architect. But honestly, it's like everything around your life is just reproach. And I want to pray and speak over that person. You are an architect by profession. I don't know who that person is. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare. You are an architect. by professional my friend this guy that brought mama what did you study i studied architecture <laughs> my friend look at me the way god will lift you where is going to surprise i'm saying it in the open where are you from where are you from i'm from kaduna you are from Kaduna I'm State. Ka Kagoro from Kaduna. Listen, what God is about to do, you go and write it down. That God will lift you in a way that will surprise you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I know you came to pray for Mama, but let me do your own prayer for you. In the name of Jesus, I use him as a point of contact to every architect here. This is by the revelation of the Spirit. I declare anyone here, you are an architect and it looks like your hands are tied down. No doors opening. I decree and declare, receive grace to go forward. 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 To go forward. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And for the ladies that I asked to come out, I can't remember what name did I call again? Justina. In the name of Jesus Christ, let me pray for you. Who is pregnant? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Bring that lady shouting. Pala shaka sopa rosiata. No baby will die in anybody's stomach. In the name of Jesus. Please don't come out. I hope you are very fine. Mama is pregnant. Protocol you people should. You know your... Huh? Is she pregnant? Okay. 
Hallelujah. When we make calls like this, it's important. Let's verify those who are coming so that we'll make it easy. There's a lot to be done. I'm saying it again. There's, there's someone I need to pray. I know there are, you can imagine a crowd like this. There are many people who are pregnant, but I need to pray because the person I'm talking about, you've been seeing dead people in your vision. You, you sleep and you keep seeing dead people. I want to pray because I'm seeing an attack on your baby. An attack on your baby that you wake up one morning and just find out that there's no movement again. And they will tell you, you're pregnant, I want to pray for you. I'm not saying you want to be pregnant. We'll, we'll pray about that one. I want to pray for you. When are you due? The, the EDD they are giving me is March. March. First March. You believe in Jesus? Yes. Sir. Place your hand on your stomach. Father, in the name of Jesus, she will not lose the baby. Yeah. I'm not a prophet of doom, man. Eh? Don't be afraid. Or her husband, don't worry. This is God just speaking to seal this. All these children are koinonia children, and we, we already received them by faith. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm praying for all those who have come here with children. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, any attack on your children. Help them please, so they don't fall with it. Any attack on any child here, by divination or projections, in the name of Jesus, let it be cancelled right now. 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 Let it be cancelled. Let it be cancelled right now. Hear me. And any manifestation where you have to choose whether it's the baby or the mother that will leave, we cancel it also. We cancel it also. In the name of Jesus Christ. According to scripture, delivery of children is not a curse. It is a blessing. Whatever wants to make it a curse, we rebuke it right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please return back to your seat rejoicing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Return back to your seat rejoicing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Return back to your seat rejoicing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There is someone at the back. I'm seeing the power of God. Um, the power of God is going to come upon someone at the back. I'm looking in the spirit and the, and the Lord is saying I should cancel that statement like father, like son. These are demonic patterns, evil things that happen to people at the back, close to the AC, where there's AC, close to it. I'm seeing the power of God touch someone there. Please don't be tired. This is a miracle service. Someone open your mouth and begin to pray that everything that is not of God must leave my destiny. Everyone, please open your mouth and pray. The Bible says everything you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Open your mouth and pray. Hallelujah. 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 I'm hearing a name Moses. You can imagine that there are many people who have that name, but I'm hearing the name Moses. Moses. God is asking me to pray for Moses. Who is Regina? Regina, you are at the back. Regina. Is there someone like that? Ron, come. Your time of visitation has come. Who is Regina? <laughs> Out of her now, in the name of Jesus.
my dear look at me the lord says i should tell you shame and reproach is rolled away from your life today shame and reproach is rolled away out of you in the name of jesus shame and reproach is rolled away as i've spoken to her let me speak over someone i don't know what embargo of shame has been put over your life in the name of jesus let it be rolled away from your life now let it be rolled away from your life now moses now i may not want to embarrass you please but there is one of you you need to be careful because your friends are yahoo boys and they're about to arrest you listen carefully this is a word of i'm not a prophet of doom be careful these boys that go around scamming people and police are hunting them if you are not careful you can be good but if you are in the midst of wicked people you are wicked too are we together now yes so this is an advice generally it's not your personal conscience is not the only issue you must protect your environment to reflect your convictions hallelujah you are a roommate or you are a, 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 a sharing the same room with a thief or an arm robber get out of that place because when they come to arrest him you are still a convict until proven otherwise moses let me pray for you now The power of God is coming on two of you. And the Lord is saying it's a change of story. A strong anointing is coming on two of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. One of you who came out here is going to be a mighty man of God. I'm seeing an anointing. I don't know who that person is, but I release that grace. Let that fire rest upon you now. Let that fire rest upon you now. Let that fire rest upon you now. May you be a mighty vessel in the hand of God. A mighty vessel in the hand of God. In the name of Jesus, everything that happened to those before you, that is about to happen to you, I cancel it right now. I cancel it right now. Should I say this now? Please forgive me. I don't want you to feel bad. Don't feel if... if but... I'm, I'm just having to do this because God instructed me that you are here and you have had nine miscarriages. I'm seeing the number nine. Nine miscarriages. I'm going to pray for people, but if there is someone like that, please, don't be embarrassed. I ordinarily would not do that except that God put it in my heart. Nine miscarriages again and again. I don't know spanning to how many years. Please, if you find such a person, whether you are inside or outside, allow the person come. God wants me to minister to you right now. God wants you to minister in the name of Jesus. You return. Ah. Take it higher for me. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria. And I'm seeing the hand of God go to Nasarawa State. There is an anointing. People from that, if you are here and you are from that region, the power of God is going to begin to rest upon you. Bring them out here. In the name of Jesus, there is, I'm seeing there is a covenant that God is saying must be broken. Must be broken. I don't know. In the name of Jesus Christ, every embargo that has held anyone belonging to that region, I declare it broken right now. I declare it broken right now. I declare it broken right now. See, I don't know why God does these things, but sometimes I just see the map of Nigeria and I see a hand just pointing a particular region. And usually when I mention that region, the power of God begins to touch people who come from that region. It's a sign and a wonder, a manifestation of God's grace and power. I'm still going to pray that prayer one more time again before we now begin the deliverance proper. I hope someone is receiving already. <laughs> Nasarawa State, ancient covenants that have tied people down, that says they will not rise. 
that said they would not rise. I'm seeing a sword. Please, if someone is under the anointing, I want you to quickly bring them out. Father, in the name of Jesus, anyone who belongs or is connected to that region, right now, in the name of Jesus, let the hand of God bring you deliverance suddenly. Let the hand of God bring you deliverance suddenly. Let the hand of God bring you deliverance suddenly. Let the hand of God bring you deliverance suddenly. Let the hand of God bring you deliverance suddenly. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a lady that God wants to deliver. Bring them out. You will be surprised what will happen to these people right now. I'm seeing a lady. You keep having dreams breastfeeding children. And this thing has affected you. You've even started feeling physical pain. Like, you know, a medical condition. I don't know who that person is, but in Jesus' name. Every covenant that has tied you and brought your destiny down everyone but particularly this is a lady God is showing me I declare by the fire of the Holy Ghost let it be broken now let it be broken now is there someone who is Modupe a name that I'm hearing a name like that when you find someone with that name please let me pray for the person that should be a Yoruba name you find someone with that name please let me pray for the person Modupe I'm hearing that name that's your name Is it Sylvester? 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 I presume that's someone's name. Sylvester. I'm hearing that name. Sylvester. Sylvester. Where are you from, my dear? Edo State. I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, you will not cry this year. Yeah. Where are your parents? I'm not prophesying do mayor, but in Jesus' name we declare nothing will cut short their lives. Yeah. You believe that? I stretch my hands, I use as a point of contact to anyone here that any spirit that wants to cut short the life of any of your parents, whether using accidents or using sickness, we declare here that by this miracle service it is cancelled right now. Sylvester, that's your name? That's your name, sir? What do you do? I'm an engineer, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Sylvester. I don't know what has tied your right hand. The right hand is a hand of power. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, be released right now. Yeah. Whatever has tied your hand, my God, I'm seeing something like a chain just cutting from the hand. The hand is an instrument of progress. Productivity happens by the hand. Whatever has tied your hand, uh, what God says to one, he's saying to everybody, I declare if anything has tied your hand, Action without progress, I declare, be delivered from it now. Be delivered from it finally. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, Sylvester, you are an usher. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Huh? While I was praying, I saw light on you. God is raising you to become a light in your family. Yes. Hear what I'm telling you. I stretch my hands towards you and I pray. The anointing that lifts a man and causes him to be a deliverer over his family. May that grace rest upon you right now. May that grace rest upon you right now. May that grace rest upon you right now. I prayed for him 
but I'm going to pray this same prayer. There will be many impartations now. There are many of you who, by destiny, the hand of destiny is upon you to be the one who God will use for your family. Some of you do not even know. As many who are here, who have been appointed to be the ones who will be used by God to wipe the tears of your family, may the mantle may the mantle of a deliverer rest upon you now rest upon you now rest upon you now male or female rest upon you now everyone destined by God to be the instrument that God will lift to wipe the tears of your family I prophesy to you arise arise from the shadows and step into the place of destiny in the name of Jesus Christ step into the place of destiny step into the place of destiny because if you do not arise many who are connected to you especially by bloodline may not be able to rise and any embargo that is stopping you from rising every door that has closed that has closed over you so that you will not pass and so that your loved ones will not pass may that door open now 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 hallelujah have you found a lady nine miscarriages are you married i hope you're not embarrassed no, 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 sir. how long have you been married five years sir. five years yes, nine sir. miscarriages yes, sir. is your husband here no sir you believe in the power of god do you have children yes, no sir you don't have any children yes, sir. place your hand on your stomach god gave a particular word for you look at me my dear you believe in jesus yes sir. I stretch my hands towards you this devil of darkness that has plagued you with nine miscarriages within five years in the name of Jesus Christ I speak to you that that spirit lives your life now 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 in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I command let her go every legal access you have over her body is hereby broken 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 by the power of God broken now broken now and I declare to you according to the time of life by the power of the prophetic go and return with your miracle children go and return with your miracle children go and return with your miracle children, with your miracle children. so shall it be you see let me tell you many of these conditions you see I'm not I'm not a medical doctor but many of these conditions like you see what is happening to this precious woman is demonic is demonic nine miscarriages cannot be the will of God are we together now let an end come right now let an end come right now why is she here? She, she's also trusting God for... I'm going to be praying for the sick shortly. Uh, um, may not have the time to minister and lay hands on people trusting God for the womb, fruit of the womb. But you've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. You must carry your children this year. In the name of Jesus. You must carry your children this year. Lay your hands. Are you married? Yes, sir. Please lay your hand on your stomach. Father, in the name of Jesus, for your glory and for your grace, this woman has cried, and in the name that is above all names, let your womb as a door be open for children right now. Be open for children right now in the name of Jesus Christ be open for children right now according to the time of life you return with your miracle in the name of Jesus Christ 
in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ may God bless you please return back to your seat demons are real they plague people they oppress destinies they sit on people's destinies and don't allow people to make progress but the Bible says I have given you authority over snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy is that true it says and nothing shall by any means hurt you I'm about to pray for you now you know why I minister deliverance because demon spirits walk you know how an octopus is with many many hands it can touch several aspects of your life but it is the same spirit oppressing finances touching issues here and rather than dealing with these issues one by one it is important that the spirit that is back of it must be casted out by the by the spirit of the living god and that's what i'm about to do i want you to open up your heart and connect some of you have come here hungry some of you have come here confused asking why is my life like this it looks like doors are not opening you are about to know now that there are spirits sitting at the gates of your destiny not allowing you to rise i'm about to pray for you for the bible declares that upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and holiness it says then it says the sons of jacob shall possess there is no possession without deliverance there is no possession when that which impedes your receiving is taken away now please it's going to be a very quick one whether you are an usher or not the moment the power of god comes upon someone as i speak please do well to have them come to the front or wherever it is especially for those who are outside all the overflows we'll do this very quickly right now father we give you praise because you are the deliverer the one who sets us free there are wicked spirits that have sat on people's lives and destinies masquerading as problems but in the name of jesus begin to bring them out please i declare and decree by this anointing of the spirit of god at the count of three you're going to shout that name that is above all names the name that has been exalted above thrones and dominions and every name that is named not only in this world but even that which is to come and as you shout that name the fire of the holy spirit will begin to rest upon people and bring deliverances for them of all sorts in the name of jesus i decree and declare at the count of three every demonic spirit that has tied down lives and destinies masquerading as physical problems you must go right now are you ready one two three shout jesus Shout Jesus, let them go. Release their destinies. 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 Right now, outside, inside, everywhere. I decree and declare. Release their destinies by the power of the Holy Ghost. Please bring them out very quickly. Release their destinies in the name of Jesus Christ. I tell you fire is falling in this place in the name of Jesus please bring them out very quickly I decree and declare we are still praying every family that is under demonic siege kept in one place no movement no progress right now the anointing of the spirit is fishing out every demon spirit behind the retrogression of families are you ready to shout jesus again lord every family under attack we bring the spirits behind it under arrest at the count of three one two three shout jesus release the families now release the families now release the families now release the destinies now in the name of jesus christ open your mouth and begin to declare your release open your mouth and begin to declare by the blood of the eternal covenant 
I declare liberty for my life, liberty for my family, liberty. Liberty, liberty, liberty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm still praying. The Lord is speaking to me and he's saying, remove the mark of disfavor. There are many physically, there is nothing wrong with you. But in the realm of the spirit, there is a mark of disfavor around you. That even when you go where you should be blessed, it looks like you are despised. I don't know who I'm praying for, but fire is coming on someone now. In the name of Apakatos Katapata, every mark of disfavor at the count of three, that mark must let you go now. One, two, three. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Be removed from your life. Be removed from your destiny. Be removed from your life. Be removed from your destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus. Carry out this favor. Marital disfavor. Financial disfavor. Be removed from your life. Abracatoshka leberedo da koto paratosiata. Kafrenda vasase ketepa lekotusia. Hallelujah. You see, let me tell you the truth. Look up, please. This favor is a very terrible thing. When a man does not carry the favor of God in his life, you are not going to be able to make progress. The number one reason why people succeed in life is because of the presence of the favor of God. Favor with God and favor with men. I still want to pray that prayer. Don't be tired. Because this will explain the tragedy behind many of your lives. There are many people it should not be so. No! Your life can't be indefinitely tied down. Nobody thinking about you to help you. Nobody calling for your help. I say it again. What is sitting on your destiny that will not allow favor reach you by the power of the Holy Ghost? I clear it out of your life right now. I clear it out of your life right now. I clear it out of your destiny right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The spirit of rejection. The spirit of rejection. That is about the worst spirit that can rest upon anyone. Be delivered from it now. Be delivered from it now. Be delivered from it now. From it now, be delivered from it now, be delivered from it now, be delivered from it now. It's a miracle service. Whatever is making people reject you, I'm saying it again in the name of Jesus, let it be destroyed from your life. Rejecting you in office, rejecting you everywhere. In the name of Jesus, be free from it right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now hear me, please pay attention. I don't know what connection you have with the spirit of the dead. Seeing them in your dreams. Can I tell you? In most cases, all these dreams with dead people calling you and is a demonic thing it doesn't mean every dead face of course there are spirits of just men made perfect but it is the devil in most cases masquerading to reinitiate the process of untimely death let me pray for a family here 
or a destiny that is under siege. You have been having dreams of dead people calling you. You have no business. Listen, the living and the dead have nothing in common. I pray for you by the fire that is of the Holy Ghost. Oh, death, oh, death, oh, death, oh, death. Release the families now. Release God's people now. Oh, grave, take your hands away from their destinies. Take your hands away from their families. Take your hands away. You shall not die. You shall not die. You shall not die in the name of Jesus Christ. For all those in front here, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, the spirits that oppress you, I command them to leave you now. I command them to leave you now. I bring you liberty by the power of the blood of Jesus. There is a family here. God is bringing deliverance particularly to the ladies. There is a spirit that never allowed the ladies. I'm seeing the ladies to move forward. Even when they settle down, they must return back to their husband's homes. I don't know who that is, but in the name of Jesus, the Lord is telling me the ladies it is like the, 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 the female part of the family. I command that spirit because you came here tonight. I don't care how long that covenant has stayed. It is hereby broken now. Broken now. Broken now. Please help them at the back. Broken now. Hallelujah. Broken by the power of the Holy Spirit. Release them now. And then the spirit that makes women the men in a, in a family and turns the men is like it reverses it when it has to do with responsibility and provision. The wife is the husband and then the husband is just a figurehead there. I decree and declare that demonic anomaly, we exchange it back to its proper place. We exchange it back to its proper place. Hear me? Hear me? Any man here that is not able to cater for your family, by the anointing of the Spirit, I empower your hand to be productive. I empower your hand to be productive. The honor and the dignity that comes with being a man, let it speak in your life. And I pray for every woman here that you have been carrying an extra luggage that you have no business carrying based on God's order. In the name of Jesus, for your sake, may God empower your husband. For your sake, may God empower the men in your life. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for the sick, but I'm seeing someone what we call skin disease. You have some serious, I don't know what it is that is affecting your skin, quite an embarrassing condition. The Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to be praying for the sick right now. I believe in the healing ministry. A skin problem, something just eating up your skin. Bring this lady for me. Tap this girl going back. My dear, come. I want to pray for you. Where are you from? Mostate. In the name of Jesus. Look at me. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit where those who have gone ahead of you, where they could not reach. In the name of Jesus, I place an anointing upon you. You will get there and surpass it by the Spirit. You will get there and you will surpass it by the Spirit. I say it again, you will get there and you will surpass it by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, please return back to your seat. Listen, provided you are under this grace, you must rise. In the name of Jesus Christ. By all means, you must rise. Let's pray for the sick.
terminal diseases. I want to start my prayer by praying for those with hepatitis. Listen, there is a reason why sometimes God puts these names. It's not just a story to mention and make it look serious. I, I honestly have not studied the consequences of hepatitis. I don't know what it really does. I just know it's not a good thing. And that is more than enough to cast it out of anybody who has it. Listen, place your hand where you are trusting God for healing. Those of you who came with sick people, now is the time to reach out to them. And those who are connecting for the sick or you are sick yourself, I'm about to pray for you. I believe in the healing power of Jesus. I tell you, there is such a strong healing anointing. Why do we pray for the sick? I have taught you that sickness is a portion of death being ministered to you because there is a threshold level of health your body must have for your spirit to remain in it. And if your body becomes deteriorated beyond that threshold point, your spirit will be forced to live in what you call death. Now, it is not the living of the spirit that is a problem. But when you are done with your assignment and it lives with honor and nobility, that is fine. We call it a good old age. But where the devil wants to bring it as a strategy to end your life, because you see, if you do not have a functional body, your spirit has no legitimate ground to remain in the earth. For you to be able to dwell in the earth legitimately, you must be a spirit and you must have a healthy functional body. So every time the Lord ministers to the sick, it is his determination to keep you in health and to promote longevity in your life. Don't tolerate any sickness in your body. We thank God for all our doctors, our medical team. We have a brilliant medical team that is, is doing well, you know. And I have taught you again that doctors and medical people are not anti-faith. We have taught for many years that you either choose doctors or choose the power of God. No, no. Even Jesus is called the great physician, not only the great healer, the great physician. So I'm going to pray for you now. Here's what I want you to do very quickly. As soon as I pray for you, some of you, whilst you were under the anointing, having all kinds of experiences, many supernatural things have happened to you. When we take testimonies, by the way, it's not just testimonies for healing alone. There are those who, whilst ministering deliverance and ministering all kinds of things, visible changes, supernatural manifestations have happened. When it is time to take testimonies, you quickly run out and join those who are healed. Hallelujah. Now, when I pray for you, here's your own part of the, your own part of the faith equation. You believe and you receive by faith. Then when I tell you to, you check yourself. You do what you couldn't do. The moment you found out that there is a miracle, a miracle has happened whether you are in the overflow outside or any of the overflows down to the basement or in the main auditorium or following online. Remember, our global family, you are, you are participating fully in every way. Make sure that we know what has happened to you. We're going to take a few testimonies and then we'll pray over the request and make prophetic declarations tonight. So let your hearts be open. Do not allow yourself to return back with terminal diseases, demonic illnesses. You hear the story of the mama that was brought here? Just her eyes began to swell and all kinds of satanic things. Lay your hands and let's trust God for healing. Jesus, a healer. It is true that he heals. I know you are here. Healing in your glory. I know you are here, precious Holy Spirit, I know you are here, you are here to take us higher, I know you are here, precious Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, you gave us the ability to pray for the sick. 
and you said that as we minister to them they will recover there are many people right now who have all kinds of terminal diseases demonic conditions in the name of Jesus the one who sent us I declare that every spirit of infirmity that is behind any health condition right now let that spirit be gone forever mm. right now let that spirit be gone forever let that spirit be gone forever I stretch my hands towards you and I declare right now every sick body from the crown of your head down to the ah my god as I just said from the crown of your head I just felt a surge of power just a strong healing anointing going through someone's body bringing cleansing 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 of every demonic thing right now be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name hepatitis in the name of Jesus be healed of it now HIV be healed now cancer be healed now I'm hearing in my spirit hormonal imbalance I don't know who has that condition but the power of God is touching you right now I declare be healed in the name of Jesus hormonal imbalance be healed now deaf ears whether total deafness or partial deafness be opened in the name of Jesus blind eyes be open now in the name of Jesus anybody here who could not walk you came and you could not walk using an aid in the name of Jesus I empower your limbs begin to walk now in the mighty name of Jesus kidney problems I'm hearing in the spirit help them kidney problems be healed right now there's someone you had something that looked like a lymph node and around your your lower abdominal area and it refused to go in the name of Jesus I command that growth let it disappear now I'm seeing in a vision somebody's tongue I don't know if it's that the tongue is cracked this is what I'm seeing it's like the tongue is you know how it's like you are shredding something I don't know what condition that is but in the name of Jesus I bring you life and healing right now severe bleeding it comes to an end now I'm hearing cancer of the rectum I'm not a doctor whether you are here or following online cancer is like cancer of the rectum this is what I'm hearing in the name of Jesus I use this and any other variation of cancer we command those cancer cells in the body of any of his victim to begin to die now to begin to die now hallelujah there's someone you have a boil inside your armpit not around inside your armpit an uncomfortable boil I don't know if you've taken any medical steps but the Lord is telling me he's bringing you healing right now he's bringing you healing right now I'm hearing a word in my spirit clogged arteries clogged arteries in the name of Jesus Christ I'm going to meet the doctors one time to teach me all these things so that when I'm saying it I understand what I'm saying clogged arteries I but I believe that that it's a very step whatever clogs any part of your body for whatever reason is already sentencing you to death you know that one 
in the name of Jesus I command clogged arteries be open now in fact God is showing me someone um, your heart your heart is not fully functional it's affecting your breathing I don't know what that condition is now but it's a serious some sort of cardiovascular condition I stretch my hands now every part that has been blocked or clogged I command it to be open now I command it to be open now hallelujah I'm hearing something very interesting the Lord is telling me I don't know why he's not telling me the nation but he's saying we should pray for a particular African nation so that there would not be a resurgence of COVID a particular African nation in the name of Jesus I know we are praying for the sick but since the word has come we pray particularly for the nations of Africa we already drove that demonic spirit out of this continent. We closed the doors of the continent again. In the name of Jesus, there will not be a resurgence of any, any news of COVID in Africa again. In the name of Jesus, gastritis. The Lord is healing someone of gastritis by the power of the Holy Spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit there's someone I'm seeing you are bleeding severely from your nose and your mouth severely from your nose I'm just looking at a vision I'm seeing blood just coming out in the name of Jesus I don't know who that person is but I curse that spirit right now in Jesus name I once prayed over this condition that God is showing me and I'm seeing that God is showing me again somebody you it's like you regurgitate food when you eat you literally regurgitate it out again to eat it I don't know who that person is is there someone like that please let me pray for you particularly that person I want to quickly come out quickly we're still praying for the sick if there's someone like that quickly please can you imagine this kind of thing beautiful lady like this and this demonic thing wants to plague her destiny all of you holy spirit thou art welcome in this place holy spirit Thou art welcome in this place, omnipotent Father of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome. Allah Shabra Sadi Salatia. Hallelujah. Satan, in the name of Jesus, if it was not so in the beginning, then we decree and declare i don't know what the medical condition is where people regurgitate food out again but i know that it is a wicked demonic and uncomfortable condition i stretch my hands don't be embarrassed my dear people who have come out this a miracle service is like going to a hospital there's there's nothing to be ashamed of we're a family of love and we're a family that are determined to see the word of God speak over someone's life that lady this lady tap that lady for me yes look at me shout Jesus as loud as you can I curse that spirit out of her now in the name of Jesus Christ this your own is not even over this issue I'm praying for I command that spirit uh, near success syndrome I curse it from your life in the name of Jesus now ladies and gentlemen look at over one case just one case that is called look at the precious people are you seeing that sickness does not know race age level of enlightenment thank you first for the courage to come out and receive from the Lord you're not going to waste your time now I stretch my hands towards you 
alongside every other person I don't know if that is a digestive problem but I use it as a point of contact for any other problem the power of God is coming upon you people in front now in the name of Jesus I declare be healed now I release the power of the Holy Spirit now 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 be healed now that condition stops now I set you free let there be a correction in the name of Jesus Christ let there be a correction in the name of Jesus Christ let there be a correction in the name of Jesus let there be a correction in the name of Jesus now I want to pray for lums. God bless you. Please return back to your seat rejoicing. We are still praying for the sick. Take note for those who have been healed. We'll soon call you now for your testimony. I want to pray. I'm seeing several. Um, what's the name of this condition? The neck deficiency of iodine. Goiter. There's somebody who has this goiter in the name of Jesus Christ. Your neck is already even, it looks like your neck is even swelling already. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I don't know where you are, but in the name of Jesus Christ. This woman holding a picture, run, come. Where are you coming from? Ogun State. Huh? Ogun State. Are you sick? Yes. What's I, wrong? I had a car um, accident on the 1st of January. My bum bum tore into two. Look at me. Mom. You came here with your mom? Yes. It's, I, I, it's okay. We're praying for them. Look at me. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know why I, I looked at you and the Lord just beckoned that I called you. Can you imagine that kind of accident and that, that kind of injury? I can imagine the kind of pain that you're going through in the name of Jesus. Now, be healed. Be healed. Madam, look at me. Do what I'm doing. Just do what I'm doing. If you feel pain, don't have... Huh? You want to, you want to try running? Run. Any pain, any give her the mic. She had an accident. Come on, are you giving Jesus praise? Look at this. When was the when was the accident? On the first of January, twenty twenty three. Medically, you went to the hospital. Yes, I'm paddled. The bomb bomb tore into two. And right now, you can move without pain. Yes, sir. Look at this. Yes, sir. But you see, the most important prayer, thank God for this healing, but the most important prayer is this demonic oppression will not rise a second time. And we declare you will be perfectly healed. You will be perfectly healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I decree and declare high blood pressure. Anyone who is suffering from high blood pressure, whether as, as inheritance or something that just started from you, I declare be healed right now. Be healed right now. Someone, the nails, the nails on your feet are rottening. I'm sorry to use that expression, but it's already squeezing like a, what they call it now. Is it an athlete's feet or something like that? The nails, the nails on your feet are beginning to rot in. I don't know who that person is, but in the name of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit is touching you right now. <laughs> and the Lord is also asking me to pray for someone because with what I see, your teeth, your entire, you know, your teeth is getting weak 
weak and weak and is something that is eating up your gums or something affecting you in fact you are suffering from very intense like a um, mouth odor it's not like you're a careless person but this is a serious dental problem and you need help you need the power of god i decree and declare over you'll be healed right now now whether i mention your case or not in the name of jesus who died and rose again for you and for those who you are lifting up in prayer that also includes those who are fallen from hospitals you can't believe how many hospitals in this nation and across the world air these miracle services over their patients as a commitment there are people right now on sick beds you know whose family members are just connecting by faith in the name of jesus be healed right now in the name of jesus be healed right now in the name of jesus be healed right now lump in the right breast i command it to disappear now for someone i don't know what surgery you had on your legs but it's like something went wrong. This is what I'm seeing. I'm declaring that whatever went wrong with that surgery, let it be corrected right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going to give you two prayer points. And whilst you are praying, please hear me. I want everyone to check yourself. The moment you find out that you could do what you couldn't do before, you can now do, or there's a, a visible miracle, I want you to leave your seat very boldly and confidently and come and stand in front here. We'll take a few testimonies while we're praying. We'll do this very fast because there are still some other things that we have to do. So if you are coming out for testimony, whether for healing or any other supernatural miracle that has happened to you here, please leave the, your seat very boldly while we're praying. You can come and come continue your prayer here in front we'll take a few testimonies if you need to check yourself at the medical stand the medical stand is just at the back you can do well to go there let the doctors check you verify you and for those who have been healed we'll take a few testimonies very quickly whilst we're doing that please rise let me give you two prayer points we're going to pray and then we'll take a few testimonies make sure you don't sit back once you have been touched check yourself you can call your loved ones who you stood in faith for please make sure that you they have um, evidences of complete healing or healing then you make sure that you come to the front very quickly and for those who are coming if they are coming from outside or any of the overflows please allow them give them the liberty to come just guide them while they come god bless you say after me in the name of jesus Shout it with faith. Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit supernatural restoration of time and of things over my life right now. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Supernatural restoration of time, supernatural restoration of things is someone praying those for testimonies begin to march forward supernatural restoration of time of things supernatural restoration someone is praying this prayer will work wonders in the life of many people restoration oh Your lifting has come. Oh, 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 your lifting has come. Oh, 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 your rising has come. Oh, 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 oh your in Jesus name I pray in Jesus name I pray are you ready for the second prayer point 
Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost every word assigned to announce me everyone assigned to help me everyone assigned to help me find visibility I command their ministries now open your mouth and pray it takes men used by God to help men rise someone is praying everyone assigned by the spirit of the living God for my rising for my visibility assigned for my rising if you are joseph pray over pharaoh that pharaoh will be used by god for your rising if you are daniel pray for nebuchadnezzar to be used by god for your rising is someone praying where are the helpers joseph of arimathea simeons of cyrene the Naomi's in the name of Jesus 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 he said tell the people that they go forward I taught you last week that progress is not just moving around your last step or your next step must be ahead of your last step for it to be called progress if your next step is equal to your last step that is not progress there is motion there is movement but it is not progress hallelujah let me add that one prayer point and then we'll take a few testimonies and then we'll begin to collect collate and collect our prayer requests those who are coming for testimonies, please allow them. Even if we're not able to take everything, at least let it be a witness before God that um, they were touched by the mighty hand of God. Are we together? Someone is going to prophesy that throughout this year from now, that the step you take next must be higher than the one you're taking now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, are you ready to pray? Say, Father. Father. Shout it again. Say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus, every step I take will be a step higher than the previous one, spiritually, financially, and in every other aspect of my life. Open your mouth and pray. No marking time, no marking time, no marking time, constructive advancement, progress by the spirit and in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, please be seated gloriously for a few minutes. Let's celebrate Jesus for these testimonies. How many of you are yet to submit your prayer requests? If you are yet to submit your prayer requests, please indicate by a wave of hand. There will be someone who will pick it up from you immediately. Is there anyone, any such people? Very quickly. Then let me request that we all stand. Please stretch your hands as we always do over the request. We are praying now. If there are still others, please bring them very quickly so that we we'll pray. Someone begin to speak already. Speak already. Declare over your requests by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and begin to prophesy over your prayer requests prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit that in the name of Jesus the Son of the Living God 
Sabrateke parako shada vrende gebeleke tosiata. Skabata baraka toshka la brendeske. Egrete gerafo safasa da balaka toska diadash. Kranda baga baga tosa da vraska de beleke tosh. Manta prata ke paraka toska da vradege de beleke ta. Shali gebere soziate ke parandos gavene kosha taliada. Embrege de berege de beke tosso do protosko do bala. Shaparaka ta parada balaka ta vraska da beleke de brendege das. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon this request. Let every request here be turned into a testimony. Let every request here be turned to a testimony. Let every request here be turned to a testimony. Supernatural testimonies from across the nations of the earth in the name of Jesus. From across the nations of the earth in the name of Jesus. Supernatural miracles, shout a loud amen. Supernatural breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Supernatural connections in the name of Jesus. Supernatural restorations in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare by the privilege of God's grace over every request here represented that by the power that raised Christ from the dead may the God that answers speedily begin to answer for you from tonight. There are people here who wrote testimonies before now. I mean, they wrote very serious requests. You see, the thing about the request here is that you, you have the liberty of your privacy with God. Nobody reads it. From here, once it is prayed, it's collated and burnt. So this is a representation of your faith and your desire. And remember what Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, what things soever ye desire. It says, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest it and thou shall have it i decree and declare because you have written as a sign of faith believing therefore may your hands receive them as answers we convert every prayer request here to an answer in the name of jesus most of the answers here will require the ministry of men in partnership with the holy spirit we call for such men now in the name of Jesus Christ. No one here who has written his request will return back with shame. I say it again. No one who has written his or her request here will return with shame. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for those of you who have written for your loved ones, some of them do not even know that you've written this for them. In Jesus' name, wherever they are across this nation and across the globe, may the God of heaven locate them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak to you that these Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. You will see them no more forever. You will see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm about to speak over your life. We're wrapping up already. I'd like you to receive this prophetic word. You've been encouraged this year to be opened. Now, these exercise books, we're going to share them. They are all free. It's a gift just for you to have. Some will get exercise books. Others will get jotters. I think most will get jotters because our children will swallow up our exercise book so the jotters are beautiful just as a point of contact and to help you i wish i had one so that they see what it looks like can you give me one protocol if you have one so it's my gift to you it's not for sale anybody if we catch you selling this thing we are going to arrest you i'm saying it straight to the point so there should be order in the house of god you have received it freely we shouldn't hear that anybody went somewhere and is trying to sell this koinonia books no very beautiful and it has prophetic quotes at the back just for your your blessings so this is powerful lovely quotes at the back let me read one for you it says popularity is people knowing you while impact is people being changed by your life this is one of it there and um, all decisions come with consequences you do not choose consequences. You only make choices and then your choices determine the consequences that follow. So this will remind you, just granting you wisdom. Father, we declare that these are blessed 
in the name of Jesus. As many who will have them uh, here, who hopefully will send some across the nations so who are families scattered in diaspora, we declare that it will bless everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Please, if you are not able to get the jota, or I, I presume so many people would get, um, if you are not able to get, be patient. I'm sure that more orders will be made. It's just that it will be difficult to get it. It's a gift, so it's not a right. If you cannot get it, then just wish whoever got it well. And the most important thing is to receive the grace that, the grace that, um, that has come with it. Praise God. Let me speak over your life. Prophecy is powerful because it creates. Creates. Prophecy can create an enviable destiny. Prophecy can rewrite negatives out of a man's life and turn that which is supposed to be for shame to become instruments of blessings. Um, I hope that in the weeks to come, I will share with us and update us some of the remarkable things that God is doing in this ministry already. But I can tell you, listen, I've seen God move. I've seen God bring favor. But um, I'm just waiting for the due time to tell you some of the things that are lined up. I can only tell you this, that what God is doing in this ministry right now is simply fearful. It is the mighty, mighty hand of God upon us, through us, in us. And what God is doing and uh, we thank God for his grace we owe it to you to update you and when the time is right and we put everything in place we'll be glad to give you all the necessary updates but just to rejoice in knowing that God is already moving mightily nobody wants to belong to a dead vision nobody wants to belong to a vision that does not move does not have life newness is a sign of life are we together now so as I speak over your life, I told you that to mean that if God is lifting this ministry, it means you should not be at the same level. Therefore, I declare over you, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost, let the favor of God rest on your head. You know, I told you that the number one reason why people succeed is favor. If this is the only grace you receive and live, I guarantee you, you will return back rejoicing. Yeah. One more time, I'm saying it, especially for those who have not seen this grace walk in you. I pray for you. This is a house and a life that God has shown favor in an unusual dimension. May that grace rest upon you. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two. From across the seven continents of the earth, anyone who has been mandated to reach you for your rising, whatever barrier is stopping them from reaching you, I take it out of the way now. I take it out of the way now. Number three, the grace for visibility. Whatever has closed your glory so that your works and your excellence is not seen, especially by those who can celebrate God with you and even re reward you. I declare, may that grace cause your face to be seen. May that grace cause your voice to be heard. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit, the riches and the blessings that are connected to every territory, in this case Abuja here, or whatever territory you are coming from, I declare, the Bible says the increase of the earth is for all, that even the king is fed by the increase of the field, your portion in this land, or wherever you are represented, I command it to locate you. I command it to gravitate towards you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number four, I pray for your family. If it is well with you and it is not well with your family, then it is not well with you. I pray for you, all your siblings, your parents, your loved ones, all who are connected to you by natural descent, by blood, and by responsibility. None of them will go down. None of them will go down. 
none of them will fall by the wayside in the name of Jesus Christ hear me koinonia let a mark and a mantle of honor let it rest upon your head let it rest upon your head let it rest upon your destiny everyone who is in ministry here and it looks like ministry is barren unfruitful you love god you are serving him with integrity of heart but there are no results that follow your loving and serving jesus in the name of jesus begin to command unusual results begin to command unusual results I separate you from the company of wicked and unreasonable people in the name of Jesus Christ and I speak over your life that anyone who fights you goes down instantly in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for our children we prayed for our children already but we're praying for our children koinonia children will be known for excellence koinonia children will be known for diligence they will love the lord and they will be outstanding i pray for every professional here anyone here who is in the career path especially a professional in the name of jesus i forbid you from remaining at the same position business people hear me i speak to you by the power that raised Christ from the dead and by the grace that helps men prosper everyone in business here I place an anointing upon you go and prosper go and prosper go and prosper go and prosper anyone here in need of a job I declare may your supernatural job locate you shame and reproach is finally terminated from your life now let me speak over your spiritual life this is a major prayer point i've spoken about the things that pertain to life let me now speak about the things that pertain to godliness because this is very important anything eating up your prayer life so that your passion and your zeal for fellowship and prayer has gone down or you are not interested in spiritual things again receive the fire of revival now whatever spirit ties you and does not allow you to stand up to take your place like a priest and pray against demonic things i decree and declare right now let fresh fire come upon your altar Number two, your word study life. Please hear me. You cannot afford to live in ignorance. The secret of dominion is access to light and even understanding. In the name of Jesus, the grace to be a student of scripture, the grace to be given to doctrine, to learning, may that mantle rest upon you now. For those of you who love Jesus, but your company is full of bad and destructive people. May my God separate you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Edit your friends. Edit your relationships. Make sure love everybody. Mean everybody well. But protect your focus. Protect your vision. And make sure you surround yourself with people who are going where you are going. In the name of Jesus Christ. There will be no obituary from any family. I say it again, there will be no obituary from any family. Whether by road, whether by air, whether by sea, be protected. In the name of Jesus. I'd like you to declare that you will never go back the way you came. Can you turn it into prayer? Let it be from the depth of your heart. Someone be angry enough and declare. Father, I have celebrated your hand upon many tonight is my turn declare by faith someone pray tonight is my turn in the name of Jesus
There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, then you will do all. You have a track record of keeping your word. You're not have called tonight a miracle service let it answer to its name in the mighty name of Jesus that all who have come tonight believing in your power will live graciously ministered to in the name of Jesus Christ and I decree and declare that none under the sound of my voice will return back in shame you believe that shout a louder amen How do you know you have received a miracle? How do you know your situation has changed? How do I know that I have received a miracle? Because you see, miracles do not just end just by faith believing. There must be a manifestation to it. Are we together? Yeah. The end of faith is a performance. The Bible says the word became flesh and it dwelt among us. It says, and we beheld. It is not a true miracle if you do not behold. At the end of it, you, you believe before beholding. But at the end of it, you must behold that this is what God has done. Somebody I'd like you to declare that you will not only believe, you will behold. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, I will behold. That healing must be made manifest, I will behold. That change of story, that turn around, I decree and declare, it will not just stop as a reality in the realm of the spirit. It must be made manifest and I must behold. I must behold in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah listen before you sit you see in Ephesians chapter 2 Paul in fact chapter 1 Paul was teaching the believers and he prayed a very serious prayer he prayed that they would comprehend the depth of power that was released when Christ was raised from the dead because the way faith is produced in the believer is through revelation. If you do not have access to revelation, there is no possibility of acquiring faith because it comes by hearing. So Paul is saying that you will comprehend the depth of power that was released when Jesus Christ rose from the dead. That means the kind of power that was exerted to dislodge death to dislodge hell, to dislodge the grave. Are we together now? Defying their grip over Jesus and still brought him back to life. In other words, if you comprehend the kinds of forces that were warded off for Jesus to resurrect, you will see how small your situation is in light of the power that was exerted to raise him up. That's why I raised that song, that in truth there is nothing that he cannot do. And you are here tonight, I pray that you did not come tonight with any unbelief, wondering, will God change my story? You know why we take testimonies here before the word comes? Because the testimony of Jesus, the Bible declares, is the spirit of prophecy. That when you listen to people, look at that. I was so blessed by that, that professor, that dear uh, Zimbabwean-American, with a PhD, but just walking in a store, opening boxes. But when the God of heaven, the jealous one who can arise over men, 
now she works with Jeff Bezos but if God were to tell her probably that one day you'll be working with the wealthiest man on earth it looks the same way God can be telling someone you will walk out of this service tonight and you, you will not even believe that it was the same you who came I pray that you will not doubt God tonight <laughs> hallelujah we give testimonies to let people know that God is still working because there is a theology there is there is an orientation that comes by reason of pain and prolonged situations when 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 situations um, keep people limited for a long time it is able to suggest an orientation to them that makes it look like God is not mighty so people can just shout amen just for the sake of it hallelujah I believe in Jesus we are living testaments of his wonder and let me tell you we are not discussing a God who did it before nor the God who will do it again we are talking of God who is doing it now do you believe that and for whole families who have come here asking will God visit us let me answer you in advance God will not only visit you he will surprise you you believe that shout a louder amen hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I'm sensing that someone is being healed from peptic ulcer peptic ulcer I don't know who that is but the power of God is coming on someone who has suffered peptic ulcer this is what I just got that that impression in my spirit you have suffered particularly peptic ulcer this has caused a lot of of discomfort this is someone you know you have it in the name of Jesus wherever you are I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead let there be healing for you now Amen. let there be healing for you now Amen. in the name of Jesus I'm seeing someone coughing throwing up something I don't know what it is but this is what I'm seeing this is like something demonic in that person's body in the name of Jesus wherever you are every planting that is not by my God I command that demonic planting whatever it is let it be uprooted from your body now you believe that shout a louder amen praise the name of the Lord I thought I would announce it later but I saw this in my I was just praying very briefly in fact while preparing and I don't know if it's inside or outside but there's someone you came with a walking aid like a crutch I just saw that vision now again repeated I want you to lift it and stand up whether you're outside your your crutch your walking aid lift it and begin to walk whether you are outside any of the overflows please lift it in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God walk 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 right to the front don't be afraid walk no I has seen no ear has heard what God has prepared for me so I submit to his work until Christ be formed in outside the Lord is showing me miracles happening outside crutches crutches miracles I'm seeing this outside please don't force them just make sure they are strengthened hallelujah particularly outside if they are not able to stand just give them somewhere to sit but 
this is what God is doing. Don't be afraid. We are not, we are not acting it here. Hallelujah. Number two. There is somebody who came here. Um, I'm seeing, I don't know if it's a neck, a neck, a, a neck, a collar, or something to support yourself. You could not move your neck. This is what I'm seeing. Move it now. Come. Please check yourself. Whether you are inside or outside. Don't be afraid. Check your neck, your, if you could not move your neck, please move it now. Move it now. You could not move your neck, whether you're inside or outside. Please, let's have a few officials. There should be one of the ministers outside so that you help manage those outside, any of them, so that you don't just um, punish people for nothing. Make sure that people are touched and healed. Hallelujah. In this miracle, in this ministry, we're not only, there is a grace called the walking of miracles. Hallelujah. The working of miracles is not just people healed who will be announced. You will watch it happen as it is happening. It's, it's the working of miracles. Hallelujah. Now, I'm, I'm seeing somebody who has been, is it coughing out? This is what I'm seeing in my vision. Coughing out blood consistently. Will soon be seated, but I just saw this in my vision. And the Lord wants to heal that person right now right now coughing out blood all of you please lift your lift the crutches whatever it is that you came with already god has done what happened to you madam can someone help her please don't leave her standing she looks yes i had two hip replacements um i'm uh, an ss patient and i came here for the lord to change my um, genotype from ss to aa and it's been causing all these problems not sure I, I got what she's saying. Someone um, help. I'm an SS patient. Sickle oh, you're an SS anemia. sickle cell anemia. Yes. Oh, sir. dear. And I have had two hip replacements on the same. You've had two hip replacements? On the same leg, on the same right leg. How long has this been? This is uh, the second one will happen on 25th of November, 21. And I'm still working with the sick. Leg. And you believe Jesus to heal you? Sure, I believe in Jesus. I believe Jesus, you can hear me, yes? Look at me. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands towards you. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, I bring you life. Life to your limbs. Life to your body. Supernatural strength right now. In the name of Jesus. You want to walk? Try walking. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, stand by hand, guide her. Two hip replacements. Look at what Jesus is doing. How about you, my dear? What happened to you? Accidents on the same legs uh, several times. You've had accidents on the same leg? Several. Ten times. Can you see how you can see how satanic this is? Do you think this is a coincidence? Over ten times. The, they have done surgery twice, but the the, the bone is lying parallel. Parallel. It is not joining. It's, it's not joining. Yeah. Look at me. You believe in Jesus? Look at me. Don't worry about what you are holding. Go walk. Lift it up and walk. My dear, do this gently, carefully. Are you watching a miracle happen here? Look at this. She was even afraid to do it. Before. You couldn't do it before? Yes. Hallelujah. What happened to you? 
Please stand up. In the name of Jesus, let me rebuke the spirit of accident. Everyone here, please listen and be very sensitive to prophecy. I'm praying prophetically over everyone here. If there is any programming of darkness that you will be a victim of accidents, let it be cancelled here permanently. Let it be cancelled here permanently. Let it be cancelled here permanently. In the name of Jesus Christ. Very touched by their stories. How do you have accidents in the same place so many times? More than 10 times. Yes, ma'am. I'm listening to you. And the, the lab bone got broken. So there was no money for me to go for, for surgery. But last year, September, I went for surgery. You went, oh, you are the woman who gave a testimony here? No. Okay. I went for surgical operation and they operated, but this right leg is already shortened. But they say they will still do another operation to straighten the bones. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, let there be a supernatural miracle right now. In Jesus' name. Would you want to walk? Move. Koinonia, celebrate what Jesus is doing. Now, I use these three people as a point of contact that in the name of Jesus everything that is broken damaged that needs a supernatural replacement let it be replaced right now let it be replaced right now in the name of Jesus let's celebrate them as they return back to their seats hallelujah let me just minister to one more, one, one group of people that the Lord is showing me here. I'm seeing someone who, I don't know if it's that you pass out, like you literally faint, it's a situation where you feel dizzy, and then, I mean, you can feel weak, sometimes you can pass out. Is there someone like that very quickly? When, if I do mention your case and you are, you know, that is your case, please do indicate very quickly so we don't waste time. We have a lot to do. This is what God is showing me. Someone who just gets dizzy, whether you are outside or inside, you can indicate so that you come out here very quickly. Very, very quickly. That's your situation? H how long? For let, like, um, let them come. Three years now or For, more. Okay. How about you, my friend? Where are you from? I'm from Edo State. Okay. As a matter of fact, three Sundays ago, I passed that while I was ministering on the altar. You were ministering? You were was, a pastor? Yes, sir. And you, you fell down? Yes. They had to give me water, but to the glory of God, I still finished the message. But <laughs> well, is that not... You see several people outside? Our mother here, how long, madam? My own is often, always, small thing like I used to go out to preach. I'm a pastor also. Are you seeing, are you seeing what the devil is doing now? I used to go out for preaching, small thing yes. from here to here. I will, my body will be, it's like I will faint, I will fall down. So I will stop preaching, I will go back home. Let me hear from this woman, this mama. Sister, I'm having high BP and I have from my waist to down. No work at times. I'll be feeling this. I cannot do anything. I'll just say that. You see, the thing I love about the Lord is with one revelation, it can solve several people's problems just like that. How do you come and what you are seeing out of the many cases here is people who are passing out or being weak or all of these kinds of things. I'm about to pray for you. This is a miracle service. Our assignment is to end the workings of darkness. You can see how the devil is trying to disgrace and embarrass pastors, disgrace and embarrass people. This mother is saying that she goes out for evangelism. That is not a good portrait of the... That is not a good marketing system for Jesus. 
when you are ministering and you pass out on stage it's like the devil trying to bring mockery to what you are saying hallelujah let me pray for you now place your hand on your chest let me rebuke that devil I can assure you and give you this information for free that a spirit is behind it in the name of Jesus even as the Lord has revealed I stretch my hands over everyone here and every spirit every demonic force that is behind this 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 situation I speak as one sent by God in the name of Jesus let God's people go now out of their lives now let God's people go now whether inside or outside release them now in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for you every one of you be healed from these seizures now in the name of Jesus I want to pray for this woman this fair mother I'm seeing the spirit of death in the name of Jesus I'm not a prophet of doom mama don't be afraid but I command that devil to release you now out of her now I shall not die play the strings for me believe and declare the works of the Lord Amen. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. You're a man of God, a pastor yes, with your own church. No, sir. You are under a ministry. Not yet, sir. I was invited. I go for outreaches. I have a healing outreach. I go. I visit different hospitals. Can I pray for you? Yes, sir. I don't know you, but there is a mighty anointing. God is going to use you very mightily. Stand up. Two things. You have to manage. You see, when it has to do with ministry, you have to trust God for grace to choose the right association. Good people can be destroyed with the wrong association. Are we together now? Yes. And, and this is already a prophetic word, maybe for a man of God. You are as good as your association, not just your heart. You can be a sincere man of God intending to do ministry with integrity, but join yourself with wrong chariots and wrong people who will begin to push you to do things that at the end of it, you will find out that it is not Christ you are revealing. But let me pray for you because God is put, I know that we are here to pray for this issue, but in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. What's your name? Are you a pastor? Yes, sir. Marvelous. Yes, sir. Who is Marvelous? I'm the one. What is your name? Full names. Ezewele Marvelous. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands. Marvelous. May the Lord do wonders through your life. Amen. You will do ministry with integrity Amen. and the Lord will use you mightily. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Please place your hand on this lady, this one wearing a black, anyone ushers, just place your hand on her. In Jesus' name, I command this spirit that is holding this girl's destiny, release her now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and I declare that every plague of darkness and of sickness, recurrent sicknesses, what God says to one, he's saying to everybody, if there is anybody here with a plague of recurrent sickness, I declare be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ, please return to your seat rejoicing. Hallelujah. Be seated for a few minutes. The miracle service is already on. Hallelujah. Okay, let me respond to this now. You see, the thing about the water has been stirred is that once it is stirred, it's stirred. There is a family God is showing me. Nobody is working. One of you got a job, but they drove the person away eventually. Where is that family? It's, it's like there is a spirit. Intelligent people love God, but it looks like nobody is working. No job. Please make sure you listen to what I'm saying before you come out. You belong to that case please come out quick 
your word is coming right now come out quick nobody in your family is working please listen to the prophetic word and for one of you you got a job but for some reason I'm seeing that this is this is a wicked manifestation of the activities of ancestry come you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say thank you you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say thank you so we coming from my friend this man I'm from Benue State sir Benue State yes, sir. I want to pray for you ah, God is going to visit people today yeah. honestly listen I want you to believe that as I speak over your life believe that you will return with a testimony yeah. hallelujah you see so many people there will be a rain of jobs I want to pray for you there is an anointing that I want to release upon your life and you will marvel. You heard the testimony of that woman. If someone is America, this is a PhD woman who is there struggling, opening boxes and a prophetic word comes, she puts her prayer request and now she's working with Jeff Bezos. What is it that God cannot do in the name of Jesus? Let me pray for those in front, but you can stand maybe for your loved one. You can stand for someone you know who loves God with all their heart, but it looks like these doors have not been opened. In the name of Jesus, those of you in front here, I'm going to declare an anointing upon you. A mighty anointing will come upon you and you will return with your testimony. Right now at the count of three, those in front, I, I'm a, I want you to shout the name Jesus. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Take that grace now. Take that anointing. Take that anointing. Take that anointing. Take that anointing in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare supernatural jobs. I break the circles of stagnation, career stagnation. I command those circles. Be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. I release supernatural jobs in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me, for some of you, it will not be up to three days from today write it down I'm telling you by the God who sent me my God will surprise you applications that you may have written for years that no one has called you over in the name of Jesus we schedule favor on that wise for you in the name of Jesus Christ There is someone I'm seeing here, you work with civil defense. Civil defense, you are not part of civil defense. Is there someone like that? I just got a prophetic word. The Lord is telling me you are up the balcony. You are somewhere in the balcony. Please verify. You work with civil, who is that person? Run, because a door, a mighty door is about to open for you. I will pray for you but the person I'm seeing you are wearing like lime or green up the balcony I know what I'm saying just listen to me is there someone like who is that where were you sitting let's organize this now please um, some of the leaders please Ho please bring her to the front let me talk to you my dear give her the mic look at me 
you had a dream some time ago and you saw this thing yes, sir, if i'm lying this afternoon. Huh? Even this afternoon, what happened i saw myself like, like an award in the office i want to pray for you that's because what god is about to do in your life will surprise you oh that's why you came with your id card that's why i brought my i told my friend sitting here the lady of purple i told her this afternoon where is I the friend her, look at her i told her of the dream this afternoon if you are not the friend don't come here please let's please please huh okay don't worry for sake of time give me the id card Let me tell you the truth. Koinonia, hear me. We are in the days of his power. Believe this when I tell you. We are in the days of his power. You see why it's good to come to the house of God? This has nothing to do with a miracle service. Once your heart is opened, civil defense how do i stand here and know that someone has been praying had a dream there are things you cannot fake no my dear i'm praying for you in the name of jesus christ because the kind of lifting that god is bringing will surprise you i prophesy may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus i hold your passport fire let that grace come on you now take that grace now in the name of jesus there is a grace for visibility there is a grace that can cause people to know you are there as i've released it upon this lady let that grace land on someone's destiny let the apakatos kete pakato may that grace rest upon someone rest upon a business rest upon a ministry in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit by this as a prophetic contact let an anointing rest upon your life you will come and testify in jesus name this is the lady that came here first no no hold on this this you are the one who came here you work in civil defense yes, too sir. And you too, madam? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. How long have you been there? I've been there for 10 years, sir. 10 years. What of you? 10 years, too. 10 years, two of you? Yes. 2012. Yes. Father, who is that? My friend. Why? You work in civil defense, too? I'm not, it's okay. It doesn't matter whether, I'm not saying if you walk, you, this is just a word for them. It doesn't matter where you walk. God is going to lift you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hold on. You... It was not too long ago you left UBA. Who is that? It was not too long ago you left UBA. UBA is a bank. Who is that person? God wants to change your story now. For those I have prayed for, you, the, the first set who came, God bless you. Please return to your seats rejoicing so that we'll hurry up now. Do you know I've not given my charge for tonight and you must hear the charge. Praise God. Faith comes by hearing. You must hear the charge. Please come. UBA. Is there someone like that? I'm not saying you are walking in UBA. You left UBA. Where, when did you leave? 17. 2017. Yes, sir. How about you? 2020. I want to pray for you. My people from civil defense, let's pray. In the name of Jesus Christ father you are wiping the tears of men you are changing people's stories in the name of Jesus I decree and declare may the Lord surprise you yeah. who came from Katsina Katsina I just saw that name Katsina when you find that person please don't tell lies huh please stand here Huh? What what's she saying? Mama, be patient, eh? We are going to pray. This one is word of knowledge. But since you have come, um, our mother is insisting that she's not well. We are going to we have a section to pray for the sick. What is wrong with you, Mama? Uh, diabetes. 
I have a partition. I have a... Okay, that's, that's all right. Let's just honor our mother. She's, she's an elderly woman. It's okay. Mama, you believe in the power. That, that's all right, Mama. Don't worry. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm going to pray for you. You came from where? From Edo State. Okay, don't worry. You see, she left a long distance, so let's, let's just forbear with her. You see, it's to tell you that people are desperate for the touch of God. Are we together now? So sometimes we are excellent people, but we need to allow. Sometimes this is an elderly woman, and as far as she's concerned, whether it's a case or not, I mean, you don't do it, but at least since she has done it, let's honor her. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for. No, 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 please, Mama, stand. We pray for our mother. Let there be healing. Yeah. Hypertension, diabetes, every demonic thing we cause you right now. Yeah in the name of jesus mama we bring you life back pain every pain in your body let it go right now in jesus name i pray let's celebrate mama she goes back to her seat where is the person from katsina yes sir katsina yes sir hmm. what do you do i'm police officer sir i want to pray for you yes sir i'm not a prophet of doom but I want to pray for you because I'm seeing them wanting to drive you because a pistol was missing. This is what I'm seeing. You understand? Yes, I'm yes, not. Go, I'm seeing that, you, you, like gone. Your yes, rifle yes, sir. could not be found, and you could not account for it. Yes, and this is a demonic thing because there is something God wants to do. I know you are a police officer, but there is a mighty man of God that God is training in you. Amen. Let me tell you the truth. God is, you see our police officers, there are, there are many people who will rise from the force. Write this down as a prophetic word. God is going to be, right from their academies, God will start raising mighty people. Mighty people. So I want to pray with you. You too, my friend. You came from Katsina. I came from Kogi State. I resigned from UBA Bank. Okay, you, okay, I'll UBA people. Okay, I'll pray for you. I don't know why God said UBA. You see, when you are walking with God, just obey. You, it may not make sense why God. There are many banks, and I'm sure everybody wants. What you do is whether the word applies to you directly or not. You can once your faith connects to it, you can return with a testimony. In fact, do you know I can prophesy to someone and the person I prophesy to may not even receive the miracle because of unbelief and someone who connected by faith will come back with a testimony. That is God for you. Are we together? In the name of Jesus Christ, my friend, I pray for you that the devil will not orchestrate an event that will indict you. There is a woman who is watching from Joss? Your son is a drunkard and you are tired of his situation. I'm seeing that mama crying right now as, as you are following. The Lord is saying I should tell you that in your lifetime, you will see God turn your son's life around. You are an elderly woman, you are watching from Joss. Your son has a problem with I think, and this thing has brought you a lot of pain. It's as if you gave birth for sorrow. Can I extend that prophecy for every mother here? In the name of Jesus Christ, for every mother here or anybody standing, any of your sons that the devil is trying to hijack, whether through drunkenness or any kind of addiction, here at this miracle service, we break the power of addiction. We break the power of addictions. We break the power of addictions. In the name of Jesus. So I pray for you, my friend. You go and return with a testimony. In Jesus' name I pray. And for those who left UBA, I don't know why the Lord asks that I bring you up out, but in Jesus' name I stretch my hands towards you. I decree and declare, may the Lord himself, by this prophetic word, shift you to the next season of your career exploits. Whether you currently have a job or not, I'm speaking to you prophetically. Return with a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Am I wasting your time? 
please don't feel bad but there are two women the Lord wants me to pray ordinarily I would not call them to come out but the Lord is instructing me young ladies you had um, you lost your pregnancy and you are even here with your husband and the Lord wants me to pray for you this is something that happened I don't know maybe it's maybe a few months back or so and you are here with your husband come I will worship him forever love him forever because this God is too good I will worship him forever love him forever because don't be afraid I know you may cry but it's a word of hope God is not asking you to come and stand here to disgrace you I assure you he's asking you to come because there is balm in Gilead this is a miracle service I will worship him forever allow those who are coming to come husband and wife come To show you the kind of nonsense that the devil is trying to do over families but we declare that the devil is a liar there will be a massive celebration of miracle children don't sit back if you are in this category God is calling you I will worship him forever love him forever because hallelujah listen the first word is a word of comfort please look up the Bible says remember ye not the former things nor consider the things of old you see when God gives a prophetic word and please our global family learn from this when you are operating prophetically number one you have to know that prophecy brings comfort prophecy exhorts this is not just a display of spiritual gifts these people that God is bringing you will be surprised that some of them right now if God does not step in their marriages may tear apart unfortunately because of the kinds of cultures that we come from for some of them when there are prolonged issues like this there's there's bound to be conflict between the man and the wife so when God calls them like this it is number one to let them know that he's aware the Bible says for we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities hallelujah let me comfort and encourage everyone here we stand as a ministry in love and partnership and in prayer with you but let me tell you whenever you are having any challenge as a couple there's no such thing as pointing your fingers to say you are the cause or you are the cause where you stood at the altar you agreed that two of you have become one are we together so if the wife wins and the husband loses they lost if the husband wins and the wife loses they lost it is only when they win together that they truly win let me ask the ladies if you can as a point of contact just place your hand on your stomach if you can and then I want to pray for you now remember not the former things the Lord God of heaven is going to bless you right now he will make a way for you. He will be your guide. Holds you closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. Let me rebuke the spirits that are masquerading behind all of these demonic things father i stretch my hands right now if there is anyone here that behind these manifestations of darkness are evil spirits unclean spirits yokes curses all kinds of ordinances i stretch my hands over you by the power that raised christ from the dead be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now I speak to you in the name of Jesus like prophet Eli spoke over Hannah.
according to the, ah, I'm seeing fire this is what I'm seeing I'm just seeing fire move over people Satan the Lord rebuke you release them now release them now release them now release them now in the name of Jesus Christ release them now I stand in partnership with the Holy Ghost and I declare be fruitful be fruitful be fruitful the Lord gave it as a command we stand as a ministry and enforce it over your life and as I'm praying for these ones anyone in the congregation who is trusting God for the miracle of fruitfulness fire is falling in the name of Jesus I declare be fruitful be fruitful whatever the medical condition is we veto it by the Word of God and we declare according to the time of life go and return with your children and for those of you trusting God for twins in the name of Jesus we release twins those of you trusting God for triplets in the name of Jesus we release triplets you will think it's a joke till you stand to dedicate them here so shall it be in the name of Jesus there is one of you here I'm seeing a spirit always appears to you and this is something that also happened to your sister they tell you they have visions where wicked spirits appear to them who is that person in the name of Jesus I decree and declare every foul devil that will not allow you enjoy your marriage in the name of Jesus we declare a separation right now a separation right now please return back to your seat rejoicing Hallelujah. Hmm. Koinonia. You are here and your business is not working at all. I'm not, I don't mean you are rising, you are managing. It's like there is an attack. I want you to leave your seat and run and come and stand here. God wants to surprise you. Please listen to what I'm saying before you come. Let's be orderly, let's be obedient. You will not be down except this anointing let me tell you the truth what will happen you will marvel and wonder at the lifting power that is in the name of jesus if you are if you are in any of the overflows just move to your leds you may not be able to come here those outside you can just move to your leds and connect by faith don't say it does not matter this is why god has organized this to attend to the issues of people hallelujah make sure that whatever business you are involved with is not a business that kills steals and destroys are we together yes we're not going to waste our time praying for people who are doing demonic things we, we, it's important that your value that what you are doing is adding value to people and not something that is destroying lives but I want to release an anointing upon you you will be surprised honestly are you ready father you have anointed us for this purpose there are people here who have cried there are people right now as I speak you have gone down like it's not you are owing to the millions tens of millions hundreds of millions it's not business that will bring you out It's the prophetic that will bring you out I strive move from left to my right in the name of Jesus at the count of three receive a baptism of the grace for excellence one two three take that grace now take that grace now Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. I release you. Go and prosper. Go and excel. Go and prosper. Go and excel. Listen. Every business that has died here, hear ye the word of the Lord. Between now and the next three months, 
I command come back to life come back to life come back to life anyone here who is in debt you are owing banks you're owing financial institutions you are owing and there is no way you can come out I call upon Ebenezer the God who helps men and I declare unto you come out of that financial situation alas master for it was borrowed and he said where fell it I'm speaking to you again in the name of Jesus if there are wrong people in your business I take them out now and the right people who need to join your chariot I bring them in prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ stretch your hands towards me your hand is a symbol of your productivity I place an anointing on these hands go and excel go and excel in the name of Jesus please return back to your seat rejoicing return back to your seat rejoicing the power of God is coming on someone but it is not for you I'm saying that is for your brother but you are only receiving from him he's not been promoted for nearly 10 years this is what I'm seeing he has been working I don't know where he's working but there's not been promotion at all do you know what it means to be in a place and you're just marking time there I don't know who that person is whether you are here in the main auditorium or outside but in the name of Jesus you don't have to come out the son of the living God I decree and declare that the anointing of the spirit lands upon your life and let there be supernatural pro promotion for your brother in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ mercy mercy I'm hearing the name mercy mercy please sit down please sit down Koinonia sit down for a minute mercy who is mercy mommy Some of you have been coming out for everything. Make sure that, make sure that, please, faith, faith, faith does not function in disobedience. Listen, faith does not function. Faith in one word I have taught you is obedience. It doesn't mean you have to come out to receive. Some people can even come out here, I've told you, and see go back and nothing happens. So please, let's be orderly so that it doesn't mean that once a case is mentioned, whether it concerns you or not, mercy if you are standing in for someone please go back make sure you are the mercy yourself hallelujah I want to deliver a family of mercy from witchcraft hmm. this thing has tied people in that family down sincere people but they cannot rise when I begin to minister deliverance one of the things that God is going to be taking from families is this demonic cloud of limitation that does not allow people to rise it looks like the moment someone begins to rise something just stops him I will first pray for them but that prayer is going to extend to everyone mercy in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands now the Lord the, this is why God brought you out here there is a mighty deliverance going to happen father every covenant that is connected to ancestry or any legal access that Satan has over the family of mercy that gives him authorization I come by the blood and I declare right now let that yoke be broken now broken now broken now in the name of Jesus Christ be delivered right now yokes of ancestry spirits of backwardness that keeps taking people back be delivered now please help our mother be delivered now hear me for all of you who have come forward I push you prophetically go forward go forward and as I'm praying for them I'm declaring it over someone go forward go forward in your life go forward 
in the name of Jesus like people will say you take one step forward and then you take ten backwards that is not the destiny of the believer in Christ for the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light is that in your Bible that shineth brighter more and more I'm saying it again to those of you here in the name of Jesus whatever has held you down I prophesy to you go forward in Jesus name we pray please return back to your seat rejoicing Return back to your seat rejoicing. Return back to your seat rejoicing. Hallelujah. Let me take one scripture. Then we'll begin to minister deliverance. And then with healing. Hallelujah. I was going to give us a charge. I will still do it for a few minutes. On the power of expectation please write the word is very important because that is the basis for the believers faith your faith is only built on the word the power of expectation what is expectation I wrote here a strong belief that something desired or anticipated will happen expectation is a strong belief that something desired or anticipated will happen that's what we call expectation that something desired something anticipated will happen in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 24 very quickly Proverbs 10 24 the Bible tells us that the desire of the righteous shall be granted that the desire of the righteous redeemed by the blood of the Lamb that one of the benefits that comes with being in Christ is access to your desires granted. Desires, of course, that are in line with the will of God. In Mark 11 and verse 24, Mark 11, 24, Jesus was teaching on faith and here's what he had to say. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, he says, when ye pray, Believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. I like the Amplified Version's rendition of verse 24 because it now brings perspective to it and it says, For this reason I am telling you whatever you ask for in prayer. In fact, one of the Amplified Expressions says that it is consistent to God's will. It says, Believe that it is granted unto you and you will get it this this expression of amplified says most believers please listen most people not know that expectation is a law it's not just when you do not have expectation you can cripple the hand of god from being made manifest in your life there is the law of expectation and that expectation is very very powerful hallelujah in first john chapter 5 i believe from verse 14 and 15 apostle john in his epistle said and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he says he heareth us 15 and if we know that he hear us whatever we, whatsoever we ask it says we know that we have our petitions that we desired of him so god responds to the expectations of the saints this is very very important the bible is full of men and women who communicated desperations and expectations in the Bible and returned with testimonies and the Bible is also full of others who trivialized the whole idea of expectations even to their detriment many believers may wonder why you can be in such a strong apostolic prophetic atmosphere and yet surprisingly walk back with nothing because usually the problem is your expectation let me show you two examples in Acts chapter 3 from verse 1 very quick reading Acts chapter 3 and verse 1 the Bible says Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour verse 2 
a certain man who was lame from his mother's womb the bible says who was carried that they laid him daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful so he would ask arms from the people there verse 3 he says who seeing peter and john about to go into the temple acts and arms and then the bible says verse 4 that peter fastening his eyes upon him with john said look on us now verse 5 the bible says he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something from them you can give heed to people in sarcasm well, let me see if they, I can get one or two things. But the Bible says he paid rapt attention, expecting to receive something from them. Hallelujah. And then you know the end of the story, down to verse 11. The Bible says at the end of it, the man was, was healed, and it was something that the people wondered. When you read verse 11, the Bible says that the people were greatly wondering. It became a sign and a wonder because of expectation example number two i like this one in mark chapter 10 i think the, the story begins from verse 46 this is a popular story of blind Bartimaeus. the bible says that they came to jericho reading to 52 and as he went out um, of jericho with his disciples follow closely a great number of people followed them then the bible says that blind Bartimaeus, the son of timu sat by the highway begging 47 when he heard that it was jesus of nazareth he began to cry out expectation and he said jesus thou son of david have mercy on me 48 now the bible says many charge him that you should hold his peace but he cried the more a great deal thou son of david have mercy on me 49 the bible says and jesus stood still and commanded him to be called and they called the blind man saying to him be of good cheer rise he called thee now watch a very interesting conversation that transpired and he casting away his garment in other words i know i will never have to need this garment again and he threw it away the bible says he rose and came to jesus now jesus answered and said to him what will thou that I do unto thee? That would look like a, a very sarcastic question. What would you think a blind man would be desiring from you? It would be a costly assumption to assume that the man wanted his eyes to be open. Jesus looks like a, at a blind man who had already stretched his energy in shouting. And instead of him to just lay hands on him, he says, what will thou that I should do unto thee? And the man said, the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I may receive my sight. The man at gate beautiful was not wanting healing. He wanted money. Is that true? The Bible says he was begging for arms. In other words, the apostles, I don't need to rise. Just give me money to take care of myself. Keep the scripture there. 50 now. The Bible says, verse 52, And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith, demonstrated to your expectation, had made thee whole. And the Bible says, Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. I like the end of that story. He did not receive his sight and he, then he went back. He received his sight and followed Jesus. Jesus told him, go your way, but he followed the way. Go, you receive your sight and go back. But he said, no, now that I've received the sight, I want to follow the one who gave me the sight. Are we together? So there are many examples where people opened up their hearts to be expectant. Listen, this is a very powerful law. By the grace of God, having ministered to people through the years, I have seen how people trivialize expectations to their detriment. You will be surprised that in such a powerful atmosphere as this, there are people who may just come based on invitation or just based on the ritual of honoring a ministry's program and they sit down, they celebrate, they enjoy, they laugh, they jot down key points and go back receiving nothing because of the absence or the bankruptcy of expectations. Now, let me show you 
the danger of not having an expectation. Acts chapter 12, please. For sake of time, we'll read verse 1 to 5, then we'll jump to verse 12. This was a story about um, Peter, when Peter was bound in prison. It says, now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church too. He says, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Verse 3, he says, and because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Verse 4, he says, and when he had apprehended him, Peter now, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Verse 5, watch this. Peter therefore was kept in prison. It says, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. So the church came together and they began to pray, Peter must not die. Lord, rescue Peter. And you would think because of that dissipation of energy, they had expectation. Let's go to verse 12 for the sake of time. When you read from verse 6 to 11, the angel of the Lord comes and then brings Peter out. We've read it many times here. Verse 12, watch this. And when he had considered the thing, the Bible says, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John. That was where the prayer was going on, whose surname was Mark, where they were gathered together praying. Reading to 16, 13 now, the Bible says, and Peter knocked <laughs> at the door of the gate. A damsel came to hearken to him named Rhoda, 14. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter had stood before the gate. Don't forget, this was the man they were praying for, verse 15. And they said to her, thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. And they said, it is his angel. Can you imagine that? Verse 16, but Peter continued knocking and when they had opened the door, they saw him and were astonished. That means while all that prayer was going on, prayer changed, Peter, you must go out of that prison. They did not even believe. There was no expectation that their prayer request came to their door and knocked. They opened it and closed it back and said, let's keep praying. That's how many believers are. Father, in the name of Jesus, I know you will turn my life around. You will change my story and yet there is no expectation you would see these people praying a prayer group a prayer chain praying in the house of mary and yet peter delivered by an angel in response to their prayer he now came to the door it was not a vision peter was knocking the damsel came opened the door shut it for gladness returned back and told them Stop praying. The answer has come. They say, no, we don't believe it. Just let him keep knocking. Now, if Peter went back in anger, they would conclude from that prayer meeting that God does not answer prayers. Could it be that there are people here, whilst you came here and singing, dancing, celebrating, shouting amen, but the truth is that you do not have definite expectations. If the Lord Jesus were to stand on this pulpit right now this stage he would ask you the same question he asked blind Bartimaeus: what do you want me to do for you god i'm tired of my issues that is not an expectation that is lamentation remember that's what happened in john chapter 5 to the man at bethesda jesus said what would i do for you he started complaining i have no man that's not what jesus asked him what do you desire that is the reason why you see we guide people by writing prayer expectations is a way of helping to articulate your expectations lord i am trusting you to open a financial door i am trusting that in the name of jesus christ this and that would happen many people do not have expectations and it's the reason why it looked like god does not reveal his outstretched arm towards them hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 paul admonishes us in hebrews 11 and verse 6 
saying that without faith it is impossible to please him it says for he that cometh to god we've dealt with this in this house the bible says he must come believing number one that god is meaning he exists and then number two that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him in other words you come here whilst you are seated celebrating what god is doing already there must be a definite expectation within your heart whether you are following online you are following here on site across all the overflows outside you must make up your mind that i am not just here to waste my time i have expectations and you see an expectation that cannot be articulated is no expectation at all what do you want god to do for you general lifting there's no such thing as that that statement already is both a sign of spiritual ignorance and then the fact that you are not prepared to receive anything. Are we together now? Yes. So faith, I wrote here, is expectation that is based on God's integrity and ability as revealed by his word. That faith is expectation based on God's integrity and ability as revealed by his word. It's impossible to say you have Bible faith without expectation because faith must be connected to an object, expectation. There must be something definite. Hallelujah. If you're with me, shout amen. amen. Tonight, many of us have come and sadly many are here and even though you've seen the power of god move already there are many people who are without expectations and the lord put it in my heart as we step into this second session of the miracle service that without an expectation sadly you may return back with no testimony at all because expectation is a law if it is bible faith it must be connected to specific things and specific areas where you want god to visit you I wrote a list of things here that represent many people's desires and expectations. Number one, marital issues. Number two, diseases and sicknesses, the things that plague people, that necessitate an expectation. Three, financial situations of all kinds. Number four, demonic oppressions. Five, the need for restoration. Six, direction of all kinds. breakthroughs deliverances from all kinds of yokes every time you see a people gathered unto God like this this usually are the issues that represent their pain that represent their expectations and until you are able to articulate it you look at anything in your life that does not reveal or reflect the glory of God you now connect Lord, I trust you and I release my faith that this situation must come to an end. For instance, I mentioned by the Spirit the case of people maybe having financial issues here. You saw the number of people who came. I was very impressed. It is a terrible thing to not know what is wrong with you. It is a terrible thing to not even know what you need. Are we together now? That's why the Holy Spirit guides us when we come. So that you will know when your word comes. And so that you will know when to receive and to manifest your testimonies. Your testimony will not pass you by. I wrote finally here that every genuine expectation is expressed in words and action. Please write. Every genuine expectation is expressed in words and actions expectations that cannot be expressed in words and in action is not expectation at all every genuine expectation is expressed in words words there means you must be able to pray it and you must be able to take the necessary steps as required for victory every genuine expectation now imagine those who were just healed and delivered just like that did you know that if their word came as it came and they did not come out, maybe they just sat down saying, well, it's none of my business. 
you will be surprised that with the power of God moving up and down it will pass them by because they did not God will not force his power on you I hope you know that I'm saying this because when we begin to pray and we begin to minister deliverance and minister healing and so on and so forth and then more importantly your prayer request no matter how accurate God has granted the grace, we see in part, we prophesy in part. This is why everybody is given the liberty to write your prayer request. Please let me encourage you. Don't get so used to just writing and submitting your prayer request. It is a very powerful tool. It is a way of guiding you by the Spirit to clearly articulate your expectations. There are things you may not have the courage to say here. Imagine how embarrassing it will be if I call you and I say, tell us everything that is your expectation. Some will be personal. There are things that is between you and God alone. That's why we write it and we pray over it here. And from here, it is burnt. It is nobody's business what you have written. Are we together? That means you should not spare when writing the things you are trusting God for. What things soever ye desire, it says, when ye pray, you are a man of God and ministry is not working. No doors opening, souls are not being saved. You write it. Father is supernatural breakthrough in ministry. Write it clearly. I have a son. What is his name? John. John does not seem to be a disciplined gentleman, write it. Supernatural restoration for John. I'm showing you how to prepare. You write it both in your heart and then on paper. So that when we begin to pray, as the power of God is coming, it is resting upon your expectation and turning it into a testimony. You can return back and know that this happened to me. And you can return back to testify, I wrote this. Jesus did this. Look what my life has become now. When Dave was here taking the testimony, he said there is before and after, but that only happens when there is an expectation. Is someone learning? Yeah. When I pray preparing for the miracle service or any other service for that matter, I have expectations myself as a man of God, even for the meeting. Some are revealed by the Spirit. Some come as my sincere desire to see God's people blessed. And these expectations are reflected in my, prayer, my prayers as I prepare for the meeting. Lord, bless your people. For instance, two major expectations is healing and financial breakthrough. This has been my major expectation and my prayers for God's people. Because this is what I have discerned that Satan is using to cripple his body. These two things. One, sicknesses of all kinds extending to demonic attacks. Number two, financial problems. You will be surprised to see how many believers are stranded financially. And let me tell you the truth, for as long as God has anointed us, but I'm not somebody, when I am I'm dealing with issues that help believers to rise, I'm not ashamed of it. When you are blessed and you rise, it is a joy to Jesus, to the purposes of God, and even to me. For as long as you are under this ministry, you will not be poor. Let me tell you the truth. It's true. You will learn the ways of the kingdom, but you will also receive the engracings and the prophetic backing that it takes to rise. Are we together? Healing and finances. These were my major areas. Doesn't mean we'll touch on other areas, but these two areas. That means by the time we begin to minister in this second session, when you hear me speaking and declaring over your finances, shout a loud amen and receive it with all your heart. Don't be like the foolish man who stood at the gate of Samaria and, and was trying to mock the prophet Elisha that even if God will open the heavens, might this happen? And he said, you will see it, but you will not eat of it. God is changing the stories of men. God is surprising people. You see people come and they're testifying here. Healings and even financial miracles. That is not all God can do. He will respond to your expectation. For someone, you are here praying, saying, Lord, I cannot have five boys, ten boys, and none of them has risen. As their mother, I'm still feeding them age 40, age 50, age 30. That that demonic oppression must stop. 
and God comes to you. For someone, maybe there's no peace in your home. You love the Lord, but it's as if there is, there is war always happening in your home. Father, I need peace. You are the Prince of Peace. Bring peace to my home. And you'll be surprised. While you are here, the husband and wife can be here. And the fire of God just falls upon them. An altar call is made. And you'll see your husband coming to give his life to Christ. And that begins the journey of total transformation. Maybe you're a man of God who loves God, but there's almost zero anointing on your life and your ministry. You struggle on the pulpit and it looks like God did not call you. You can bring that to an end. The anointing is transferable. Graces are transferable. Apostle, I'm here. I love the Lord, but I don't even know what I'm doing on earth. I'm just escorting men around the corridors of their destiny. I need to find my place. Do you have it as an expectation? An expectation is more than a wish. A wish is a careless desire with no consequences, whether it is actualized or not. An expectation comes with dogged faith attached to it. Lord, I'm, I'm committing your integrity on this matter. Archbishop Benson, in a host of blessed memory, said if your faith says yes, that God will not say no. Because if it is Bible faith, it will be based on his will. So there is no reason why God should say no. Are we together? Apostle, I'm tired. I've been married 10 years, 15 years, no child. Well, I'm sure that God will open my womb. That kind of, that, that is a careless, you know, very, very shabby wish. It will not happen that way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. This is my miracle service. I connect and I declare that in the name of Jesus, by next miracle service, I'm already pregnant. I release my faith. You believe. And while you are saying it, the devil will be mocking you and saying, is that not what you said last miracle service? Has it happened now? You need to learn how to forget about the devil when you are dealing with God. Don't allow him come and interrupt your conversation with God. You are talking to the king of kings, the lord of lords, the creator of the ends of the earth. Don't let Satan come and interrupt your discussion. Father, I know in the name of Jesus that I can complete this house. I've begun this building project as it is now. I may be stranded, but in the name of Jesus, you have told me that this year of open doors, that in Jesus' name, I will dedicate my own house. While he's saying it, here comes the devil. He will whisper all kinds of things and say, just to remind you for the records that you lost your job last month, and just to let you know that right now as it is, they've increased the school fees of your children. Before you know it, you will take your attention from Jesus Christ and you are listening to the devil. And at the end of it, your, your prayer request will make you, you will just be reduced from the realm of the spirit to the realm of the flesh. How do you know you have come back to the realm of the flesh? What you were once confident upon will look like stupidity. You know you are being reduced back to that realm. Lord, I'm trusting you for supernatural partnership for my ministry. And then eventually you say, ah, but use yourselves. Who will come and give you one million? 10 million, 100 million. The devil has succeeded in bringing you down. The Bible says, this I say then, walk ye in the spirit. That to be spiritually minded, he says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Is someone learning now? I want you to come and li listen. You do not know the joy that is in my heart when people come to stand here and testify. Because testimony is the end product of the manifestation of faith. That God's word has finally delivered unto me. And now you are declaring to the nations that he's faithful. You are declaring to the nations that he's dependable. You are my God. That's what happens when you declare. That you are my God. Regardless the limitations, I prevailed by faith. You are my God. Despite the cost in the family, now I have the children. Listen to me. Believers, hear me. If you do not believe that God is able to step in for you, then just know that you are wasting your time as you are seated here. Don't make up your mind. Father, 
I'm not going to be the one just catching people as they fall. I'm not going to be the one watching people as they say amen. And some of you, the lack of expectation even appears physically. A word is coming in the name of Jesus and you just stand. And you're seeing somebody receive, you know, just verbalizing, this is my word. And you just stand watching, wow. And then when it looks very powerful, you just lift one hand and say amen. You will never receive like that. God is not a fool. Are we together? Expectation has an attitude. They said, look on us. And the Bible says he looked at them, expecting to receive. When Elisha was going to receive from Elijah, there was an attitude. If you can see me as I'm taking up. Some of you have come here to access mantles and to access graces. Don't sit down and, and your ministry is dying. Whereas there is a plethora of graces you can access. And rise to a position where you are of value to the kingdom. Don't be a man of God as if you are not anointed. But it's your expectation. A word can be coming. Oh, the healing anointing is coming. And, you, and that is really what you need. Let me tell you the truth. If you're a man of God, the sick are not healed through your hands. Oppressed people are not delivered. Lives are not being changed. Can I surprise you? Even if you're a good teacher, especially in Africa, believe me, there will be limitations. Because in ministry, it is the message and the backing that go hand in hand. If what you are communicating is truth, it must be backed up with signs following. And for any genuine ministry, people must hear and see the workings of God. In Acts chapter 8, when you read from verse 5 down to 8, the Bible says, Philip went down to Samaria and he preached Christ unto them. 6 says the people gave heed to the things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles that he did. That means he said Jesus is able to do this and he demonstrated it. Jesus is able to lift and he demonstrated it. Jesus is able to wipe away tears and he demonstrated it. So it is my desire that you are a man of God here, a minister of the gospel. Do not just, yes, you may come to receive healing or whatever it is for yourself, but among the many things you should not forget to carry is the grace that produces that result. Are we together? Whenever I have the privilege of meeting genuinely anointed people, especially fathers of faith, I'm like a sponge. I don't go there saying I'm anointed too. I search, especially spiritually, what are the graces that I need for this level in my life that are not yet at work in my life. And any opportunity God grants me to connect, I connect by faith. I was so touched with the testimony of that redeemed, that precious redeemed pastor. That was already a man of God, a pastor. And that's the problem, especially with most people. You will feel I'm a pastor too. We are all men of God. I have taught you, you never receive having a colleague mentality. Mm -mm. He was at the redemption camp according to his story. Already, and God gives him a word and then he takes that risk to empty his account. Now look, a landowner in Lekki, the mainland, and I can tell you that is only child's play compared to what is coming. Results happen by steps of faith and then graces that work. Don't forget this. When the grace for something is on your life, you cannot but produce the results. These are not cunningly devised fables. Once you are seated under this atmosphere, even if you are not sick in your body, even if you are not trusting God for any financial miracle, even if you are not trusting God for any breakthrough, do you know that you can become a living potent career of certain graces? And I told you that graces are not silent. The career may be silent, but the grace will not be silent. No, graces make noise. When grace, a grace is upon your life, you cannot but manifest. And I'm praying for someone already. In the name of Jesus, every grace that is missing but required in ministry, in business, every grace that is required but not yet at work in your life, may this be the season you will carry it. Yeah. Hallelujah. There are many graces that are available for believers. And, and, and you see, every time, when, when I speak like this, I speak passionately. There is no need to struggle 
we have done teachings on the body of Christ here it is foolishness I'm telling you when when you refuse to open up your heart to receive the graces that are available especially when abundance of it it's like somebody crying hallelujah man of God respectfully speaking he just reached me and we're laughing he said apostle I heard that when you open up for volunteers for the UK conference there were about 3,000 people that that is enough for a conference on itself and this will how do 3,000 people come together in another land are we together now in another land 3,000 people to be volunteers to be the workforce not the people coming for the conference it is not pride it's a grace and you can carry that same grace to your shop you can carry that same grace to your ministry are we together now yes it is my prayer that sooner or later God will help us to see the value of impartations. Your Christian experience will be barren in many regards. There are many of us here, and, and I, I say this from, from a heart of love. If one person having a crutch, one person alone is healed in your church or your ministry or your prayer group, that one healing alone can bring you tens of partners to come and stand with you and say, we believe in what God is doing. You're not going to be able to do end time ministry, being powerless, bankrupt of graces. You speak over people, they don't shout amen because they know that shouting is wasting their time. There is a track record of you making a lot of noise with no result. Everything mocking God in your life, in the name of Jesus Christ, it dies at this miracle service. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, you should not be ordinary. You lay hands on people. They are even looking at you frowning because they believe that nothing came on their head. And they are right. Since I laid hands on you, what happened to you? Absolutely nothing. In fact, I went down. I was even better before you laid hands. As soon as your hand came on me, I, the remaining part of the breakthrough now went down. Your life must change. Your life, must change. Your, life must change. Your mind must change. Your mind must change. Your life must change. Your life must change. Your life must change. How do you know you have access grace? The results. The results. The results what suddenly happened to your shop man of God where did you go to that God is drawing as many to be saved I used to know you as an ordinary preacher while you are preaching we are sleeping what came upon you that now you are communicating the Word of God with fire and precision with signs and wonders following I met a man of God who I think he was around last week or week before last and he shared a very touching testimony he said apostle I used to struggle so much in ministry I would open my Bible and literally be frustrated on stage and he said one time I came I don't know for which of the services and I received an impartation he said when I went back it was fire now what surprised him was that most people in the church did not even know that he came here but to his greatest shock he said he started seeing his worship team literally reflecting like our people here he didn't tell them oh this is the thing about impartation the spirit you contact is what begins to work you contact excellence you'll be surprised the most disorganized people in your organization something starts bringing them together they do not even know where you went to receive an impartation from Please believe what I'm telling you. Graces speak. They looked at Peter and said, these are unlearned men, but they discerned that they had been with Jesus. I'm saying this because we'll be rising up shortly and I want your hearts to, if you're sick, trust God to step in for you. But among the many things I'm praying that will happen to us is this area of healing, this area of financial breakthrough and then impartation 
don't be limited my brother my sister refuse to be limited you are a prophet and people are still doubting are we together now we who are not even prophets by office are prophets I'm more than you it's not it's not it's not a competition I'm challenging you you can rise to a level of the prophetic with uncanny mastery that you speak the counsel of God and nations who stand still because they have learned that you have leaned your ears to the heart of God and that when you say you heard God you really heard how about some of us here who are jumping up and down saying we are kingdom financiers you've not supported the the program of God with one naira because the devil has seen that you have a heart for God and he's fighting the resources from coming it will take more than business ideas as important as that is there is a forceful dimension of the prophetic that can push you into your Goshen There are many gifted people who the world does not know of and it ought not to be so because you see the Bible says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel listen to me it is not a manifestation of flesh when you desire sincere visibility for the purpose of the kingdom without visibility and influence the nations cannot know you are there it's not by trying to market yourself you are lifted by grace there is a hand that lifts men and puts them in a position where the nations know that God has lifted you now it gives you the platform to serve the purposes of God many of us are frustrating ourselves trying to manipulate ourselves into visibility it doesn't happen that way when that grace is on you you can be in a cave and yet from that cave God will raise men to look for you now I don't know what your expectation is tonight but for the next two or three minutes I'm going to allow you with the Lord Jesus Christ verbalize your expectation please open your mouth and cry to the Lord that which you desire him to do in this miracle service please pray Someone is verbalizing his expectation. The expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. Man of God. What do you desire the Lord to do in this season where the wave of his glory, the wave of revival is sweeping from nation to nation? I repeat to you again, we are in the days of his power. We are in the days of his power. We are in the days of apostolic signs and wonders heralding the end time move of Jesus across the nations. Businessman, what do you desire that God does in this season where he's raising men and giving men the wealth of nations to frontier the purposes of the kingdom? Shut up, Alakas. One more minute, don't be silent. Pray. 
You are a man of God, I like you to declare. I'm tired of doing ministry without genuine power. Tired of the difficulty experience in calling many to Jesus, drawing many to Jesus. Oh, for they need to come and come in their multitudes. We are in the days of his power. My Bible says the people shall be willing. Few more seconds. Hallelujah. Listen. Maybe one day, when we have the opportunity and we're teaching, I will share with you a bit of my story and how I sought for and pursued some of these graces that God has so graciously made available today. In as much as God has granted me the privilege of encounters with Jesus, I can tell you that there are many graces that are upon my life today that did not just come from that one encounter or those encounters. There were times in my life when I had to review my life with respect to God's expectation for me and I had to search by knowledge, by mentorship and by revelation the graces that will be required for my efficiency. I am still a seeker of those graces up until today and I began to intentionally meticulously search for the graces that are responsible for producing genuine ever increasing results I submit to you again that struggle will never end until grace comes on an individual Many people, you, you can have a semblance of results. You can jump and keep gyrating. If the results are not there, it is because the grace is not there. It's as simple as that. So I want you, please hear me. Do not be distracted. Because I trust that by God's grace, I will be speaking from the depth of my spirit. And for God's sake, I'm praying that somebody will, even if it's for the first time, that you will open up your heart to carry something, something of substance. And it doesn't matter whether you are male or female, doesn't matter whether you are young or old, doesn't matter whether you are sound or on sight, the most important thing is your faith. Make up your mind that ministry will not be barren again. Make up your mind that you will not be around rigma rolling as if God did not call you. Make up your mind. You're not the first to do what you're doing. It is the bankruptcy of the grace needed. And you may say, I have an anointing. Is it for the level you are stepping into? Yesterday's anointing will not command today's results. No, sir. Hallelujah. Can I start with an impartation? It's going to be a very quick walk tonight. Even if we don't have time to get to take testimonies, no problem. Let me start with an impartation. Listen to me. I want to start with impartation for ministers of the gospel. Everybody will receive, but particularly, you are, you are a minister of the gospel, let your heart be open. I want to release a grace upon you. Ministers of the gospel, it's time to to this powerlessness in the church. If we do not drive it away by the introduction of genuine graces, the purposes of God and the program of God will suffer. I call upon the God of my covenant, and in the name of Jesus, I declare for everyone called into ministry the mantle and the grace needed. Take it now, take it now. Take it now, take it now, take it now. The grace needed for efficiency. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hear me? If you are a prophet here, may your eyes and your ears be opened. Supernaturally, 
ke parus katabata may mantle come upon you male and female may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus christ the healing anointing i'm seeing fire coming on the hands of people i don't know who you are but drink of that fountain in the name of jesus christ drink of that fountain a new wave of the healing anointing a new wave of the healing anointing i release it upon you i, re I release it upon you take that grace now signs and wonders i shift you into a ministry of signs and wonders potent signs and wonders in the name of jesus christ that through your hands the blind will see through your hands the deaf will hear through your hands cripples will walk in the name of jesus christ hear me every dimension of the gift of the spirit that is missing in your life but required for your destiny i'm telling you i'm seeing like candles i'm seeing candles in the spirit and fire is coming on those candles this is what i'm seeing it looks like acts chapter 2 and verse 1 that pentecost fire let it come upon you now that pentecost fire let it come upon you now pentecost fire with proof in your spiritual life I'm still praying for everyone but particularly ministers of the gospel the spirit of revelation superior illumination into scripture I tell you men and women will teach scripture like never before the word of God will open up to you you will communicate doctrine and the mysteries of scripture with precision and exactitude receive that grace right now receive that grace the spirit of revelation in the name of jesus christ every altar that has been barren of power from any man or woman of god here in the name of jesus return back to your various stations with fire return back to your various stations with fire in the name of jesus christ hallelujah praise the name of the lord let's do the finance one now father it is your desire for your people to prosper even in this season and many of them have come from situations right now where except you help and show mercy certain financial doors may not seem to be opened but in the name of jesus you have orchestrated this service for the mysterious lifting of men therefore the grace component required for your financial exploits receive it now Hmm. Hmm. Receive it now. Receive it now. Hear me. There are many of you, by reason of this impartation, a strange order of wisdom is resting on your mind. Superior strategies, superior ideas in the name of Jesus Christ. and every spirit of lack and poverty that has followed any family here i don't care for how long it has been i arrest it now in the name of jesus i arrest it now in the name of jesus i arrest it now in the name of jesus, name of jesus. hallelujah please be silent 
I want you to bring all the people who will be under the anointing now. Just be silent. You don't say you've prayed. This is the instruction God is giving me. I want to rebuke certain strange spirits that have held on to certain destinies. And usually I will ask you to shout, but the Lord is giving me an instruction to be silent. In the name of Jesus, Father, even as you have instructed, everyone here and every family here, under the influence of wicked spirits, yokes, covenants, aha, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm telling you there's, there's such fire that is moving. In the name of Jesus, let there be deliverance for such people. Supernaturally. Please bring them out. Whether for individuals or families, very quickly, men and women, everything that has tied your progress, I decree and declare right now, be released. Be released. Be released. Please bring them out. My God, fire is falling in this place. Bring them quickly. Ancestry, yokes of darkness. You may not even know that is the cause. The Bible says, Now the Lord is that spirit. Something is leaving you. I'm seeing someone like a chain around your waist. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let it be broken now. Release their destinies. Release their destinies. Release their destinies. It happened to your father. It happened to your mother. It happened to your siblings. The blood is speaking against it now. The apakosh ketepata. The blood is speaking against it now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king. There is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Please bring them out quickly. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king. There is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. of people and the Lord is saying he's opening graves I don't know what this means but in the name of Jesus every family here that has been tied down by witchcraft and ancestry I stretch my hands fire fire begins to burn everything that is not of God bring them out let it destroy the works of darkness let it destroy the works of darkness connected to ancestry connected to the spirits of the dead be delivered now I'm still praying. Please be sensitive. This is a very prophetic moment. Sanakos kedila sobe shalakros kevaniata engroto so deba lakusia. Every two two years, someone must die in that family. This is what I'm seeing. The Lord is bringing deliverance. Someone must die. Where are those people? The power of God is coming on you now, right now. I break that chain of that pattern that pattern of death break now break now break now break now anyone here appointed unto death that the devil has vowed 
that you must die this year I don't know where you are but in the name of Jesus I want to rebuke that influence over your life and I hope you know that as you are standing here you can stand in for your loved ones too wherever they are spirit of death I speak to you you know my voice anyone whose destiny you have hijacked release them now release them now release them now negative and demonic dreams seeing yourself in the past past schools writing exams that never finish all kinds of satanic things everything that connects you negatively to yesterday be set free right now please help them be set free right now be set free right now hear me the lord is asking me to repeat this same thing again you go to bed and you see yourself doing things you had done before levels you have left according to scripture believers don't go backward we only go forward every spirit drawing you back i break you from their influence now let me tell you this hear me i hope you know i used to have those experiences myself before you've heard my story as a man of God, though, not just a, an, an ordinary believer, I used to have those experiences where demons would come and press me and all those things. I would shout Jesus, shout Jesus, nothing will happen. That is why when you see me ministering deliverance to people, I do it with passion because I've been a victim of oppression. Again, let me speak to someone. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have tried, and yet nothing has changed. In the name of Jesus, this night, be delivered permanently. 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 Hallelujah. Don't be tired. I'm seeing in a vision. This is what I'm seeing. The hands of people tied. How can a man move like this with your hands tied? How can a man move like this and walk with your hands tied? I don't know who that person is, but in the name of Jesus, let fire from heaven. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. You may even have a job, yet your hands are tied. I don't know whose hand is tied or whose destiny is tied. At the count of three, shout Jesus and your deliverance comes. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Be delivered now. I break those chains. I break them from your hands. I break those chains. I break them from your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me the vision of a door. And I'm seeing many people queuing in front of that door. And according to the vision I'm seeing, trying to force the door to open. And some are even crying. And I'm seeing people dropping, like dying. Yet that door is not opened. I believe that this is a sign of advancement or retrogression that doors and I believe that this line represents families and even generations that have stood there are doors that have limited families that they say nobody can pass through this door you can go abroad you can school like this our dear woman the professor that came to give a testimony let me open that door prophetically I taught you at the beginning of this year that there are three ways doors are open number one is by the use of the right key number two is by knocking the ministry of men but number three by force and power let me use number three because when those doors open they open from their foundations i decree and declare every generational door 
that has closed Parakatos I stand as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let that door be open now. I break that door now. I break that door now. I break that door now. Generational doors be open. Be open. Be open. Efata be open. Be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. You will be surprised to see what happens to you as a result of this miracle service. Hear me? You see, when a door is open or broken, the most important thing is that the right of way has been given. You will begin to see mysterious advancement happening to you. In the name of Jesus, for all who are in front here, I declare prophetically that God who has located you, you have come out by the anointing, the spirits that oppress you, I declare at the count of three in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God. They release you once and for all. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. One, two, three, go, go, go. Release them now. Out of their lives, never to return again. In the name of Jesus. The sun sets them free and we declare the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. They are free forever. They are free forever. They are free forever. In the name of Jesus. Please hear me. I told you that I have discerned that among the many things that God is doing is bringing health and healing to his people and also bringing financial stability. You see the teachings that I've been bringing. These are not just teachings that are coming carelessly because one of the things that the devil has released upon the body of Christ, please hear me, is death through sickness. Mysteriously, people just wake up and you find out that there are diseases you cannot account for. Are we together now? It is our responsibility to be able to discern what heaven is doing and to be able to communicate God, God's intent for his people. So this prayer for healing, we may not have time for testimonies because our time is gone. You can always register your testimony, but I want to pray with you. Listen, if there is any loved one you know in your life who is sick, please, as I'm praying, connect with them so that they don't die for nothing. And for those who are connecting from any hospital, our teaching hospitals, private hospitals, now is the time. It's incredible how people connect from hospitals and release their faith. Please connect. We're, we're, we're talking now under the influence of the anointing. Lay your hands on your chest. If you have a medical report, bring it out. I'm about to pray. That devil must let you go. Must let your children go. Please place your hand right now. I want to minister the life and the healing power of Jesus. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. And then we'll pray. Praises to your name, O oh God, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Place your hand there. I sing praises to your name, O oh God. Praises to your name, oh God, for your name is great and greatly. We lift your name.
place your hand there right now and as I pray for you I shout the name of Jesus I want you to thunder a loud amen let the devil and let that sickness know I told you expectation must be expressed in words and in action hallelujah in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I command every spirit that is back of any infirmity in the name of him who died and rose again I speak as one sent from God may that spirit leave your body now that devil of infirmity leave God's people now from America to Europe to South Africa to Kenya to Zimbabwe to Ghana to Lagos to Abuja to Joss to Kano let the healing power of God begin to flow right now be healed in the name of Jesus 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 blood conditions be healed now cancer die now HIV be healed now blood conditions of any sort we declare healing right now blind eyes partial or complete blindness we command that you open now deaf ears be open now anyone here suffering from the issue of blood I declare be healed right now every demonic growth roaming around any part of your body there is someone fire is coming on you there's movement all over your body you literally feel things moving in your body from your head to your toe be set free right now there's someone you are having a problem with your heart in the name of Jesus be healed right now the Lord is showing me a woman in a vision it started like having you know how you have cold maybe a flu or something and then you lose your voice but till now your voice is not restored this has this has become months you know most times people just take maybe lemon warm water or something some you know and and then eventually their voices their, their, the sound returns but for this woman your, your your voice refused to return back so you speak as though you are whispering it's a demonic thing i restore your speaking now in the name of jesus christ there is a woman you are laying your hands right now you are in this place you are laying your hands upon your daughter your little baby there's been a mysterious sickness you don't even know why she's losing appetite she's not eating she know not sucking not doing all of that in the name of Jesus Christ let that little baby be healed right now now whether I've mentioned your case or not in the name of Jesus be healed now the Lord is showing me a plot by darkness to take someone's father and mother the same day this is what I'm saying in the name of Jesus I don't know who that person is a mysterious sickness just destroying both of them like in this not accident like that just you know in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare we extend their life to its fullest you will not lose any of your loved ones again therefore be healed be perfected there's someone you have your own is not heart palpitations I'm not a medical doctor I'm just sharing what the Lord is showing me your heart is not pumping blood properly this is what is wrong with you 
I may not know the, the medical name of that situation, but it makes you dizzy. It, it, um, I mean, it's, it's like the, the case that I mentioned earlier here. In the name of Jesus, I don't know who that person is. Whatever blockage is around your heart, that extends to your veins, your arteries, whatever is stopping the normal blood flow to supply oxygen to the body, in Jesus' name, we declare supernaturally, let there be healing. Let there be healing. There's someone, the Lord is showing me, every time it is rainy season, you have boils come out of your body like boils sores come out even you know various areas of your body that discomforts you seriously i don't know who that person is but this year we exempt you from that experience in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus now everyone you're going to be praying in the spirit for the next one minute while you submit your prayer requests let's do it very quickly ushers let's have the prayer requests please bring out your prayer requests our global family now is the time to forward your requests just pass it to the last person by your left or right to make the work easy for the ushers just pass it please if you need to pen down one or two things just make that snappy very very quickly hallelujah make that very snappy god bless you are you praying? Make sure you're not silent. Ushers, let's make it fast, please. Make sure we have enough people outside and then all the overflows. Those online connect by faith right now. You heard the testimonies. Hallelujah. Where is that woman who gave, that professor woman that gave a testimony from the Zimbabwe, America? Where is she? Is she here? Please let her come quickly. And then the pastor from Redeemed, that pastor from Redeemed that testified, two of them, please let them come. Submit your request very quickly. Let's have it very quickly. Hallelujah. Praise God. The pastor from Redeemed, please let him come. And then the professor walking with Jeff Bezos. Hallelujah. I want to speak over your lives, both of you. You came here, I just felt led in my spirit. Not that we're trivializing, and every testimony is great, but the Lord put it in my heart. I thought I would do this privately, but the Lord asked me to do it now. Please, let's have the request very quickly. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that both of you have acknowledged the power of the anointing. The, the, you can be gifted, but your gift must be anointed. To be gifted and to be anointed are two different things. To be gifted means that you have developed, outsourced, and even refined your value to be able to serve your world with excellence. But the assignment of the anointing is to be able to bring the spirit factor because James 2.26 says, a body without a spirit is dead. Your gift is a body. Without a spirit, it can still be dead. And our dear professor, we're going to pray for you and release you with another dimension of grace that you will go back and you will marvel and wonder at what the power of God can do. And for our dear pastor, we don't know what parish you pastor or whatever you do, but you have come to acknowledge Jesus. The lands you bought in Lekki and the other one is child's play. That is just a test of faithfulness. God will grant you access to the wealth of nations. Now let me pray for both of you. I stretch my hands. We've been commanded to bless. And in the name of Jesus, this is a sworn blessing. It cannot be reversed. I stretch my hands upon both of you, using you as a point of contact to as many who desire to walk in this reality. God has lifted you. In Jesus' name, Professor, we pray. Let that grace speak for you. Amen. Go back and be marvelously distinguished. Amen. Even among your contemporaries, we elevate you by the anointing. And for our pastor, in the name of Jesus, may the Lord anoint you. A unique grace for wealth and prosperity, let it rest upon you. In the name of Jesus, as you declare the word in season and out of season, the Lord himself will bring such evidence to your ministry. I bless you both. 
go and return with greater testimonies in Jesus name we pray give them a big hand clap thank you please stretch your hands and begin to declare over your request remember I've taught you on expectation I want you to begin to make faith declarations very quickly I'm returning with my testimony everything written here will be returned as a harvest of answers Lord step in do the impossible do the impossible it's a prayer Lord Lord step in do the impossible do the impossible Please let's be sure that everyone's request is here. I want to lay my hands on it. I'd like you to begin to pray in the spirit and declare over this request. Father, in the name of Jesus, I return with testimonies. Is someone praying? Is someone praying? Shabaraso koto prandas kalivere so dia parados. Ratabaraso do braske berento sidas. Jesus Christ I decree and I declare that every request here represented let it return to you as a testimony for many of you may it return faster than you expected I say it again may it return faster than you expected For some of you, your answer comes this night. Where you have been mocked in the name of Jesus Christ, may that mockery come to an end. Where men have said, where is your God? May God use your results to reply them. In the name of Jesus Christ. let fire fall on this request 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 
in the name of Jesus Christ hear me by miracle service may in the name of Jesus you will not have to repeat anything you've written here I stand upon this request and I decree and declare the same way I'm standing upon it prophetically everything that has risen above you to limit your life I bring it under your feet I bring it under your feet I bring it under your feet now I declare over your life favor like you have never seen may that grace rest upon you favor like you have never seen may that grace rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ number two koinonia receive speed receive speed in one month may God give you the achievement of years in one month I repeat may my God give you the achievement of years I decree and declare everything that has brought you down and covered your glory I give visibility to your glory in the name of Jesus Christ hear me the helpers of your destiny who have been anointed to locate you and to work in partnership with God for your lifting wherever they are I call them by prophecy to manifest in your life I call them by prophecy to manifest in your life hear me I pray for your various homes I decree and declare may your home be a tabernacle for the presence of God may your home be a place of fire and revival in the name of Jesus Christ and everything written as Ichabod in your life I decree and declare let there be a sudden restoration a sudden restoration wealth like you have never handled may my God bring to your hands in the name of Jesus I pray for your relationship with the Lord hear me hear me hear me hear me this is a very big deal not just for God but even in this ministry while it is true that we are concerned with the holistic building of every man it is important to understand that in order of priority the greatest point of emphasis is your spiritual health therefore I decree and declare your word study life your prayer life may fire come upon your altar in the name of Jesus Christ fire like never before to pray fire like never before to fast fire like never before to pray fire like never before to fast your word study life a passion for the word receive it in the name of Jesus from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed Adonai from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed now behold i show you a mystery let me show you what it takes to carry power in this kingdom and believe me i don't claim to know everything but this one i know what i'm saying hallelujah the bible says that every man who ministers should minister according to the measure of grace let me show you what it takes to carry the power of the holy spirit 
by this teaching tonight someone's destiny is opening up because finally listen for some of you this is what you have seen in your dreams and visions this realm this dimension you have been saying lord in terms of the word and prayer that power dimension is the desperate need for my ministry now for my life now let me show you the key are you ready psalm 89 and verse 20 please media quickly project it for us and then i want you all to read the first four words please make sure it is the first four words the first four words are you ready one to read one more time one more time for the last time now The Bible says, I have found David. But the anointing was not looking for David. There was a kind of person David needed to become for the anointing to find him. I have found David. But it is not David the anointing is looking for. The anointing is looking for my servant. I have found a man of God in your life. But it is not a man of God that I'm looking for. I have found John. I have found Joshua. I found him since 2001. But there is a kind of person the anointing and the mantle is looking for. He simply calls that person my servant. I have found that businessman. But it is not the businessman the anointing is looking for. It is looking for my servant. My servant is not a name my servant is a journey that turns david to become a certain kind of vessel are we together now there are many many people who want the anointing but they do not know that until you become his servant until you become his servant until you become his servant in business his servant in ministry his servant on the crusade ground for as long as you are still david david has his own ambition david has his own destiny david has his own dreams you don't use the anointing to do your own thing you must become my servant do you know the journey that translates david to his servant the name given to that journey is death death to everything i have found david it was easy finding david but I'm still finding my servant. I have found a woman. But I'm still looking for my servant. To turn her into a prophetess. Hmm. I have found Yola. Great preachers. Kaliga Barako Siata. But I'm still looking for my servant. I'm showing you what has separated many people. Into spiritual cadres. There are some who are still David. Wanting the anointing. But others have become his servants. Get this revelation and it will change your life forever. I have found a nice gentleman who has a beautiful musical voice. But I'm still looking for my servant. I have found someone who opened a pharmacy. But I'm still looking for my servant. The anointing does not come upon men. The anointing comes upon his servant. Let's go back to that scripture. Please help four people. They will start running now by the anointing. I just saw the spirit of grace like a dove just came upon four people. And it's an empowerment by the spirit. Please help them so they don't injure themselves. But they are going to start running right now by the spirit. Kela kepa has sobre his cabane koshiata. Krage keban dash kaligabra. Please help them. Ente kri has kadela to shavra hasia. Kre kadusha brandi gebele koshiata. Kraga bede gebele keto shavras kadebele tasia. Now listen, I want you to pay attention. Your life is about to change. There is a dimension of glory you are being immersed into. Your ministry and your life will never be the same. The old you is about to give way.
to renew you that is carrying potent genuine spiritual power by wisdom oh god heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the seasons creating day and night turning darkness into light arranging the stars to your pleasing hear me for as long as self and flesh is still there it is not the anointing of the spirit that will rest upon you maybe something else can come upon you I have found give us that scripture David but I'm looking for my servant so for 20 years in ministry you have been David that is the reason why the anointing the mantle of your destiny the, the mantle has hovered around your church it has hovered around Yola it has hovered around homes searching for servants listen to me let's finish that scripture finally David becomes his servant and the Bible says with my holy oil I have anointed that servant next verse reading to 24 with whom my hand shall be established my arm shall also strengthen him by reason of the anointing the enemy shall not exert upon him nor the son of wickedness afflict him 23 I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him it says but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his authority be exalted listen to me listen to me do you know why Jesus was not anointed from birth do you know why Jesus was not anointed from age 12 because the bible says he had to learn obedience by the things he suffered even your jesus did not get anointed just because he was the son of god he had to go through the pathway i have found jesus but i'm looking for the one who is prepared to serve the will of the father and until age 30 before that anointing came let me tell you this there is no limit to what God can do in your life. There is no limit to the, um, the degree of unction and grace that can come upon you. The key is death that turns ordinary men to become servants. You know what it means to be a servant? The hallmark of servanthood is that you lose the ability to tell God no. Everything that comes from him is yes. For as long as you still have your agenda, for as long as you still have your pride, for as long as you still have your ministry, it is not the anointing from heaven that comes upon you. Tonight, God sent me here to tell someone, he has found you, but he's looking for his servant. He's looking for his servant. Oh, he's looking for his servant to turn you into a genuine apostle, a genuine prophet, a genuine businessman. So in this miracle and impartation service, listen carefully. It is not just about shouting amen. Something must die in your heart. It says in the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. Something has to die for you to see. In the year that my pride died, I saw the Lord. In the year that flesh died, I saw the Lord. You cannot see him when there are two kings. One king must die. Uzziah had to die to see the other king. There cannot be two thrones in your heart. No. Listen carefully. I wish I had the time 
to begin to tell you my journey in the spirit and my journey with God <sighs> but this anointing that we have downplayed that we have limited to just falling down and standing up or limited to just calling names and prophesying as wonderful as that is let me tell you there are layers and there are dimensions and there are levels of the anointing there are virgin dimensions that God wants to I hope you know that the prophecy upon the church age is that the former and the latter reign do you know what that means there are mantles this I hope you know mantles do not leave the earth to heaven no no every mantle you read in the Bible is still on earth but there is a kind of believer that must carry it and it's not by claiming is by the sacrifice of death help those under the anointing spirit of god is pruning and circumcising men i believe that is yola is stepping into a prophetic a very prophetic season i truly believe that that there are men and women who are rising by the spirit men and women who are dead enough to carry these end time mantles it will take being more than a preacher it will take being more than a man of god it will take being more than a businessman it is for those who have vowed to serve the purposes of the king in life and in death hallelujah sit down for five minutes please let me establish two more things about the anointing and then we'll pray be sensitive something is happening here we see the rain of your love we feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear you. I see the rain of your love. I feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. So let it rain. Let it rain. Open us love gates. Shade ke para sabe sakata Kais kade balaka ta pras ke fede ke ta Kam prakata baka to sheke te frege de bele ke ta Open the flood gates of heaven Ten ta shamas ka vasa brake te baleko siata Open the flock gates. I raised that song because I saw a vision. I just saw a vision of rain coming. And the scripture that came to me is until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. And then the wilderness shall be counted for a fruitful vine. And a fruitful vine for a forest. We see the rain, see the rain. Your ministry is about to receive that dew of Hammon afresh again. Now, please sit down. Fire is burning in this place. I need to show you two things before we begin to pray. Fire is burning in this place. Finally, His Majesty is finding His servant. Where are all those young men in your prayer groups? God has brought you here. It's time to be ignited by fire, by the spirit of the living God. It's been a season of training with the spirit. Now it's time for your eyes to see. To see afresh. To see afresh. Open the floodgates of heaven. Enamas 
Sena Banada, Shalada, Shena Bara, Sada Balada Balada Balacuzia. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen. Many of you, let me explain something to you. Don't think that you are, I'm wasting your time. What is happening to you <laughs> is that you are being immersed. There is a kind of glory. You know how you marinate something because you want to fry it or you want to cook it. This is what is happening to you. These songs are not just special numbers. I'm not a musician. They are ladders in the spirit. There is an ascendance that is happening to your spirit man as you are under this influence it said there is as it were many voices and none of them is without signification oh come oh come me mad well and run some captivities right Oh, come, oh, come, me, man, you will, and run some captivities, right, yeah. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Yola has come to you, his Israel. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known. Reveal the glory of the risen Lord. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known. Reveal the glory of the There are five people God is showing me. Five people. You are all ladies. I'm seeing a very strong mantle. Prophetic psalmistry. This is what is coming upon you. Kabira skeda liakata. Embre ketaskiata. I call deep to be unlocked within your spirit man. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ete <laughs> And out of your belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of your belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. Out of your city shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Let me show you two keys for receiving the anointing. And then we begin to pray. My God. 
Please sit down if you can. Ladies and gentlemen, what you are experiencing tonight is the ministry of the paraclet, the spirit of the living God. Hear me. Ladies and gentlemen, there are many of you, your ministries will carry these mantles. You will go back and the power of God will sweep across this city in ways that you cannot imagine. Let me show you two keys. Please be seated if you can. There are two there are two biblical keys i know that the waters has been stirred huh. there are two keys to receiving anointings mantles and graces and i want to show you the keys now and then we'll pray please don't be distracted if this is all we do tonight Many of you will not forget this day for a very long time. For how can you walk when you don't know the way of the way? How can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit? How can you fly like the eagles when you don't know the way is power at work in you changing everything be no beat and surprise that's what god is doing he's changing everything be no beat and surprise. for someone here swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life it's a little here a little there and then your day will dawn he's at work in you changing everything the first key that controls the reception of strange graces and mantles please write it is an encounter with god himself when you have an encounter with the god of the bible you can receive as a reward for encountering god directly from god acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how god anointed jesus how god anointed jesus how god anointed jesus god can anoint men how god anointed jesus direct encounters with god solomon slept and had a dream and received an impartation of an understanding heart and the spirit of wisdom directly from God but number two which is the more common pattern we see in scripture is through the mystery called impartation write it down please impartation impartation Romans 1 11 Paul was speaking to the church in Rome he said for I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established I think it was in Philippians 1 verse 7 or so he said ye all are partakers of my grace when God grants a man access to an anointing, you see, 
the anointing and the graces of God are responsible for the dimensions of spiritual possibilities that we experience in this kingdom. So, the grace for favor will not produce healing. No, it will produce favor. These graces have jurisdiction of operation. So, don't just say, I am anointed. No. The anointing and the distribution of graces, they are jurisdictional in operation. The anointing for prosperity will not raise the dead. It has its jurisdiction. So the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8, it says, and God is able to make all grace, say all grace, not some grace, all grace, all the dimensions of grace are bound towards you so that ye, on account of those graces, having sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. God is able to make all grace. Please take it higher for me. Are we together now? All grace. Don't say, Apostle, I have the prophetic. That's not the only thing needed for your destiny. Your heart must be open to receive all grace. The Bible says, speaking to Moses, it says, and thou shalt take Joshua, in whom is the spirit already and thou shalt lay your hands upon him and anoint him he says and then thou shalt take some of your honor and you will give to him to a man who is already anointed listen to me co-laborers in the gospel by the privilege of god's grace i can tell you there is much more we can do for the kingdom but our possibilities are limited by the extent of grace and the dimensions of grace that are at work in us you see the apostolic and the uh, prophetic anointing works like this when you come into a region because of how god has built you by the election of grace and the sacrifice of alignment you are able to assume whatever mold god wants to release and distribute the graces that are deficient within a territory are we together now you can know the graces that are deficient within the territory by the absence of certain testimonies all you need to do is to take an honest appraisal of your life and an honest appraisal of your ministry and an honest appraisal of your test or your of your territory you can tell the graces that are there and the graces that are not there and you can tell the degree of what grace is there because grace and peace can be multiplied by the time the sick still remain sick there is a grace that has not yet come upon your territory by the time lives and destinies are still confused that means there is a level of the accurate manifestation of the character of the prophetic to bring direction that is missing by the time the average believer in Adamawa and Yola is bankrupt of stature, it means there is a dimension of the prophetic revelatory dimension of teaching that is not there. Because there is a grace that was upon Paul in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9. The Bible says when that grace comes upon a man, you can make all men see. All men can see regardless your educational background regardless your pedigree once that grace is upon you it can make all men see when there's widespread poverty across the territory there is what the bible calls the power to get wealth it means that engracing is not yet there my assignment tonight having endured in the course of this conference is that among the many things god is going to be doing is he's going to be distributing spiritual possibilities in addition to that which you have received that there can be higher measures of the same grace and then virgin dimensions of grace that your hands and your destiny and your ministry has not yet captured for job said there is a path which no fowl has seen that the whelps of the lion has not gotten there there are virgin dimensions in the spirit ladies and gentlemen when it has to do with exploring the deep things in god there are no generals there we the best of us still remains a toddler compared to the vast riches of what is available to the saints so paul prayed this way i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ 
Is that true? That he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened or flooded with light that you may know. He was praying over the church in Ephesus. To comprehend the kind of power that was exalted when Christ was raised from the dead. And exalted to be far above every throne, dominion, principalities and every name that is named. Not only in this world but even in the world to come. I cry every time and I tell God I'm available more love more power more of you in my life when I go to him I don't go as a man of God more love there are still greater assignments more power more of you in my life you see there are many of us who have not been able to step into the deeper levels of the spirit because of pride overconfidence carelessness and ar an arrival mentality i prophesied to someone and the person had a child thank god for it but is that all i shared a revelation and that revelation <laughs> there are parts in the spirit tonight your heart must be open that a thousand cubits will be measured for you again that regardless what we have seen I submit to you by the authority of scripture there are many many dimensions we have not seen every time I read the Bible sometimes tears begin to come out of my eyes and my cries Lord where did we miss it you read about these men and women who the Bible talks about in Hebrews 11 it says that they obtained a good report. It says, time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, tore the mouth of lions. Women who received their dead back to life. Yola, hear me. It is not because Satan is so powerful. It is because men of fire have not truly risen. And I'm not saying this to downplay and demean what you're already doing for God. I know that many of us in various ways are doing our best. But the Lord has commanded this apostolic and prophetic convergence because there is need for more. Yesterday's oil cannot solve today's problem. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. The woman had oil, but it was too small to help her. Her issue was not the absence of oil. It was that the oil was not enough to take her out of debt. And the prophet said, the problem is not the oil. The problem is the vessel. Go and borrow vessels. Borrow not a few. And once they were vessels, he said, lock the door. Because there are things God will not do with you in public. Lock the door and let multiplication start happening. And the Bible says, as she locked the door, multiplication of oil and grace started. And when there was no more vessel, the oil stopped. Hear me? I know that your city is a prosperous city but my question is how many kingdom people have commanded the wealth of the kingdom we keep jumping and shouting the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous yet our children are becoming prostitutes our young men are becoming armed robbers because of poverty can I tell you do not say it does not matter every time Satan wants to destroy a people he uses hunger hunger always sends Israel to Egypt hunger always sends israel to egypt there is only one reason israel goes to egypt hunger that means there are financial apostles that must rise from this meeting you have seen it in your dreams men and women who will build institutions men and women who will say under my watch no pastor will compromise because of money again i will stand as a financial pillar holding the hands of moses there are many men of God who started well but because of this spirit of poverty are now roaming around the corridors of compromise I can tell you there are men and women here the mantle that is about to come upon you tonight in a strange way you will command the wealth of the kingdom but it will be without pride because you know the assignment and the purpose of wealth how about the healing anointing listen to me 
when you study the materials and the writings of men like Smith Wigglesworth before they died they left a prophecy and fathers of faith in this nation men like Benson Archbishop Benson Idahosa Apostle Babalola they left a prophecy that there is coming a generation greater than them they said it they said as great as it is there is a generation coming that will be accumulation of the former and the latter rain did the Bible not say this is the generation of them that seek thy face O Jacob can I tell you one of the graces that must be restored to the body as we prepare to receive Jesus Christ is the restoration of genuine healing mantles most young people have not truly seen what a healing ministry looks like just um, thank God for the headaches one wheelchair here but most people it will take people who are at least maybe 50 years and above they will tell you that they saw the healing ministry men and women that carried power you would bring crutches out like you are carrying building materials hallelujah dying the glory hallelujah amen hallelujah dying the glory Revive us again. The day the dead begins to rise in Yola, the day a popular madman that everybody knows on the street comes under the influence of this former and latter reign and that madness leaves. Let me tell you, every church will be filled. It's not because there are no members, it's because they are tired of a powerless manifestation or a powerless proposals god can do this god can heal god can change your story they shout amen and yet nothing happens john 4 48 says except you see signs and wonders you will not believe this is a generation that wants proof if you say god heals prove it if you say god restores prove it mm. elisha said let the king come and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. Hallelujah. There will also be an, a restoration of men and women who carry the, the mantle that was upon Joseph and Daniel and will be represented in government. If there's anyone here in government, please listen to me very carefully. God is counting on the church and let's not bring this age-long ignorance that has punished us and kept us down for many years that it does not matter one policy in the parliament can punish daniel regardless his prayer life there needs to be men and women who have a covenant of no compromise that they will not defile themselves with the king's meat that god can trust to be in strategic positions of power how about lecturers the campus today has become a place of revival but it's also the place where satan recruits people there are people who go to the campus as nice ladies nice gentlemen and almost come out as devils they hold a certificate plus demons because that four five six years has turned them from saints to something else there needs to be lecturers who are full of the holy ghost that one student can come into your office saying sir i don't know why i don't understand i'm the only person the only child of my my widowed mom and you will shift that lot that lecturing manual one side and say listen i'm not only a lecturer i'm an ambassador of the kingdom let us pray in the name of jesus that demon that devil out of this student and the student returns after five years to say sir do you remember me Territorial impact is not just a doctrine. It's not just a discussion. It's something that should happen within our territories. That a day will come. Every Sunday the roads will be empty. Because everybody has gone to the house of God. Is it not what the Bible says? That they will say come let us go to the house of God. To the God of Jacob and he will teach us his ways. They have learned that God is in the midst of his people all of these people that are here inside and outside can i tell you 
John Wesley said, set yourself on fire and the world will come to watch you burn. These things are not cliches. Let's stop giving excuses and say people don't like church. It's a lie. They have not seen the kind of results that draw them. They will come and they will stay and they will pray. They will endure rain. They will endure sunshine. If they have a guarantee, they will encounter the God of the Bible. The days of Catherine Kuhlman and these, these great generals, people will line up for hours patiently waiting because they knew that these people, they came with glory, not just stories. Businessmen, have you conquered the spirits that sit upon businesses and make sure that family keeps, families keep perpetuating poverty and lack? So that you do not think the anointing is just for healing the sick and just for the supernatural and then alienate yourself and say, no, I'm just a businessman. I'm just a mother. Mary was anointed to give birth to Jesus and take care of him. Without the anointing, you think Mary would have been able to do her work? It took the anointing to raise one child. Now you have eight. You need more anointing than the preacher. Because every armed robber came from a home. And every preacher comes from a home. Every national problem was a regional problem that was not solved. Every regional problem was a family problem that could not be solved. Is that true? All the people disturbing territory, whether terrorists, whether stubborn people who are causing mayhem, all of them come from homes. It was because there was no anointing to manage and contain their issues that is spilled over to society and today is destroying society. So that means there are parents and family men that must receive anointings and mantles. Mantles that will keep your children obedient to the faith. He said, as for me and my house, not me alone, not me and my wife, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There is a grace responsible for that outcome. Pastors, we comforted ourselves in the morning because there are many of us who are already discouraged now. Do you know that after COVID, there are many pastors that plunge to depression because of death, they plunge to all kinds. It looked like their labor of many years and decades just vanished. There are many of you even in business now you have not recovered. Because what happened from COVID brought you from grace to grass. I have good news for you. The axe head can float back again. An encounter with God. And a genuine impartation. A genuine impartation and listen the law of impartation is such that you must discern God in the vessel you want to receive from you're not going to receive from a vessel by casually saying well I think that this person is anointed no the Bible says he that receives a prophet listen carefully in the name of a prophet that means there are other names by which you can receive the prophet you can receive the prophet in the name of your tribesman you can receive the prophet in the name of your husband. You can receive the prophet in the name of your wife. You can receive the prophet in the name of a colleague in ministry. But he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet. God sent me here by the grace of God, by the privilege of God's grace. To not only come and teach and show you a pathway. To not only come and pray for the sick and declare breakthroughs, but that certain mantles and certain graces. I have come as a prophetic midwife by the Spirit of God tonight. That there are certain things for some of you, your hand is almost there. Reaching to that which is prophetic. I have come as a midwife to help you. Because you see, midwives can be dangerous. If a midwife is careless, she can make a great destiny to become like that of Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth's issue was not that he did anything wrong. It was simply the carelessness of a midwife. A midwife did not bring him out properly. And for the rest of his life, he remained crippled. It matters who helps you to touch these new dimensions of God. Midwives can accelerate your access. Like the one who took Samson and trained Samson and Moses. Or midwives can be careless like the one who handled Mephibosheth and cripple your capacity to make advancement. 
You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, this issue of altar call there are many people who have been joking around it. When God begins to speak pe to people about their lives, do you know there are many believers as a preacher is shouting like I'm saying now on stage, the spirit of the living God is convicting them and telling them this man of God is speaking about you. And yet they don't care. It doesn't matter. It does. It does. You cannot continue to live your life the way you are living. Ignoring Jesus, ignoring purpose, ignoring value and expect that your world will celebrate you. Tonight in this place and all the overflows and those following online, I know that there are many people who are saying, Apostle, listening to you speak, the Spirit of God began to convict me that I need to make it right with Jesus. I don't care how many times you've been around church. No, that's not what I'm asking you. I'm asking for a functional relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't tell me I've been around church. Don't tell me I have a Christian name. Wonderful as that is, you need to be born again. You need to know Jesus. You need to consciously receive him as Lord and Savior. And then number two, there are those that as I was saying all these things, it was as if I was doing a checklist on you. And based on your scorecard, it is complete zero. Because in truth, not to condemn you, you have wasted your moment, your life, your days, and you are saying, I need to get my life fixed again. What's that your song, my dear Chris Strings? Yarani ya yesuna Yarani my king ka We'll sing it one more time then I begin to count Yarani ya yesuna In zama kamar dakai Yarani Yarani you're saying apostle and hearing you speak the Holy Spirit is talking to me God is reaching his loving hands to someone right now in this final service and saying I want to give you a chance don't look at yesterday it doesn't matter what has happened or not happened you can make a decision tonight, right now, and say enough is enough. Now is the time to begin to love Jesus. Now is the time to become a superior version of myself. I'm going to count one to five. Whether in this auditorium, this, this outside of overflow three, or around the auditorium there, or all the overflows, as I count one to five, I want you to leave your seat. I will allow you to come to the front here here the green area here or any of those places just or you can come walk around to the front here as i count one to five make sure you don't sit back when you know the lord is asking you to come and for those who are in the overflows because except here is full i want all of them to come to this the overflow three here where we're using i want them to come allow them if they are coming if it gets filled then they can move to their screens I'm counting one to five and make sure you don't wait for someone to be the first. This is a personal affair with the Lord. Are you ready now? One. Two. Yeah. 
Come in Zama Kamarda Kai. Oh, Yarani Yesuna. Let's celebrate them. Keep coming. Yarani Ma'ai King Ka. Yarani Yesuna. Run to Jesus. I'm ready to start afresh. More time from the depth of your heart. Yarani, Listen to me. This is one of the reasons why we chose to hold these services at the overflow here. Because it was my prayer and my plea to God that we present a harvest of souls unto Jesus as that one gift as we wrap up the service for the year. My brothers and my sisters, I want you to listen to me. There comes a time in every man's life where you are given the liberty to choose between Jesus and with Jesus grace, with Jesus wisdom, with Jesus a better tomorrow. Or you ignore Jesus and make up your mind that I will live my life. Nobody will force you, you see. This is the wonderful thing. There are people who woke up on earth today, but right now as I speak to you, they are in hell. Do you know why? They used their will to reject Jesus and God respected it. You are coming out here because number one, the Lord Jesus Christ brought you out here. But you are coming out here to say, Lord, I cannot help myself. I cannot help myself. I've tried and tried and tried. Sing it for me. This is the life that Jesus wants to give you. And for many of you who are here, if you will, you can come out here and not be saved because you just came as a ritual. But I want you to mean it from your heart. Are we together? I'm going to lead you to pray. For my little children here, look, listen to me. You are coming to Jesus. You are not too small to start afresh with Jesus. Lift your right hand, all of you. Lift your right hand. High above your head as a sign of surrender to Jesus. Please say after me as loud as you can and mean it from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. I love you with all my heart. I believe 
that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for me. This night, I make Jesus my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I am a child of God and I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your beautiful hands lifted. Father, thank you for these lovely people, young and old, male and female, mothers, children, senior colleagues, contemporaries, all together, they have come standing before you to declare your lordship over their lives. I thank you, oh God, for bringing these many to yourself. And then I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that as a result of these declarations of faith, I declare that their sins are truly forgiven in Jesus' name. And I pray for you that the life of God rests in your inside and you begin to live a victorious Christian life from, from today. The power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over your life. And I speak to you in the name of Jesus Christ that you keep going from glory to glory, grace to grace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, there are a number of you here and usually what we do is that when we make the altar call and people come out, I'm going to ask all of you, um, let someone stand here and here so that we don't congest the space. Now, all of you are going to turn just behind me. You will see the counselors, they're waving their hands. Those who are here, you can just turn right there. Those who are here, you can just turn back. They will have a word with you. Please cooperate with them. They will receive your details. Just have a word with you so that we can follow up on you and ensure that you are grounded in truth. Let's give them a big God bless you as they go. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate them. Now we're ready to pray. Oh God of signs and wonders, Savior, Redeemer, come and manifest your power. Dideo, Dideo. Oh God of signs and wonders, Savior, Redeemer, come and manifest your power. Dideo. One more time, oh God of signs and wonders. Savior, Redeemer, come and manifest your power. Shout this loud from your spirit. Say, Father. One more time. Say, Father. Tonight, I place a demand on your grace. All that is required to finish the year well, I receive right now. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Ahead and pray. I place a demand upon your grace. All that is required to end 2023 with grace, with glory, with power. I receive, I receive. Someone is praying. 
Shadike Breska Baruska Frenda Kabeleka. All that is required. All that is required. Say after me, Father. One more time, say, Father. Every door that is yet to be opened, I decree and declare, let it be open now. Go ahead and pray. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. They sang and the jailers heard them. Suddenly, there was a sound and the prison foundations were shaken and all doors opened. Go ahead and pray. Every door that is left to be open, let it be open now. 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 From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. I'd like you to pray. I'm about to speak over your life now. Everything that is yet to crown my year with glory and honor, I place a demand. There are still a few days before the year is done. Come on, go ahead and pray. In one moment, God can crown your year. In one moment, he can take away shame. In one moment, he can take away disappointment. Listen, listen, in one moment, you can find your destiny helper. In one moment, it does not take long for doors to open. In one moment. Don't say it's too late. No. In the final service, someone has to receive. You can make that someone you. Are we together now? In one moment, that what I could not get from January till November, my God, I sense such an anointing in this place. In one moment, I'm going to give you a minute to still pray. Place a demand. Father, this is the final service. What you told me in January, the realm that you said I would be walking in, 
I am here to see it manifest. I place a demand. I place a demand on your grace by faith. God can turn your finances within the days that are left. Not weeks, not months. Days that are left. In one day, God can rewrite the story of your family. In one day, God can redefine your life again. Hallelujah. 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 Why do we take our time to pray and speak over people? Because you see, prophecy is very powerful. Impartation is not just about falling down. I have taught you this. Impartation is about opening up your spirit to access the graces that empower you to rise, to thrive, to excel. We are made by the graces that rest upon us. This is what makes men. Hallelujah. So as I speak over your life, don't just shout amen. Say it with understanding. Because these words are spirit and life. God confirmed the words of his messengers. They are not empty words. But it is only to the believer. This is how it works in the kingdom. It is only to the believer. It is only to the believer. There is a gentleman now. I'm seeing fire fall on that gentleman. A gentleman. Gentleman. You will be a mighty man in the spirit. Mighty man in the spirit. Do not despise the training of the spirit with you. You will be a mighty man. I'm telling you this by the spirit. You will be, you will command power in the spirit. the spirit power in the spirit power I will sing of the wonders of your work I will sing out for joy I will sing of the wonders of your work I will sing of the wonders of your work. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your work. And I will forever sing your praise. And I will forever sing your praise. And I will forever sing your praise. I'm praying for you now. The grace that makes you a man of prayer, the grace that makes you pray, even in the spirit, the grace that makes you travel till you become by prayer, I stretch my hands over you. In the name of Jesus, let that grace rest upon you now. Let that grace rest upon you now. Let that grace rest upon you now. Just help those under the anointing. You don't have to bring them out. Just, just guide them where they are. I'm saying it again. There is a grace that quickens men to pray. May that grace like never before. Let it rest upon you now. Help them please. Let, the, let that grace rest upon you now. Number two, I truly want to pray for your understanding of scripture. Please hold on, mommy. The spirit of revelation, there are not many people that have carried this grace. I don't know why. You see, let me tell you, revelation is not just a reality you step into. There is an operation of the Holy Spirit that actually opens you. It brings you to a realm 
of enlightenment. You become knowledgeable, precise, accurate spiritual information with the results that follow. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus. Everyone that must drink of this fountain, everyone that must drink of this grace, access to the mysteries of the kingdom, light, I stretch my hands. Let it rest on you now. Let it rest on you now. Let it rest on you now. Let it change the way you see. Let it change the way you see. Let it change the way you perceive. Let it change the way you receive. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Spirit of wisdom, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. is what you are about to receive what is wisdom wisdom is the ability to use the written word and with it provide solutions translating the word of God giving it application to your life and destiny knowledge is good but knowledge is not enough if it does not translate to wisdom it says to the Greeks that Christ the power of God the anointing revealed as the wisdom of God and as the power of God, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Wisdom that will distinguish you. Wisdom that will set you apart. It will become clear that you are a carrier of wisdom. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Young and old, male and female, let it rest upon you now. Let it change your ministry. Let it change your finances. Let it change your life. Let it change your approach to things. With wisdom, let it come excellence. Excellence upon you. Hallelujah. Don't be distracted. Let your power for signs and wonders rest on me rest on me let your power for signs and wonders rest on me rest on me let your power, let your power for signs and wonders rest on me rest on me let your power let your power for signs and wonders rest on me pray for you perhaps this may not be for everybody but there are people who need to carry an authentic anointing truly for signs and wonders you cannot demonstrate the reality of the life and the power of God except power comes upon you I know what power can do I'm praying for someone now a lady a gentleman a Deborah an Elijah I don't know who must drink of this that you go back and begin to command a strange order of the miraculous. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. I release that grace upon you. With it, you will pray for the sick and watch them healed. With it, you will speak over people and watch doors of families open. Receive the grace for signs and wonders. I, I release it upon you from the depth of my heart. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let your power, power to prosper. Rest on me, rest on me. Let your power, power to prosper. Rest on me, rest on me. Let your power, let your power, 
power to prosper rests on me. One more time. Let your power, Let your power, power to prosper rest on me. Rest on me. Listen. Hear me. Truly, there is the power to prosper. Honestly, if you have never believed anything about scripture, believe this one. There is, there is a real dimension in the spirit called the power to prosper. If it is not on you, it will be clear that it's not on you. There are many things, listen, the power to prosper is not about money. Don't mistake in it. The power to prosper has nothing to do with finances. It only reflects itself in finances. The power to prosper stops things from dying in your hands. The power to prosper is what is responsible for advancement. It makes everything to produce. He shall be like a tree that is planted. Our, the mistake is that every time we say power to prosper, we are thinking Naira and Kobo. No. There are people who have money without the power to prosper. When the power to prosper is upon you, nothing dies. You become Bula and Hephzibah, a well-watered garden. I want to pray for someone. This is the cure to struggling. I'm coming to favor, but many of you, but even if in your, listen, if your finance is not working, the power to prosper, I have taught this and I want you to listen so you don't just shout amen. I hope I'm not wasting your time. There are three dimensions of the operation of the power to prosper. Watch this now. Number one, when the power to prosper comes upon you, it comes upon your head. That is the first place it comes to. It does something to your thinking and your understanding. The power to prosper does not just give. It adjusts, it's realigned. When the authentic power to prosper does not come to your bank account, it comes to your mind. Job said in the days of my youth, when the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle, there were two kinds of light. The lights that shined upon his head and the lights that shined upon his feet. It is the power to prosper that works upon your mind. It heightens your level of intelligence, your acumen, your understanding of things. You begin to comprehend things in an unusual dimension. It is that dimension that fishes out solutions in darkness. That is what gives you the treasures that are hidden in dark places. Hmm. I want you to believe what you are hearing. I know what I'm talking about oh, when it has to do with this one. This is not a lecture. The power to prosper. Many people do not have it. And so you find out that only one little thing seems to be working. And everything is dead around their lives. Just because you have money does not mean you have the power to prosper. The power to prosper has nothing to do with material things. It only commands material things. Hallelujah. Your mind. The second area where it functions is your hands representing productivity. You can have creative ideas, but the fortitude to execute them, to now turn them into solutions that schedule rewards for you, many do not have it. The power to prosper comes upon your mind, then your hands, and then the third dimension is your feet, representing guidance and direction. When the power to prosper rests upon your life, it begins to culture your work so that you go to the right places, influenced by the Spirit of God. And Isaac sowed in that land. The key word is not the sowing, it's that land. If he left that place, you see, it is the power to prosper that can make you to know that the season has ended in a place. It is the power to prosper. It has the assignment of insisting that you move forward. It has the assignment of seeing that you excel. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. That is the assignment. Many of you are just learning about the power to prosper now because every time we talk about the power to prosper, people are thinking their bank account, their ATM, it works there. But that is the latter part of the power to prosper. You can have money by going to school and getting a job and get something coming. When the power to prosper brings you finances, the difference will be clear. 
you can get finances by many other means but if it comes by the power to prosper it is dangerously defended there is longevity do you believe what you're hearing because I'm about to release that grace on someone there are people here nothing is working in your life you are sincere you are educated you love God but you lack the power to prosper you are in ministry receive this oh, because it is the power to prosper that works in partnership with the grace for favor you are receiving that that brings the helpers that come to hold your hand as you serve it is the power to prosper that brings the people who need to help you in ministry the helpers of the war the power to prosper that for no reason should you fail do you believe what you're hearing father in the name of Jesus Christ I stretch my hands over my precious people and I'm praying for someone who is thirsty desperate and hungry in a way you have not experienced before let the power to prosper truly let this grace that causes men to prosper rest upon you now let it rest upon you now let it come upon your job let it come on your ministry let it come on your finances let it come on your mind let it come on your hands let it come on your feet i say it again let it come on your mind let it come on your hands let it come on your feet in the name of jesus christ that by this prophetic declaration nothing dies in your hands in the name of jesus are you tired of receiving let's talk about favor is there such a thing as the favor of God can it rest upon men and can it be seen that a man carries the favor of God the answer is yes there is truly a grace called favor this one is what gives you dominion in the world of men the assignment of favor is not to bring things favor is directly connected with men the ministry of men resides within the jurisdiction of favor is what makes men like you expressing itself in uncommon kindness expressing itself in uncommon access are we together now uncommon acceptance the clearest proof of favor is the presence of men quality men to help you quality men to stand with you quality men to lift you when the favor of God is upon a man it brings struggle to an end it brings struggle to an end how do you know the favor of God is not upon you because the men who should be used by God to attend to the matters of destiny never seem to show up you don't call them by saying come you call them by receiving favor let me tell you this if koinonia by the privilege of God's grace if koinonia did not carry this grace for favor it will be a disaster it will be a joke to want to rise from Zaria here to the ends of the earth no right in this place there were people coming from all over the world America UK with the whole crisis terrorism and everything they would come fly from Lagos to Kaduna inconvenience themselves not have the best of hospitality but still endure that's what happens when favor is upon you favor is what gives you space and territory they got not the land in possession by their own sword by your favor favor is what stops emptiness from your hand Exodus 3 21 and I will give you favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty favor it compels people to want to give you some of you this is what you need to remedy for the financial calamity that right now is upon you you can learn the ways of finances properly when the pain and the trouble is gone but as per the trouble you are in now it is only the favor of God that will bail you out loneliness is one of the evidences of lack of favor no man that's what the man said Bethesda his problem was not a healing problem the water was there 
the power was there but he said I have no man I have no man that was his problem why are you still in this situation for 38 years when an angel comes to stir the water every year others came there and they came two days before the angel arrived and they got healed and walked away but one man remained there for 38 years and here was what he said verse 7 I have no man when the water is troubled to put me there i went to school but i have no man who will speak to me i can walk i can do the business but i have no man i'm a great anointed man of god but i have no man to help connect me to the next level let me pray for you let your grace this grace called favor rest on you rest on you let your grace call favor rest on me, rest on me. Can I tell you this? Many of you have heard the great things that God is doing with family. And I say these things to the glory of God. I can only begin to tell you the mighty and manifold things that God is doing through this ministry. It is remarkable and tremendous everywhere across the globe the favor of God the mighty wonders of God but this is where it started when favor rests on you and you actually receive it then sit back and watch how you tame life like an animal you know how people tame horses how people tame animals animals that are stronger than them but they develop their mechanism you can tame life like an animal on the strength of favor in the name of Jesus let favor by the Spirit of the Living God upon a man upon a woman upon a man of God upon a businessman upon a career person upon a student upon a parent let that grace rest upon you now let that grace rest upon you now let that grace rest upon you now let it begin to attract quality men to your life quality relationships to your life in the name of jesus by this impartation everything that looks like reproach around your life where you are alone and men do not show up to help you i pray for you let that tragedy called ichabod in your life come to an end now hallelujah the final impartation for tonight the final impartation for tonight you're going to receive the grace called speed why do you need speed in your life because destiny is a function of time and many of us by default we are already late in life did you hear what I said? By default, not because you are wrong. Some of us got to know the Lord late. Some of us got to go to school late. Some of us right now is 10 years since after graduation. 20 years since after graduation, you've not gotten the first job. When will you be able to build a house? When will you be able to take care of the necessities of your life with integrity and without compromise? Hallelujah. Speed is one of the spiritual systems for time redemption the bible says walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise redeeming the time there are two principal ways in the kingdom by which we gain dominion and exact dominion over time number one is called restoration number two is called speed let me focus on speed tonight in the name of jesus i'm praying for someone who has been laid back in life i pray for someone who has been delayed i pray for a family that has not you are not at the place you should have been now i pray for you in the name of jesus receive that grace for speed receive that grace for speed my god receive that grace for speed let it rest upon you now in one month you will achieve things that have not been done in years i say it in one month you will achieve things that have not been done in years in one month you will achieve things that have not been done in years in the name of jesus christ koinonia hear me 
as you go carry these graces and may they speak for you as you go let every man who sees you on the way bless you as you go let every mountain that stands before you be cleared out of the way for your sake as you go you shall not die as you go you shall not want as you go you shall not beg as you go you shall not borrow hear me for everyone shouting amen here you will still shout amen next year by the power of the prophetic and the apostolic I shut the gates of the grave I shut the gates of accident I shut the gates of plane crash in the name of Jesus and let me speak to you no devil anywhere will kidnap you or your children say amen oh in the name of Jesus Christ every conspiracy to bring you pain during this season I declare may you be exempted as God is touching you here may he touch your loved ones you will not hear bad news I say it again you will not hear bad news I declare health and vitality for you your body will not break down your finances will not go down in the name of Jesus Christ let's give Jesus a mighty hand clap a mighty hand clap in the name of Jesus you made it finally congratulations you do not need to know them Have you gotten to 10? <laughs> Hallelujah. Congratulations, you've seen the glory of God. Congratulations, help me. We'll share the grace now and then let's allow our people blow up this roof in the next five minutes make sure you dance before you go are we together um i don't know if they will allow you but i'm sure they will allow you i'm, I'm done so maybe you can dance just make sure i know the dance that is david's dance and i know the dance that is not david's dance the only dance allowed here is david's dance hello are we together? I don't know what David danced, but I know the one that is not his dance. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you very much, Koinonia. Thank you for making this year of Open Doors a worthwhile experience. I want to say a very big thank you to everyone in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise as a family. Thank you for this final service. Thank you for the instructions in righteousness, the impartation. Thank you for our global family connecting. Lord, in the name of Jesus, as we wrap up Koinonia, that in the name of Jesus, the blessings continue, the transformation continues, the liftings continue in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you once again, and I pray that you will, your year will end with honor and the year beginning will come with grace in the name of Jesus. May the God who has shown us mercy and helped us out of financial shame and reproach forever, may he turn your life around and change your story. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's share the goodness and then we dance for five minutes. Rejoice and then we're done for the night. Surely, all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Greet someone. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.
see me dance. I dance as a winner, man, yo.
dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline 